good morning everybody and a very warm welcome to Trent Bridge Live and to day two of this Vitality County Championship fixture between Nottinghamshire and Worcestershire. Now on day one the toss was taking place and it was Hasib Hamid who won that toss and he chose to bat and on day two it is Nottinghamshire that will still be out there in the middle with Lyndon James and Calvin Harrison out there and Notts are currently 305 for six but it was a special day for many people yesterday and let's just show you everything that happened with the day one highlights right arm over the wicket balls to Hamid and that's the first runs of the day the first runs of the game a back foot drive from Hamid and it will go all the way to the extra cover boundary to his career at New Road there's Leach again round the wicket balls and Duckett drives through the covers for good shot over pitch from Leach from Smith bowls him Whoa. absolutely superb delivery from Nathan Smith has taken two stumps out of the ground and Asiba Mead is a pretty miserable start to the season the season is cursed with bad luck as Smith bowls and that is very very elegant indeed from Ben Slater just rocked back and pulled it away passed by a Debenham bowls to the left-handed Slater who drives through the offside for four it was over pitched little bit of width offered the aforementioned round the wicket in now to bowl to Slater who drives for four over pitched outside off stump and Slater not going to miss out on that put it away good to have the Worcestershire supporters here down the leg side a fancy LBW shout was not too confident now let's have a look at the umpire no signal so there was some bat involved picture of the Cookaburra alongside the Next ball sees Clark come again and that's skimmed along the ground. Comes in, bowls and that's short and wide and Clark, he is in the mood now. Next ball sent by Baker and here he comes again and there it goes again. That one has uh, got a first class stamp on it as it goes deep into the uh, lower tier of the Radcliffe Roadstown County in the past. I remember the first time he went back to New Road, he uh, got a duck, but on this occasion here at Trent Bridge he gets a half century, a hundred last week in the first innings against Essex, 50 here from 88 ball, James Coyne from the cricketer, watching on here is now uh, oh. Ben Slater comes and has a huge slice of luck, 57 runs in 40 minutes here as uh, the next ball is uh, just cut out of the reach of the diving holder at slip You're enjoying your day mate by the sound of it you are this is short and Slater has pulled this one away he's got underneath that and Ben Slater now lifts rather too regular this is down the leg side and given they've got a wicket this time leg side strangle and Slater has to go Finch you'd have to say that's a poor ball because you're always angling down the leg side Slater went to flick it away and he's tickled it through to Gareth Roderick in again bowls and uh, Montgomery will get his first boundary here wide half volley to be fair from Holder and he just leans into it and uh, was oh this is edged and caught good catch by Holder big man really big wicket it's Matthew Montgomery who failed in both innings last week and he's gone for 11 this time had a little flash at that one from Nathan Smith who gets his third wicket of the day Oliver in again to Haynes Bowles tosses this one up wide outside the off stump and Haynes drives very nicely for four in balls and that's short and wide and Clark cracks it away off the back foot he's only going to get oh he'll get two I was going to say he's yeah, only going to get a single but Rob Jones fell over so 100 sorry that's why you were doing it isn't it Bowles and Haynes is taken on the pads a big shout for LBW and he's given he can't believe it Jack Haynes he's got his head in his hands he cannot believe it really really good read and there's a wicket for Baker as Clark goes to court and he's gone for 105. Leach in, balls. That's wide and hammered through the covers for four by James. A gift from Leach. Smith still running in as purposefully as he did at the start of the day and that's a lovely looking shot. Square of the wicket on the leg side for four by Calvin Harrison. In, balls. Back foot drive by... James, beautiful shot actually, probably as good a shot, well certainly as good a shot as he's played. Short extra on the catch, and he bowls, his first ball is pushed through quite quickly mm. and dropped a bit short and very easily clipped through. 
brilliant stuff today. Started watching the live stream just after lunch with Clark and Slater going well. Glad to see James and Harrison see the day out and gain the second point. Thank you, Yellow Belly. Appropriate note to end the day on as Lyndon James bowls to, I uh, beg your pardon, Lyndon James pushes the ball back to Jason Holder. <laughs> So a solid day of cricket there for Nottinghamshire. But what did the club captain, Haseeb Hamid, think of everything that happened on day one? Well, Oli Mooney from the Trembridge media team caught up with him at the close of play yesterday. Uh, I think we're pleased to be in the position that we are um, going into tomorrow. I think, obviously, the partnership between Ben and Joel um, was an outstanding one after we lost a couple of wickets earlier with, with Ben and myself. Um, so, so yeah, um, and also to be fair, the, the partnership at the end there between uh, LJ and Cal was a really important one as well. So to be six down with 300 on the board is, uh, is pleasing going into tomorrow. Joe Clark, obviously story of the day, uh, second ton in, in as many matches, a fantastic start to the season, He's one of the leading scorers in the county championship obviously, a fantastic mentality from him to, to go out and put a repeat performance on from, from the Essex game. Yeah, outstanding again from Clarkey. Um, obviously, he had an unbelievable season last season as well, and for him to start again this season shows the quality player that he is. Um, we know he's one of the best players in the country, um, and for him to be showing that is, is brilliant for us. Yeah, how does it feel knowing that you know if, if things don't go quite right for the openers, that you've got players like Clark who can come up and, and back up the team and, and put on those runs that that was so vastly needed. Yeah, I mean, um, I guess that's the whole beauty of having a, a batting lineup that you feel could contribute in, in different games. I think it's it's the way it goes. You have different people um, sharing it out over the course of the season. Um, obviously, again, Joel's been outstanding for us at the start here, um, but I'm sure there'll be different points where other people step up, and that's what's needed for us to, to compete in this division. Of course, got to mention Ben Slater as well. First 50 of the campaign for him and ended on 70. A really good knock from him. Very well measured at times as well, I suppose. Um, but it required... Uh, a bit of patience at times to, to get there for both Clark and for Slater, um, but in, in terms of for Slater, that's, that's really important for him to, to get that on the board early on. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I don't think there was any part of us that was panicking. I think we all knew the quality of player that Ben is. Um, what was really pleasing today was uh, the calmness I had at the crease again. Um, you know, Ben at his best is, is someone that we feel very safe watching from the dressing room when we're, when we're in there. So. Um, yeah, that was certainly the case today and um, again, a really, really fine knock from him and hopefully it's someone that he can build on going into the next few games. Obviously, after losing a couple of wickets in, in Clark and Haynes in, in quick succession, it, it can be easy to, um, to, to start to panic, but, you know, uh, Lyndon James and Calvin Harrison coming in, they've done a terrific job seeing out the rest of the day and, and getting us over that line to 300 runs. Yeah, for sure. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, I think that partnership was a really important period within the game. Um, so, yeah, we know obviously they're both quality players who can hopefully build on the start that they've got is, um, going into tomorrow and, and we've got other batters that can contribute as well, going um, hopefully to come in at, at some point as well. So, um, yeah, we'll be trying our best to, to build on the, the start we've had so far. The morning conditions can be quite different here at Trent Bridge, so uh, we have to respect that. We have to come again tomorrow with a, with a fresh mindset and fresh start to the day. Um, and I'm sure if the lads do that, then we'll, we'll give ourselves a great chance to, to build on. And choosing to bowl first against Essex, decided to bat first today against Worcester. What was uh, behind the what was the thinking behind that decision when we when we won the toss? Yeah, I think conditions. To be honest, um, you know, the Essex game. I think it was obviously a fresh pitch. Um, we'd had quite a lot of rain uh, around going into that morning. So, um, so yeah, we felt like that was the right decision uh, then, and then. The fact that we're playing on the same pitch, so it's a used wicket, um, it's a slightly better day for batting with the with the weather as well and the makeup of our team as well. So, um, so yeah, um, that was the thinking about that. And after the disappointment of the Essex result, considering the fact that you know the the two teams were very evenly matched for for a lot of that game, uh, how pleased are you with how the team have responded on this first day? Yeah, for sure, it's one of the things that I said after the game. Um, actually, the fact that we competed with Essex for you know most part of three days. Um, Yes, we had a difficult last day, uh, but I think it was important for us to to put that to one side. Of course, take the learnings that we could from it, but um, but not dwell on that too much. Um, knowing the quality that we've got within that dressing room, I think we we all knew that would be um, yeah we'd be fine come come the come the next game. And thankfully today the boys have, have stood up and we've got a decent start to to the game. 
the thoughts of the club captain there, Hasib Hamid. Now, he mentioned a couple of names in there, and Ben Slater came to the crease in the fourth over. So let's just take a look at his figures because he got his first 50 of the campaign and his 13th 50 for Nottinghamshire. 70 runs for Ben Slater, included seven fours and one six, and it was a, a really important innings from Ben Slater there because, as I say, he did come in in the fourth over of the innings but it was a crucial partnership between Ben Slater and Joe Clark as well. But also, it was a very special day for Joe Clark. Let's remind you of how he got to his 100. Another special innings there from Joe Clark. 105 runs for Joe Clark. He was in the crease for just over four hours. It was his second 100 of the campaign. A fantastic innings from Joe Clark there yesterday. Now, the umpires and the players are making their way onto the pitch. Lyndon James and Calvin Harrison at the crease. Knots are on 305 for six. But it's time to hand you over to your commentary team, led by Dave Bracegirdle. Well, a very good morning, everybody. Many thanks to uh, Aaron Lord for setting up the day beautifully on the uh, live stream. Uh, for those of you following on uh, the BBC Sport website and app, a warm welcome to Trent Bridge. Um, actually, I should say a chilly um, welcome to Trent Bridge. It's, uh, it's another of those mornings like we had last week for the Essex game where it promises plenty but delivers little. We've got uh, grey skies overhead. We've not got that biting cold wind that we had last week, but it is still chilly out there, but nonetheless. A decent crowd inside Trent Bridge for day two of this Vitality County Championship Division 1 game between Nottinghamshire and Worcestershire. Knots maybe, maybe just shaded the first day. 305 for six at Stumps. They uh, got into that position thanks to uh, a very nice, very... Uh, workmanlike partnership of 60 odd in the uh, back end of the day worth 67 in fact between Lyndon James and Calvin Harrison two youngsters making their way in the game came to the crease with knots needing runs and they've delivered and it just remains to be seen how far, how deep this partnership can go. Warm welcome, I'm Dave Bracegirdle from BBC Radio Nottingham. We've, uh, as always, got a cast of thousands up here to uh, keep you entertained through the day. Grace Ballinger, the Blaze fast bowler, is uh, with us. And Jim Dale's here from BBC Hereford and Worcester. False starters, um, Joe Leach comes charging in from the broad end so we can very quickly say uh, good morning i'm expecting to do an update for radio nottingham in a moment but good morning jim welcome to trent bridge thank you very much my first time here as well and it's uh, it's a little bit overcast isn't it a bit of moisture in the air which is what you want if you want early wickets as joe leach is on his way in for the first ball of the day Balls now to the right-handed Calvin Harrison. Drops this down on the uh, leg side. Had a wander around the ground about, uh, well, early, early this morning. And uh, Calvin was out there. Had a bit of a blather um, with him. Um, I had a wander around the ground as well. Um, mainly because I was lost, David. <laughs> I got lost outside. I've been lost inside. It's not been a great start. You can't get lost at Trent Bridge. 305 for six. And uh, looking at the scorecards last night, close the play round the country. Um, absolutely identical score at uh, the Utilita Bowl between uh, Hampshire 
as uh, this is played away on the uh, on the leg side. Um, just need to refresh myself. Who Hampshire, who are Hampshire playing, Grace? Let's have a, a little look. Lancashire. They were three hundred and five for six as well. Mm. Uh, good morning. How are you? Good morning. I'm all right. Yeah, I'm good. You know, we hold you uh, entirely responsible for Nottinghamshire's <laughs> collapse uh, last weekend, as you did uh, the first two days when Knots were. I think it's probably fair to say more than competitive over those mm, first two days, yeah. and then you didn't come anymore, and they tailed off a little bit. Yeah, it was disappointing, wasn't it? Disappointing fourth day for Knots. There's Leach from the broad end past umpire Alex Wharf and leaning forward. Calvin Harrison, who uh, played a very defensive, watchful role yesterday, ideal for the circumstances, faced 85 deliveries now for his 25, but this is a frustrating partnership for Worcestershire because they... I'm sure will have felt at 238 for six when the last wicket went down. They had the chance of bowling knots out for maybe 280 or less. It's a slight hold up for the next delivery. There is that radio update. Well, we've just started on time. We've had three balls, no addition to the overnight score. Nottinghamshire batting on 305 for six. Partnership in progress between Lyndon James and Calvin Harrison worth 67. It's cold, it's uh, dry though. Nottinghamshire 305 for six. And there'll be ball by ball commentary on the BBC Sport website. So you've not missed absolutely anything. We're just looking at Umpire Wharf. Um, just getting his bits and pieces out and uh, maybe some scissors there, Grace. Just had a little look on the old uh, on the old monitor, um, just attending to the welfare of the ball. Mm. We're ready. Joe Leach in again. Bowls and this is blocked by Calvin Harrison. Still to come then for knots, Liam Patterson-White. Uh, returning to the knots county championship side. Didn't play in the second half of last season. Didn't play in any of the last eight matches. Having uh, been quite a permanent fixture but played pretty much for most of the previous couple of seasons. So it'll be good to see him back in the side. Two spinners, Harrison and Patterson White. And Liam uh, Luke Fletcher back in as well. Next ball is uh, running to the offside. And there's no run 305 for six I can hear from somewhere a little bit of um, a little bit of feedback I don't know where that's coming from three hundred and five for six I hope it's not spoiling your uh... there we are it's gone it's gone. 305 for six. Um, if you'd like to get in touch uh, on the old Twittery thing at Brace Cricket, at Grace Ballinger 2, at James F. Dale, uh, we'd love to hear from you on this Saturday morning as uh, Leach ends what's uh, been decent enough over, a maiden to get us underway. Big day in uh, in sport. Obviously, in this neck of the woods, there's uh, some football just behind us this afternoon. If you're going to be uh, following the cricket this afternoon, we should get lots of sound effects from just behind us over the uh, Radcliffe Road behind us, Nottingham Forest are at home this afternoon. Of course, it's Grand National Day. Let's have your tips. Let us know um, who you fancy for that. And uh, generally, if you'd like a shout out, we'd love to hear from you. As uh, the second over begins, and it's we'll probably say for the first time, very good morning to Jim. Yes, and it'll be Nathan Smith, very impressive yesterday, very impressive at Edge Baston as well. Not the biggest, most imposing of fast bowlers, but he's a bowler in form, and uh, he was quick yesterday. Three wickets to his name, and of course, very experienced with the Cookerborough. So, uh, a clever bit of recruitment from Worcestershire. He's on his way in, bowling to Lyndon James, and he's a uh, Hit that into the pitch hard, just pushed back into the offside. Plenty of bat on it, though. Following a very watchful first over from Calvin Harrison. Lots of batting, isn't there, in this Nottinghamshire side. So Worcestershire are going to have to work hard if they want to wrap this up this morning. And uh, we've got three slips in place. It's Hose at first, and there's uh, Jason Holder at second. And there's a sort of wide fourth slip, Jake Libby there. Hands in pockets. Now in position as Smith comes up to the wicket. And it's a short one, just pushed into the leg side, under his rib cage there. I'll take a single. Kashif Ali is in to do the fielding. Hits Roderick's gloves. 
and that's one more to the total. Mark the Mod, one of our regulars, has been in touch. Two Spitfires, he's down in Kent, is Mark the Mod. Two Spitfires have just flown over the garden here in Seven Oaks, Dave. It must be an omen. Pile on the runs, knots. I'm off to a record fair now. I'll catch you all later. Thanks, Mark. Enjoy your day at the record fair. Spitfires, mm. vinyl records, bit of yeah, cricket. Yeah, He's doing retro. all right, isn't he? Retro. He's doing all right. Mark the Mod. And Nathan Smith there just directing traffic. As so we've got a man moving in to uh, mid wicket. And in comes the New Zealand quick. And that's just pushed into the offside. Looks to take a quick single, they do. It's a bit of a fumble in the field at, uh, at point. I don't know how many Spitfires are left flying and generally, and, and I know Mark the Mod knows his stuff, so they will be two Spitfires, but. Very often hear people say, oh, Spitfire flew over, and I know blooming well, because I'll have seen it, it'll have been a hurricane. Um, cause th there's not that much difference, but there is a difference, and of course, this neck of the woods. Um, we've got the Battle of Britain flight at Coningsby, so we very often see the Lancaster and the Hurricane and the Spitfire, but I don't think there's too many Spits left flying now. Points gone back out onto the fence for Lyndon James, and it's uh, again just pushed into the offside. It's another easy single taken to cover. In between that Manic Cover and uh, Rob Jones. In a catching position behind the wicket. So uh, another easy single. It's uh, come off the middle of the bat again. And uh, Dolivera there, Worcestershire captain, working really hard on that ball. And Smith does the same. Swept from the brow already. <laughs> and he bowled five balls. In comes Smith again then. Calvin Harrison waits. Again, it's a solid four defensive. Back down the wicket. Straight out the middle of the bat. And there's no run. Daniel says, me and the wife have got you all in our ears. We sat over in front of the pavilion. Very good morning to Daniel and the wife. I hope you enjoy your day. And you've got the blanket and a flask of something warm. Because it's, uh, it's going to be one of those days where I think it's going to be a little chilly sat out there. I brought my sunglasses with me today. I thought it was... <laughs> <laughs> it was set sunny, but... You might have overclubbed a little bit there, Grace. I think I have, you're right. So, last ball of Smith's over then. And he comes again, it's just pushed back down the wicket to the bowler. Solid stroke, no run taken. And that's the second over the day completed, and uh, no real alarm there for the Knotts batsman. No, it looks as if we're playing in all nine county championship matches, uh, which is always good to see. Proves there's relatively decent dry weather up and down the country. Five matches going on in Division 1, four in um, Division 2. Already in uh, the first division at Edgbaston, Warwickshire have advanced their overnight score of 490 for one to 506 for one. Alex Davis is 227 not out. He's not got Grace Ballinger to bowl at him, otherwise he wouldn't have got that many. There she is. <laughs> 400 not out as <laughs> Leach is in two slips in play, and that's back for length and just pushed into the leg side by Lyndon James a good smart bit of cricket from these two to start they've been running between the wickets nicely well Dave they have indeed yes um, same sitting outside uh, in the fresh air it's, it's going to be one of those chilly days I'm going to have a small wager that that group that are in the Smith Cooper stand won't be feeling a chill at all today because they're in fancy dress I've just had a look in the binoculars they've all got big floppy dog's ears on and uh, looks very much as if uh, it might well be a party that aren't planning on uh, on going home at six o'clock this evening and uh, and watching the Masters. Leach in again and that's back of a length outside off and left alone. I think they're out for the day and they're going to make a long day of it. Oh, I was going to say, it's a very early start, yeah. isn't it? Got a bit on, hasn't it? I mean, if that's a stag do, Dave, and they're, they're having an all-dayer in April, that's a gutsy move, isn't it? I tell you what, if I've you're organising that. I've, I've just thought I might have to have a look, another look. I wonder if they're wolf's ears they've got on, and perhaps they have come for two hours of cricket and then going over the road behind us. I don't know. I don't know what a wolf's ears looks like, but maybe, maybe only here for the morning session. Leach in again and brings Harrison forward nicely into a defensive stroke. Bit of effort there from Joe Leach, wasn't there? A little grunt on release. So trying to make something happen for his side here. So let's stitch Grace up from the uh, from the start here. So you're a you're a bear. Ooh. Oh, the the pairs <laughs> the, the pairs are the enemy, I think. 
Uh, I, I was. I definitely was a bear, but I'd say I'm fledged. You've not. shifted your yeah, allegiance I have. now, have you? I really? have. Diplomatically put. Took me a couple of years, but... <laughs> it's all the error of your ways. I've changed the uh, the BBC Sport notifications from Warwickshire to Notts now, so committed as Leach is in, and mm. again pushed into the offside by Harrison. Thinks of a quick single, but thinks better of it. Now, when you left us last weekend, you said you were going to spend the week... This is genuine, Jim. She said she was going to spend a week doing a, a what? A dissertation on Russian politics. Russian? Well, it's a Russian novel. It's philosophical. I knew, I knew it began with P. Close enough, isn't it? And how did that go? <laughs> it went all right. I was actually pretty busy playing cricket, so I didn't get as much done as I'd, <laughs> as I'd have liked. But can't complain. At least we're back outside. As Leach is in again and again, pushed into the offside, backwards a point. Point does well, diving to his left to prevent any run being taken. Yeah, it, good work from Jake Libby now. This it? is the blaze. It is. Mm. It is indeed. We were in the north of Nottingham at, oh, what's it called? Work, Worksop College we were on Thursday. Mm. And that's all I'll say about it. Yeah. <laughs> Joe Root went to Worksop College. Yeah, if someone said that. Joe and Joe and his younger brother, I think. Yeah, Will, yeah. Leach bowls again, Stuart broad end and holding his line in length nicely here. Harrison keeps it away and end of the over at Nottingham three hundred and nine for six. I don't know why I called him Will, I've called him Billy for as long as I've known him. Um Little, little little side one there. I've played international cricket at Worksop College. How about that? Who have you played that for? Italy. Italy? Yes. You knew that, <laughs> I surely. I did not know that, no. Right. Oh, well, well. There we are. There's the uh, there's the group. They're not wolves, are they? Hang on. There's there's a nose on one of them. Look. There's a fake nose on one of them. They've all got noses. Are they reindeer? I don't know. This, are they rabbits? Don't know. Don't know. It we shouldn't be that hard to, to identify, should it? It says more about us than it does about, uh, does about them. And again, it's uh, Nathan Smith directing traffic. Rob Jones is going to move from the cordon into, looks like, extra car. We've got a man on the drive on the offside now. Oh, so we've, we've got now uh, uh -huh. Jason Holder's at slightly yeah. wide first slip. We've got a four slip in. We've got a man on the drive on the offside. And uh, Jake Libby's now working his way around the boundary. Deep point. Three men on the leg side as Smith is on his way in. To Lyndon James again, solid forward defensive. Nice little timing on that as well. We're yet to see anyone beat the bat. So a solid start from these two. It's quiet though, isn't it? Just uh, four runs have come in the first 13 deliveries. Nottinghamshire clearly set in their stall out to try and bat the session rather than throw the bat and get a quick 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 and find themselves bowled out. Smith then on his way in and that's again firmly pushed back down the ground to mid off there's no run taken and we've not seen a ball beat the bat we've not seen a batsman in any kind of bother at all as we see the first glimpses of sunshine this morning never change in the field as that man on the leg side is uh, sent back three quarters of the way towards the boundary Lyndon James has a look He's been in touch. Morning, Dave, Grace and Jim. I'm watching on my phone in the beer garden in St Neots. Set for a great day's play. Enjoy. And, uh, and you, T? Lovely to hear from you in your beer garden in St Neots. Where's that? Cambridge, yeah? Near Cambridge, yeah. yeah. Yeah, just up the road from Cambridge. So there we are. Rubbish with uh, animals with big ears, but <laughs> solid with uh, local geography. So that's OK. Enjoy your beer garden. Early start. Fair enough. I hope it's an early finish. You know, It's, um, it's a great deal of fuss about the ball I think at the moment they're going to the, the old we're going we're gonna to keep making a point see if we can get it changed because obviously getting nothing out of this at all and it's, this is a very similar position they found themselves in Edge Baston last weekend it was actually 306 for 5 rather than 305 for 6 and they took 4 wickets in the first hour and uh, it's a really good bowling performance again led by Nathan Smith he's been so impressive yeah my mistake I think but, they're actually waiting for some protective gear to be brought out of that's a, that's that's my second guess. Yeah, I think that's I think that's what it is. There's no cricket going on at all. It's been a, ah, a, a very slow, subdued start to the morning, which um, I guess it's it's not bad as it's a Saturday morning. Just ease your way into the day, but 
I wouldn't have been at all surprised that Nottinghamshire looked to crack on in the first 15-20 minutes here, get a few boundaries, just get the board moving and try and get up towards that third batting bonus point. So Grace, have you had a game this week than cricket or has it just been nets again? Uh, we had, yeah, we kind of had a warm-up game on Thursday. Um, well, yeah, we, we did have a middle game, a warm-up game on Thursday. Uh, was that Loughborough? No, it works up. Um, yeah, it was good to get get some overs in outside. Um, got up in York again on Tuesday this week. So, yeah, and then it all gets going on Saturday at Edgebaston. Mm. Where's that, York Cricket Club? It is, yeah. Mm. And they were knots two years ago and it just rained all day. <laughs> Change of tactic here from Nathan Smith. Coming round the wicket, short leg in place, helmet on. Short stuff straight away up in the rib cage. And uh, handled really well actually there, just dropped into the leg side. Very much in control of that. Simon Trafford, who's uh, usually one of the photographers out on the ground, don't you, if you're out on the ground there, he says, Dave, looks like they've got hair bands on. Hair band, H A R E, as in. Uh, yeah, I'm with you. The <laughs> it's floppy the long animal. Explanation for the hard of yeah. understanding. Thanks, that. Simon. I'm not sure the the differential that's apparently obvious between a hare and a reindeer. Or In comes Smith know. once more. Again, it's short and it's a uh, bit of pace on that one. Less control there. Was kept down though by Lyndon James and uh, survived that one. As often you see. Uh, a short leg come in and a man go out and you think it's going to be short and they chuck a Yorkie your way. But um, they're obviously going for the short stuff here. And testing his metal. As well, they might leg slip in as well there. So we've got one slip and a it's, uh, Jason Holder. Quite wide leg slip as well. Short leg, those are the catchers. As Smith comes in once more. Again, it's short, but again, it's well controlled and dropped in the leg side. A good metre and a half in front of short leg as the Worcestershire fielders continue to work hard on this Kookaburra ball and the runs well they're flowing in April that, that shouldn't be a thing should it <laughs> it's batter's game isn't it who would be a bowler 300 Nothing scores the all bowlers. over the place in the second week of April in the county championship and uh, Nottinghamshire say uh, in control of this one at the moment 309 for 6 is the score and James and Harrison well set here as again Smith comes in round the wicket again it's short and it's just tucked round the corner to long leg they'll take another single and uh, that will complete the over so change of tactics from Worcestershire still not really much sign of a breakthrough but they've managed to curtail the scoring if nothing else only five runs scored in the four overs we've had so they've um, kept it on the runs if nothing else yeah, it's uh, just 10 overs remaining now in which either side can add to their bonus points. Knots need 40 runs in those 10 overs, so they'll have to quicken things up there if they want to get another batting point. As for Worcestershire, it's getting a little critical in terms of getting a, uh, a full complement of bowling points. They need three wickets in 10 overs if they're to uh, get a third bowling bonus point. Joe Leach. Fingers of one for 57 so far comes in from the Stuart Broad end bowls and Lyndon James, tall, fair head, pushes into the offside. Rob Jones does the fielding, no run, 310 for six. So we've got uh, a party here for the day. Look to be uh, enjoying themselves at the cricket and we'll maybe venture on perhaps to the football and certainly into the city centre later you'd imagine as Leach turns in front of the committee rooms at the far end and bowls and this is edged certainly a slice of fortune in every sense there from Lyndon James off the outside edge it went along the ground wouldn't have been a catch had there been a third or fourth slip in but gets a couple of runs down to third man as Libby chases and Linda James on to 45, 312 for six. What's the go-to fancy dress costume for the Blaze at the moment, then? Is there, uh, <laughs> <laughs> is there something that uh, you'd readily go and grab if it was a, a, um, a Blaze night out? Maybe, maybe not with the Blaze if we'd done fancy dress, but I like dressing um, cowboy, or cowgirl, should I say. <laughs> Next ball is uh, work to mid-wicket by Lyndon James, no run. That's the banker. That's, the, that's your safe bet. Well, that, that's, that's the only bet. one I've got, so you okay. know, when it gets to two days that's before and you think, oh, I still haven't got anything, oh, just. 
That's your normal weekend What's Grace outfit. doing? She's doing cowgirl again. Oh, just, yeah. <laughs> you look it's through an expensive... my Instagram, every single one, just... <laughs> <laughs> it's an expensive gig, this fancy dress malarkey. I'm not sure about it. Just don't fix what's not broken. Quite like the cowboy outfit. Leech once more. Footmarks, certainly at the far end. Uh, very evident this morning as this is uh, pushed into the offside. And the closest, no run. closest I get to fancy dress is putting on whites and attempting cricket a couple of times a year. That's, uh... See, a lot of my friends do that. I think I've got a friend who was speaking to me yesterday. He's doing the Otley run today and he's a cricketer and he's doing it in cricket whites. To me, that's not really fancy dress, is it? It's just putting on what you wear on a Saturday yeah. anyway. He should be wearing pads and a helmet and carrying a bat. Shocking then effort. it's fancy dress. Lazy effort of fancy dress. <laughs> Call him out on the radio, why not? <laughs> Joe Leach again. Testimonial year, as we were hearing yesterday. Just spears this one slightly offline down the leg side. Lyndon James went to just try and get something on it. It would have been a certain boundary had he been able to tickle it wide of Gareth Roderick, but it's a good take by the keeper who picked up three catches yesterday. Nottinghamshire. Lost their openers in the morning session. A Seba Mead for 11 and Ben Duckett for 9. Launched at 83 for 2. They had a good afternoon session with uh, Joe Clark and Ben Slater adding 100 in that session. Next ball is uh, driven up to mid-off. There's no run. Slater was eventually out for 70. Matthew Montgomery made 11. Jack Haynes didn't uh, appear to agree with the umpire's decision that he was uh, to go LBW he went for 15 Clark for 105 and uh, stumps were called 305 for 6 we've had 5 overs this morning and just 7 runs quiet start, quiet Saturday as you say but they've looked pretty solid in their defence James and Harrison, James maybe slightly early on a couple of leeches deliveries I thought maybe immediately following the slightly quicker bowling of Smith. Slightly shorter, just needed to wait a fraction longer for Leach, but it will be Smith in again from the Radcliffe Road end. And he comes then. And it's short and it's uh, misdirected actually, it's down the leg side. No need to get anywhere near that from the batsman's perspective. Easy take there for Gareth Roderick. Yes, there was a couple of drives, weren't there? Last over, there was a genuine edge. There was no danger, but a genuine edge. And there was a little bit uppish, wasn't it? That check drive towards cover. Mm. That was fielded by Rob Jones. <coughs> so maybe a change change of pace and uh, going to your one-day arsenal to uh, try and dislodge these two, who look pretty well set. Smith at the top of his mark, former Otago man, now with Wellington, and uh, doing a good job for Worcestershire, doing the short stuff as well, body line. That's a better line from Smith, but again, it's pretty well controlled, despite a man being in close proximity on the leg side. But Worcestershire trying things, and I suppose this is the point of the Kookaburra experiment, is to try and find ways to pick up wickets where you might not otherwise. It's hard enough to get wickets, isn't it, without giving him a different separate challenge to the one they're normally accustomed to. Smith in again then, round the wicket. And again, it's uh, just pushed into the leg side. Uh, yeah, they, uh, there was a call for flatter wickets when Joe Root was England captain. They wanted flatter wickets, and now with the Kookaburra as well. But I suppose you've got to have a look at these things. But... Uh, it's, it does make for interesting reading, the amount of runs that have been scored in April. It's, uh, it's hard enough to pick up wickets in, uh, in June and July, so... Tough old gig for the fast bowlers. Smith in once more, Fuller, and uh, look for that Yorker there. Dug out well, though, by Calvin Harrison. Just quickly elsewhere, Essex now 432 for 6 at home to Kent. Hampshire have lost a wicket this morning. They're 313 for seven at home to Lancashire. Somerset yesterday bowled out for 285 at the Oval. Surrey's openers still there, 69 on the board. And Warwickshire, 520 for one against Durham. I'll give you Division 2 in just a moment. In comes Smith. Back to the short stuff again. It's a bit too leg side. No need to play at that. And it's just a cursory movement to keep out the way of the ball 
Wantage Road, Emilio Gay is now on 172 not out out of a North Ant score of 324 for four. Leicestershire 338 all out. Sussex just started their second innings and they've lost Tom Clark to the first ball of the innings. They're naught for one. Sussex just uh, down the road at Grace Road. In comes Smith. Uh, again, better directed. And again, just dropped into the leg side. So a little bit of stalemate here. Score 312 for six. Not in show, not getting away. But uh, Worcestershire unable to get that early break full, breakthrough that they'd hoped for. Two other scores at Bristol. Gloucestershire 35 for three. They've got a poor start to Saturday. Uh, Yorkshire made 326 yesterday. And at Cardiff, where Glamorgan were bowled out for 237. Derbyshire are 60 for one. It's going to be Joe Leach to continue. Um, if you want to know all about the best places to go and have a cup of coffee in... Uh, Certainly in West Bridgeford, I don't know about Nottingham or the wider area. Grace Ballinger is your gal. I've been reading the uh, new edition of the Knott's Members mag magazine, Covered. Um, go for a coffee with Grace, it says. What's mm. all that about? Well, oh, I'll tell you in a minute. As <laughs> Leach comes into bowl, and this is a wild swipe outside off and a front foot no ball called by... Lyndon James. It didn't seem that he could have picked up the call early enough to have a wild swipe, but it did seem quite out of character from the way he'd been batting. What do you reckon? I reckon there was a lot of no balls yesterday. Worcestershire will feel there were far too many. Nathan Smith was the chief culprit. Racking my brains, I'm not sure that... Uh, I don't think Joe Leach bowled any yesterday. Jason Holder did as well, but there were a lot of no balls yesterday. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I... I I doubt he heard the call. Short and wide as well, wasn't yeah. it? It's been tight bowling. I think he just wanted to free his arms there. Leach's in again, and this time driven, but straight to extra cover. So the coffee shop stuff. Um, <laughs> obviously, Blaze were a formerly Lightning, based in Loughborough. And we used to have this um, this place called Martin Hall on Loughborough Campus where we'd have all our coffee breaks. And when we moved to West Bridgeford about 18 months ago, a bit longer, moved to Trent Bridge, made that our home, we needed needed a local coffee shop here so I went on the hunt down West Bridgeford High Street and it took a while because there's about eight coffee shops in a half a kilometre strip but there's a lot of good ones down there so that's where the rating sort of came from as Leach is in again and again short and wide and just pushed away by Lyndon James on the back foot two wide third there's no man there and it will race away for four applause around Trent Bridge the first boundary of the day Nottingham just 318 for six um, Charlie, another of our regulars, just sent a photo in of uh, um, Bob Willis here. I've just uh, just retweeted it at Brace Cricket. You'll see the relevance uh, of it on there. Nice photo, Charlie. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, it's part of a, a lovely feature you've uh, you've actually done here for the Members Magazine covered. Grace, lots of lovely. Uh, Lots of lovely photos there. You've revealed all sorts. No one wants to come second, says Grace Ballinger. It's the first loser. Mm. There's Leach balls again and again. Two full and this time driven on the offside. But there is a deep cover who gets round. And that's a big applause around Trent Bridge because that does bring up Lyndon James's half century. He's 50 not out. 108 balls, 142 minutes. Well batted, Lyndon James. Yeah, it's been impressive, hasn't it? And uh, just a couple of couple of balls loose, short and wide from uh, Joe Leach. Helped him get to that total. And uh, things starting to look a little bit ominous for the pairs. As Leach in again, looks to rectify the previous two deliveries, does with a good straighter and better length delivery. Yeah, missed out in the uh, first game last week. Eight in the first innings was left high and dry. Seven not out in the second. Uh, Lyndon James is uh, already posted three first-class hundreds in his career. 44th first-class match this. Dropped down a couple of places in the batting order this year because he's got more of a role with the ball. Leach it again, slip and gully and short, an attempted pulled away, but just catches the bottom of Calvin Harrison's bat as Leach stands there, double teapot, staring at Calvin Harrison. <laughs> Send that one before, haven't we, Brace, that we have. double teapot look, but a dot ball nonetheless. Usually when you're bowling yeah, and you've absolutely. not got a wicket. <laughs> <laughs> 
is indeed what I was alluding to. <laughs> <laughs> but there you have it. Sense maybe a change of intent from the Nottinghamshire batters, maybe looking to get that final batting point or the next batting point that Dave earlier mentioned and Leach at the end of his mark final ball then of his 24th over and it's a better delivery once again dot ball into the offside end of the over Nottinghamshire 319 for 6 yeah so uh, to get that extra point now what is it 31 from 7 overs you'd imagine they'd They'd be disappointed if they didn't get it. These points are so hard to, to come by, so easy to lose as well, of course. But 31 from seven overs, they really should be in that sort of ballpark. But um, I, guess it's a, I guess it's a fine balance between being absolutely reckless and going after it and, uh, and just, just making sure that the bigger picture is achieved. And the bigger picture for Knots, I'm sure, is to get as close to 400 as they can from this position. Smith then, he's going to continue round the wicket with a short leg in place. And it is short, but he just uh, tucks that off his hip, square of the wicket. And they'll take a single. Yeah, I um, think you're right, Dave. It's only, what, four, four and a bit and over needed for the next batting point. There's no recklessness needed, really. I mean, the field's relatively spread. There's, there's a gap in the offside. They should be able to get that without being too reckless mm. as you say and, and, and if you did it you'd say they've played this absolutely perfectly this morning they've each had a look at the bowl and played themselves in got re to the conditions and, uh, and they've kicked on nicely this partnership now worth 82 Smith then on as we end to Harrison more of the short stuff prodded out into the offside this time but uh, fielded by Jake Libby so there is no run and Oliveira continues to work on that ball. Two men out in the deep on the leg side. And uh, we've got a, a second slip, no first slip. That's Jason Holder. He's going through the motions mm. here. Looks like he'll be <laughs> bowling sooner rather than later. We've got Rob Jones there at uh, leg slip. Short leg. And then we've got uh, two men either side of the wicket saving one. Harrison bat up waiting for Smith. And Smith and uh, digs that into the pitch. And it's uh, dug out suitably well, so there'll be no run there either. And it could well be this little game within a game that Smith's just thinking, if we can just keep them keep them at bay, ask them to play a silly shot chasing that bonus point, it might be their best shout of breaking the uh, breaking the partnership here. As there is, a again, a change of tack. The round-the-wicket short stuff hasn't seemed to work. Field stays the same, though, so it could be more body line. Over the wicket, then. Smith's into Harrison. Yes, it is. It's short, he tests the middle of the pitch, but uh, Harrison just ducks underneath it, wants nothing to do with it. There's no point in throwing it away now. Voice of Jim Dale, representing the uh, good folk of BBC Hereford and Worcester. Tell me, tell me, Jim, that you are up with your carry-on films. Uh, well, do you know what? I train professionally as an actor. <laughs> Uh, uh, so um, I've had plenty of Dr Nookie references uh, hence James F Dale in fact um, as Smith is in and it's short but just on his toes there Harrison just drops it into the leg side no run taken Dr Jimmy Nookie carry on again doctor um, I've, got, I've got the list here and I'm, I'm sure you'll have had them thrown at you or looked them up uh, over the years Dr Kilmore it was carry on doctor the great Jim Dale um, he does the he does the American version of the he does the uh, Harry Potter audio books as well. Does he? Yes, yeah, so he's big big in the states for doing that. And uh, the only the only connection between me and Jim Dale is that of course we're both very good friends with Maureen. Uh, that's not true. That's not true. Uh, again, Smith directing traffic. We're going to have some more field changes here. What have we got here? Marshall P. Nutt, carry on <laughs> cowboy. <laughs> Brilliant. It's a strange old field here, they're setting. Yeah, well, it's, we've got, uh, again, the slip and the leg slip are still in there. Short leg, we've got a man at silly mid on on the drive. I mean, that you need insurance for. And Smith is in again, and it's uh, just back of a length and uh, played into the offside to the man on the drive at cover. Who collects? There's no run. They're trying everything they can here, but I don't think it's, uh, it's uh, a different field every ball at this point. And Smith completes his over and Nottinghamshire on 320 for six. 
and uh, just playing sensibly here. Yeah. But you do feel actually that although they perhaps might get the better of the batting conditions, at some point they're going to have to get a move on. Because if uh, if the pitch plays like this for the rest of the uh, the four days, well, you want to capitalise on the runs that you've got. You want to get a bit of a wriggle on and get bowling, I think. But because um, it might be it might be tricky to bowl a team out twice. Mm. Famous last words, of doesn't, course. Doesn't tend to break up here, but uh, used wicket as we've been saying, it's the same strip they played on last week. A leg spinner doesn't half help the matter as well, does it? Yeah, got a leg spinner, another spinner. There's Grace Ballinger. Leach in Lyndon James to face first delivery and that's pushed up to mid off no run taken packed offside field slip gully backward point a deep cover ex almost a catch and get extra cover a bit more of a regulation extra cover and a mid off so can't get too straight here or too full to Lyndon James how are they trying to get him out how are you trying to get him out Grace how would I Try and get Lyndon James out. Yeah. Mm. Bold, LB, probably, if I had a new ball early doors. Yeah, it's not a new ball, that's the trouble. At the <laughs> uh. Leach is in and driven into that offside, that packed offside field. Well, it's in and out, isn't it? They're looking for a false shot, I think, here, which is rather hopeful at this stage. You'd imagine Worcestershire are thinking, not so got it just got to try and accelerate the score in here they'll obviously be aware that Knots need 30 and now five and a half overs and uh, they'll obviously want to make it as difficult as they can Jason Holder to come as well incredibly yeah. economical wasn't he yesterday yeah. and he's not a man you want to try and send to the fence if you have to as Leach bowls and this is outside off and flashed nicely by Lyndon James should race away for it doesn't a very good diving stop out on the cover boundary Who's out there, Brace? That's Kinter. a very good question. I think it's cash. Very good stop. Saved two runs there. Diving to his left. Towards the Smith Cooper stand. And a bit of sun just protruding mm. over there. A bit of blue skies. It's brightened up slightly. Maybe I will need my sunglasses after all. Let's hope so. I yeah. can't see who it is. It's hard work. They don't put the numbers on the shirts, do they, Worcestershire, the so-and-sos? Leach in again and... Goes slightly straighter. James forward in defence. Yes, yeah, thought we got it sorted out yesterday, except Finch and Hose. I kept getting uh, confused. They, uh, they looked a little similar. It's a good sliding stop on the rope to deny Nottinghamshire a boundary. 322 for six. So the equation now is 28 more needed in. Five overs and two balls. Leach in and outside off, slightly wide and pushed nicely by Lyndon James. This time far straighter and they think of coming back for two, but just a single in the end. I think that's Adam Finch out there doing the fielding. Bit vintage, isn't it? No mm. shirt numbers on the jumpers. Bit retro, what do you reckon? Well... If I was playing, I'd quite like them. I like the old woolly pulley, but uh, you're quite right as a commentator. You sort of, you know, we have been spoilt for many years by the fact that most county and indeed now international sides tend to uh, have names and numbers that you can see. When you have fielders close together as well, you can tell by height and shape a little yeah. bit more. When you've got that sole man out on the boundary, there's a hint of guesswork at times. Yeah, yeah I, I think, think you're right. Um, Cash is right over there. We've got Cash Alley at mid on, uh, Brett Oliveira at mid off. There's Leach in and Harrison forward nicely. Dot ball to end the over. It is going to be uh, Adam Finch, I think, peeling off his sweater so we will see his number now because he's going to have a ball from this the Radcliffe Road end here on BBC Radio Nottingham BBC Hereford and Worcester and of course via the live stream on Trent Bridge Live very good morning to uh, all our camera crew out and about today we've got Spence Lewis and Stan around the ground with the cameras Kirsty and Aaron as ever running the production side of things and uh, sorting out all the highlight packages for the end of the day and for Tomorrow morning, 3.23 for 6. 
Yeah, and it will be Adam Finch just uh, taking a bit of direction there from Joe Leach and from his skipper too. Oh, the Brains Trust are all together. Bowled okay yesterday. The one wicket he got, we, we sort of commented on, was one of his poorer balls because it was always going down the leg side and Ben Slater went to work it away down that leg side and got a bit of a, a tickle on it. It was a, a proper old leg side strangle yeah. and a good catch from keeper Roderick. That was a wicket that Worcestershire needed because it broke up a partnership of a 133 between Slater and Clark for that third wicket. He's uh, a lot of promise as Adam Finch. Had a bit of a breakthrough year last year. You felt like he had to as well with the uh, the amount of seam bowlers that were in front of him. Of course, Dylan Pennington moving up to Nottinghamshire along with Josh Tong as well means that he has a bit more responsibility but he has height, he has pace, strong lad and uh, an opportunity in the first division as well will only aid his development and he will be bowling to one slip and the leg slip stays as is two men back on the leg side, one at uh, deep point too many either side of the wicket on the one as Finch comes in and it's foolish and it's driven beautifully and Joe Leach has mm. got a race on towards the long on boundary it does uh, stop a good 10 feet short and in the end uh, he's just uh, he just bowled six overs on the spin Joe Leach won't <laughs> necessarily even <laughs> approved of that it was yeah. a bit too bit too full it was half folly wasn't it a bit too straight and it was uh just pushed away. There's nothing worse than that after you've just bowled off to give chase. <laughs> I tell you what, it's even worse when it's the last ball of the over and you're out and then you have to run to your mark at the other end. It's out of breath. Sickening. <laughs> Fast bowlers union. In comes Finch again. Short this time. So from very full to very short. It's just a little weave out the way from uh, from Harrison. Yeah, Joe Leach yesterday, for much of the time when he wasn't bowling, was uh, in a nice comfy position talking to the spectators in front of the Fox Road stand. He was sort of the sweeper out there on that fence. Of course, a former Worcestershire skipper, so he was able to pick and choose his fielding positions. But as you say, it's just absolutely typical. You just go into uh, the mid-on position and first ball, after finishing a bowling spell, you've got to turn and sprint to fetch the ball back. In comes Finch again. Again, it's really short. It's too short, really. Bit of tennis ball bounce, almost. There was a, a little moment where he thought Harrison might have a little pop at that, but it's... Uh, he's left that well alone. So... Uh, I think it was a no ball. ball. I was going to say, just, yeah. I think it was a no ball. And he's going to come round the wicket now. Bustles in, and it's uh, again it's pushed <laughs> through. Uh, a wide long on. Poor old Joe. Joe Leach is on the chase. It'll Ooh. be another couple. Not great running. <sighs> they made it trickier than they needed mm. to be. Did get that's three a, there. They did. Yes, that's that's, very quick uh, running. that's that's eight from this over. A pair of threes and the no ball. So uh, just quietly, not so sneaking up there. Three, three, one for six. Another 19 from four and a half overs. They, they should get there, shouldn't they? You'd hope so. And we're coming back over the wicket. So after a, a reasonably tight and kind of controlled opening burst from Smith and Leach, Finch has uh, he's gone full and short. We've had a no ball and we've had round the wicket. We're back over the wicket. So no two balls the same. Full again. Yorker length dug out well, but uh, fielded on the move at mid-off. So no run taken. So that's on. That's what's on the menu then with uh, Adam Finch. It's um, middle of the pitch or no pitch at all. Big afternoon of sport coming up on uh, BBC Radio Nottingham for uh, local listeners. Nottingham Forest playing behind us against Wolves. The two League Two sides both away from home. Notts are at Walsall. Mansfield are at MK Dons. Finch in again, just pushed off the back foot through the covers, there's a race on for the man at uh, deep point he manages to scoop the ball inside the boundary so they'll stop it going for four, but just a couple more to the total as this partnership edges ever closer towards the 100 mark and uh, Finch is leaking runs here 
Triple Nelson got the Gucci up there. Three, three, three for six feet off the ground. If you're a not supporter, you superstitious Grace must have asked you that before. Not at all. No, not that's at a all. rarity in cricket, isn't Walk it? Walk under cricket. ladders. Yeah. You, don't, you don't salute magpies. Anything, not bothered. Finch in again, and again it's pushed hard, and there's a chance. I just, I just misfilled it at uh, mid off there, so that's going to be picked up just inside the boundary. Good fielding on the turn though. And it's a couple more to the total, so mm. it's 335 for six here. So not a great start this morning for Adam Finch. No, 12 from that one. A couple of threes, a couple of twos, and a no ball. So uh, that certainly helped not. 3-3-5 three, three, on the board. And after doing all of that fielding, mm. he's, uh, <laughs> he's taking his sweater off. He's probably angry, that's why. <laughs> Give me the ball. <laughs> It's uh, some uh, some important sport on uh, BBC Hereford and Worcester as well. I have to mention Worcester City. I am a season ticket holder at Worcester City. I'm contractually obliged. They are in the FA Vars semi-final this afternoon. So um, if you are listening in on your way to Great Wakering in East Essex, good on you for making that long journey to support the faithful city. They have a one-goal advantage <laughs> from the first leg. And uh, I, you know, I, I might have a cursory eye on that this afternoon. Great Wakering. But they're not your main team, are they? Or are they? Uh, Exeter City are my main mm. team, but more on that in a moment. As uh, Leach bowls to Calvin Harrison, drops this on the leg side. Yeah, yeah the, um, the photo that you put of me on Twitter <laughs> earlier on, Dave, the one that you decided to select was uh, me doing a ridiculous face with the cow and my dad in my Exeter City hat. So uh, my dad's from... I was born in Worcester. My dad's from the West Country, a place called Budley Salterton. So he took me to Exeter when I was six and I didn't know any better. And that's sort of how it works, but... Uh, You've got to support your local side as well. So I do uh, I do football commentary for Radio Devon and uh, uh, as an Exeter City away commentator. But my, my heart is with Worcester City this afternoon. Big game. 3-3-5 three, three, for 6. Next ball is uh, pushed into the offside. There's no run. Just a couple of things on that. I always remember Budley Salterton when, back in the 80s when I lived in North Devon. Um, played for Braunton on a glorious, glorious summer's day, July or August. Drove down to Budley Salterton for a Devon League game. And uh, say it was a glorious, hot, sunny Devon day. And the match was called off. They'd had a bit of rain in the week and it just hadn't dried. It was just inconceivable that it was called off. Was, uh, they might have just found something better to do, Dave, to be honest. It was just <laughs> unbelievable that. The game was called off. Nice shot. looking shot through mid wicket for four by Calvin Harrison. Timed that one away. Glorious shot. Knots up to 3 3 9 for six. Harrison on to 33. And that's the 100 partnership from these two youngsters. Terrific stuff. Uh, Lyndon James led the way. 57 of those runs. 33 to Calvin. 101 from 226 balls. And uh, it's fair to say that. When they came to the crease uh, together, not were in need of a few runs, and I don't think even the most ardent not supporter would have absolutely put their house on this pair, putting 100 on for the seventh wicket, but lo and behold, they've done it as Leeds comes in and bowls, and this one's uh, steered to backward point. And the other thing on what you said there, you ought to take me next time you go to Exeter City, because uh, I'm a, a lucky omen for them. The last time I saw them, they scored seven, so where was that? Cheltenham away? It was Cheltenham away in the, and it would uh, been the, in the League, League Cup, Cup last year. There you go. Another night that I remember I, for I, we all did, the we wrong and my dad reasons. were thinking about going. Living in Worcester, we thought about going. We thought, last minute, ah, oh, we'll leave it. No, it'll be, it'll be a nothing game. And uh, we walked away from that one. Foolish. It, uh, it just served my purposes right, because the next day I was commentating on knots down at Bristol in the Royal London. As uh, Leach comes in to bowl, this is pushed up to mid-off and there's no run. And left Chel um, Cheltenham whatever, quarter to ten, ten o'clock on the uh, Tuesday night, uh, just to head down to the hotel in Bristol, M5 shut, just what you need, the 40 mile journey became a 70 mile journey and I saw parts of Gloucestershire and Wiltshire and Stropshire, Shropshire and maybe even Northumberland, heaven knows where they rerouted <laughs> us, but um, I didn't go anywhere near the M5, that was a night to forget got there about one o'clock in the morning when I should have got there about quarter to eleven 339 for six, Harrison on 33. Again, he goes uh, the mid wicket route, but this time stopped. I think that's Adam Hose. I wouldn't put my life on it, but I think that's Hose. 339 for six after 107 overs. Knots need 11 from three overs. Um, a quiet start to 
day two, but that's not a bad thing. Knots began on 305 for six. Joe Clark a century yesterday, 70 from Ben Slater. Three wickets for Nathan Smith, who was by some distance the standout bowler. And um, again, we made the comment last week that thankfully we'd had a game without any interruptions for a change of ball. But this morning it does seem as if just maybe Worcestershire once or twice have asked the umpires just to have a look at it. I don't know if that's what they were talking about or not, but uh, unusual for the umpires to come together in the middle of, uh, what well, between overs and have a, have a chat. don't know if the ball was involved or not. 3-3-9 for six, Grace Ballinger. Thanks, Dave. Um, not a lot going on at the moment. As you say, a bit of a slow start. But the sun is coming out and it is far brighter than when we first started just shy of an hour ago. The Milt Smith, uh, beg your pardon, Finch for 12 in his last over, didn't they? If they get 12 in, in this over, they've, uh, they've achieved the, what I would imagine was their primary goal to get Knotts up to that third batting point. It's gone leg sidey, look. We're going to have a bit of leg theory here. Umpire keeps... Uh, Alex Wharf must be a little frustrated because he, he, he keeps taking a position at square leg and then... Whenever Worcester should move another fielder out there, he, he pops over to point so he can just check and make sure there's not three behind square. Three out on the leg side boundary, as you say, a, a fine leg, a square behind and a square in front. This Finch is in and this is back for length and played very cleverly by Lyndon James as he just dabs it to that vacant third man area and that will be another four runs onto the score. So an expensive start to the over again for Finch. Was that Coach Ballinger? Was that a poor ball then? He put three out on the leg side. Was he trying to double bluff him or was it just a rank poor ball? Because he'd got, it got it a leg side field and then bowled well outside the off stump. Yeah, you can't really bowl it there no. with that field, can you? Length was probably okay for the field he has, but he's misexecuted online for that field as he looks to rectify as he's in and he does and it's straighter, but just turned easily into the leg side by Lyndon James. You fear that with these two batters set in. It's a bit easy for them, maybe, with three men out just to rotate the strike. But maybe Finch will prove me wrong, as the bowlers so often do when I make a claim like that and they take a wicket next ball. But brings Calvin Harrison on to strike. He's 33, not out. Both the current batsmen in now have faced 120 deliveries, but James on double Calvin Harrison's score. As Finch in and again straight and attempted to be turned into the leg side for a single, but midwicket onto it quickly. Short legs disappeared. We've got three men out, three quarters of the way out back to the uh, to the boundary on the leg side. Well, that's going to be a change again as Rob Jones is moving back in from deep backward square. Yeah, we have little moments with Adam Finch. There's plenty of potential. There are little moments where he just loses his length. And uh, you have these little spells where they can be a little bit chaotic. Usually in the in the white ball stuff, stuff when under pressure. As he bowls again, that's short and it's pulled and it's pulled quite straight and it will race away for four towards the mid-wicket boundary. Nobody anywhere near that and a great shot from Calvin Harrison. Yeah, lovely shot, wasn't it? Just sat up there and he waited for it. Pulled it away with authority. Two very promising young cricketers. Good all-round cricketers, aren't they? Play all formats. Do Absolutely. a bit of everything. And uh, it's Lyndon James, who's a Stuart Broad's old number as well. Yep, and there was okay. a rather nice ceremony I saw online to that effect where he kind of handed it over. Absolutely. Legend of Nottinghamshire. Absolutely. As Finch and again and again short and ends up being evaded <laughs> by Calvin Harrison. I think he thought to play it for a minute, but... Maybe just something off the pitch there. Yeah, two two very good all-rounders here, like Calvin Harrison. Great batter, great bowler, very, very good fielder as well. Mark Muggers, Seth, has been in touch, says, do you think Knotts will declare at lunch? No. <laughs> I can't expand on that, Mark. I, I, I don't. <laughs> if they're still batting at lunch, I think they'll go on afterwards. I think they want to get as many as they can in the first innings. No reason to declare at lunch. Nine off the over so far, and there's Finchton again, and that's pushed through the offside, and it will be another boundary for Calvin Harrison. It's been an expensive couple of overs here for Worcester, and that brings up the 350 and that new batting point 
for Nottinghamshire. Really brilliant partnership here between the pair. Really, really good from uh, these two youngsters. They've had 114 now and they've got that uh, third batting point. And now, it, in a sense, that takes a little bit of the, the pressure off them. They've no, uh, there's no chance, of course, of getting 48 in two overs to get the extra one. So frustrate Worcestershire. Keep Worcestershire out there. Keep batting. Get as many as you can. Go for individual uh, milestones, push that partnership up there and if you do both of those of course you're helping the team effort as well Well, we're going to see Jason Holder 15 overs yesterday economy rate of just 1.87 I'm surprised that we didn't see him before we saw Adam Finch, but I think that may well be the end of the Adam Finch experiment <laughs> at the risk of sounding like a prog rock band um, feel bad it, for his figures it wasn't it wasn't a good showing first couple of overs, was it? It's a lovely shot though to finish out that over. A punch on the back foot. Well, like, so, like I said, the the bluff or double bluff certainly didn't work. Put all your fielders on the leg side and bowl one wide of the offside, which was, you know, just really the, the easiest to deliver is just to run away down to third man for four. So don't think he helped himself there, Adam. I hope he gets another over, because he's he's a better bowler than we saw in that one. Jason Holder then from the Stuart Broadend on his way in bowling to one slip Lyndon James awaits and that's just pushed into the offside he might have been a little bit hurried though he's just checking the toe of his bat that's no run there straight to the man at cover and we look two two out on the leg side one just backward of square one at mid wicket and you've got a, a wideish mid wicket you've got a regulation well a, a long on actually uh, not a long on sorry a, a mid on that's gone a little bit deep there as the holders in again that's full of edged and it's flashed past the man at backward point the chase is on genuine edge there a little bit wide that delivery it was a full stretch dive and uh, just evades the fingertips Managed to run three though, but a genuine edge off the uh, bowling of Jason Holder there. Yeah, just a little flashy that drive, wasn't it? From was it? It was Lyndon James, wasn't it? Because they ran three. Little bit flashy, but another three runs on to score as Nottinghamshire continue to push this first innings total up, Dave. Yeah, I omitted to mention in the last over that uh, Calvin Harrison's now got a uh, a first class best. Um, previous highest score, 39. He's now moved on to 41. This is just his 12th first last game. Holder then, on his way back in. It's full of this time, driven straight to that man at uh, mid on. He has to move quickly to pick it up. There's no run taken. Flinton James is to record his uh, highest first class best. Uh, Worcestershire going to be out there for a long time because he. He's got 164 not out um, season before last, so uh, that's, a, that's a big one, isn't it? That's a big mark to try and overhaul. West Indian all-rounder at the top of his mark, and he's on his way back in again. And, uh, on a link there, just pushed into the offside. That man at colour, no run taken. It's been a wicket at Edgbaston, Alex Davis is out for 256 been uh, bowled by um Matt Park uh, Callum Parkinson I beg your pardon Callum Parkinson and uh, it's 562 for two Will Rhodes has got 100 as well so uh, Yates 191 Davis 256 Will Rhodes 100 not out that's a very special scorecard Cheers. in comes Holder again and it's a little bit straight this time whipped away down to the man at Backward square, it's Joe Leach who'll do the fielding, they'll take a single. I mean, that's a good bowling attack as well. I mean, you think about Potts and Bolan and Cass and Rain, that's a, a, a Parkinson as well. That's a decent Durham attack. But yeah. you think in the middle of April, they would be an absolute handful on any surface, mm. but apparently not. They're a squillion for one. Yeah. And uh, I'm not sure that's much of a spectator today, is it? I don't. It's 562 for two, actually, the, uh, the, the score. Oh, sorry. I've, I've, I've exaggerated. Yeah. I'm sorry. Could go either way, that one. As Holder is in again. Driven. It's full this time. And it's beaten Dolavera at mid-off. That's going to go away for four. Lovely drive. Looks in the... Uh, in absolutely prime form here, doesn't it? Lyndon James right now. That's probably the... Uh, 
the mockers on him but moved into the 70s with that that's a wonderful drive off Jason Holder who uh, kept things very dry and quiet yesterday didn't give many boundaries away at all the yeah, edge a bit too full there wasn't it half volley and uh, got what it deserved really a lovely looking shot though and uh, the Adam Finch experiment is mm, over because it's yeah. going to be Josh Baker left arm bowler Grace mm. left arm was <laughs> strange breed yeah I'm also a left arm a left arm wrist spinner that was my gig so uh, left arm was the world unite and take over mm, absolutely we playing for an hour we're uh, into the midday news on BBC Radio Nottingham we've had just 13 overs this morning which seems uh, a little below par considering we haven't had relatively speaking that many runs there is an update then for local radio yeah magnificent partnership still in progress for the seventh wicket between two of Nottinghamshire's younger guns Lyndon James on 73 Calvin Harrison 42 they've added 122 this morning and secured that all important third batting point Nottinghamshire 360 for six as Josh Baker comes round the wicket, bowls his first delivery of the morning. Calvin Harrison drops it on the leg side. Yesterday, Baker, 24 overs, six maidens, one for 81. He got Joe Clark, one that uh, did turn a little bit away from Joe Clark, who went to cut it and just feathered it through to the keeper standing up. Um, somewhat reminiscent of that delivery, but this time Calvin Harrison cuts it away for his 43rd run. It's... Uh, a dry day, that's about the best we can say for it. It's chilly, a lot of top coats on out there. But um, we've had unbroken cricket and thankfully the forecast is for dry conditions today and tomorrow. Monday looks a, a touch more uh, uh, dangerous in terms of getting some interruptions with the wet weather. 361 for six. A real shame if this game is bubbling up into a decent finish one way or another and we do lose some play, but that's all in the future as Lyndon James again blocks this one, stays on 73. One slip, Jason Holder. Short mid wicket, short extra cover, point. More conventional extra cover, saving one as this is driven into the offside. Nice bit of fielding. I think that's Adam O's who makes the stop. Joe Leach is out where he was for much of yesterday on the boundary in front of that shorter side, the Fox Road. Alan Richardson's out there so he can have a chat to him, the uh, Worcestershire head coach, and a single taken by James, just dropping it on the leg side. And that's Finch doing the fielding. 362 for six at the end of the 110th over. So for Worcestershire, it's just two bowling bonus points um, as a bowling unit. Grace, I think the, the sides always feel they've missed out a little bit if they don't get the full three. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, you want to maximise those bowling points, don't you? But, I mean, we've spoke about it a lot, is the Cookerbrook experiment. I think the batters will be enjoying it. There's been some big scores around. Not too sure about the seamers, but I'm very excited, and I think you will be too, Brace, to see Mr Fletcher back into the side. Going to be bowling later on. Might be fun if he's out on the field when the noises are wafting in from behind us and uh, Forrest to play and you tend to get him very animated Holder then, back in and uh, it's full-ish not quite timed, it's uh, scuffed off the bottom of the bat and it's made its way to mid-off, there's no run taken As, uh, Lyndon James just practices the shot that he should have played Have you been here Grace when Forrest have, have been playing? I have, yeah, yeah there's, uh, Bit of theatre isn't it? Yeah, yeah. A little bit of theatre from Luke Fletcher. You get all the music to start with blaring across the road and the tannoy announcements and then uh, the oohs and ahs and, and the roars. Quite excited for my Forest debut <laughs> next month. In comes Holder then. I oh, know that's just gone past the outside of Lyndon James's bat. First real false shot that he's played, I think. Might be signed you on. Are you playing? <laughs> Short term loan. <laughs> Uh, no, even though I did used to play, you know, left wing back in the day. Going to go watch, I think, the Chelsea game. Oh. Mm. Has the, uh, the the points deductions and all that sort of thing fortified the club? Is there sort of a sense of a 
and in Battlement, has that given them a bit more heart, do you think? Or has it just royally annoyed them? I, I would imagine the latter. In comes Holder again then. And uh, it's just played straight back down. And he fields off his own bowling. There is no run. The score remains 362 for six. James and Harrison doing a fine job for their side here. Don't you topple out of that window. Where were, where were you going then? What were you looking at? I was looking at Alan Richardson. Yeah, is that Alan the Worcester head coach? He was, yeah. he was my yeah. old bowling coach when I was about 13. I haven't seen him in a few years. so. It's a family reunion here because he's uh, the brother-in-law of Paul Franks, the Nottinghamshire coach. Hmm. Holder on his way back in then. And uh, it's a little bit full of this time, just driven down the ground. Lovely shot. That's going to go all the way. Sprawling dive isn't enough to stop it. Finding the fence. And uh, even holders starting to become expensive. Did you and have Nottingham your... sure on a roll? Sorry, Jim. Did you have your uh, your your very distinctive run up then when Alan Richardson was coaching you? I've always had a distinctive runner. <laughs> he was a fantastic coach when I was back at Warwickshire when I was a bit younger when he was the the head bowling coach there. He was he was great. Good I used man. to wear a big I used to wear a big thick sweatband on my hair. You I, did? Yeah, because I never used to be able to tie it up, and he used to come in and wear one as well sometimes. <laughs> That's what I remember. He's a great man. Hints of Bob Willis. As in comes Holder, and uh, that's hit the bat hard, and just dropped him to the onside, picked up by mid-on. Looked like uh, it might have gotten a little bit bigger on him than he anticipated from that length, Lyndon James. Hand off the bat handle pretty quickly. But, uh, Speaking of coaches, of course, Peter Moores, the Nottinghamshire head coach, played uh, a good percentage of his career at New Road for Worcestershire before moving down to Sussex. In comes Holder then to finish his 17th over. And it's fizzed past the off stump. Just Lyndon James just shoulders arms, lets that go through to the keeper. 366 for six it is then. And uh, we're well past the hour mark, and uh, these two look set for the duration, don't they? Let's be honest, they've uh, handled the conditions and handled two very experienced opening bowlers. First up incredibly well, these two. Fist bumps all over the place, as well they might be. Uh, they're doing a great job for their side. They are indeed. No real dramas this morning. Maybe there was a Joe Leach return that caused them to just accelerate to make sure there wasn't an unnecessary run out as Baker tosses this one up clipped onto the leg side by Harrison there's no run he needs seven for his first 50 at this level I mentioned yesterday he has had a hundred on this ground when he came and played for Oxford MCCU a couple of years ago against Knotts this one uh, just turns nicely. Just a little bit of drift and turn into the gloves of Roderick, who's kept very nicely in this game. Good keeper, Gareth Roderick, but he'll have another roll as well when it's Worcestershire's turn to bat. Sent out there at the top of the order. This one is uh, mistimed by Harrison. Spinner to spinner. Won't want to get out to Josh Baker. His dad got in touch with the commentary team yesterday. If you're uh, watching again today, your boy's going well. Just landing it on a sixpence as he does there. And once again, blocked by Calvin Harrison. 366 for six. A run for every day of a leap year. And the wicket he comes again. And uh, this one's cut into the offside. There's a single. 367. That's such a niche reference. <laughs> <laughs> this is a leap year, isn't it? Yeah, I don't even know, is it? I think it, I think it is. I think we had a, uh, a February the 29th. Pity, ain't you pity anybody that born on that day, don't you? They have a birthday every four years. As, uh, this one's flailed away into the offside. 368 for six. Have you had a Grand National tip today or a bet? I will do, yeah. I'm, you I'm, will do? Yeah, I'm quite a big, um, quite a big horse racing fan. Uh, so... Yeah, my dad sent me a couple of tips across. I've got I've got a good friend who's a tipster as well, uh, but he went so terribly at Cheltenham that I don't think I'll be taking any of his <laughs> tips for a while. Um, but yeah, no, we'll have it on. Will you have a bet on? I've got uh, 
I've got a five pence piece on uh, on one of them. Limerick lace, I think it is. I'm going I on was, him. Uh, I was told. Three sixty-eight for six. Tell that's the one to be on. So, um, so, <laughs> so don't don't take uh, the slightest notion of anything I say. Haven't a clue. They're just brown with a leg in each corner, aren't they? Haven't a clue, really. But you always have a go on the national. Three sixty-eight for six. It's going to well, be Jason Holder. It's going to be Jim Dale to enjoy it. It sure is. Brown with a leg in each corner. I will take with me from the end of today as a, a description of a horse. I love everything <laughs> about that. As uh, Jason Holder tries to stop this game being a one-horse race, because Nottingshire are really very much in charge here. 368 for six on his way in. And uh, it's pushed into the offside by Lyndon James. Out the middle of the bat, as has been the way for the most part today. And uh, still plenty of chatter out in the field, trying to keep energy up here. And Gareth Roderick having a good old natter. Keepers tend to, don't they? They're a quirky bunch. Good keeper, actually, Gareth Roderick, I will say that. Came to the club, had a very difficult first year, COVID year, but he's uh, he's really blossomed in a Worcestershire shirt. And comes Holder, and it's a slower ball bouncer there. It's just uh, sat up, and I think it's taken Lyndon James by surprise. He's dropped that back onto the pitch, and a rather inelegant skip precedes the uh, fielding. A little, bit of, a little bit of news from a, a former Worcestershire player. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't you just know it? Ed Barnard has sat there with his pads on watching Rob Yates rack up 191. Alex Davis, you know what's coming, don't you? Yeah. Alex Davis rack up 256. <laughs> Will Rhodes 104 not out. Ed Barnard in and out. Bolt Parkinson for one. Oh, it's going to be a single figure score. Barney, heartbreaking. In comes Holder. And it's uh, completely missed time there. It's full. Not where he intended it, but it squirts away onto the leg side. Fielding by Jolich. Jolich has seen a lot of the ball in the field. Yeah, that's heartbreaking, isn't it? It's uh, Obviously, I've always wanted to be absolutely dreadful against Worcestershire, but other than that, uh, he's a super cricketer, Ed Barnard. Lovely fella as yeah, well. Yeah, got 160 not out here in this game last year. Um, sorry, year before 2022, of course, uh, Worcestershire came up, didn't they? Uh, last year, yeah, Warwickshire 573 for three now in that one. Essex have just declared something similar 530 for seven centuries for Elgar and Critchley in that one for Essex who won here so well last weekend in comes Holder bumper and uh, evasive action taken it was uh, wasn't difficult to get out of the way of that one it wasn't a brilliant it's a bit too short it wasn't really straight enough and uh, Harrison just weaves out of the way of that it has a little survey to see what's on. There are still two men out in the deep on the leg side. Nothing's changed in that regard. Elsewhere in Division 1 half centuries for the uh, former England duo at the top of the Surrey order. 121 without loss. Burns and Sibley both past the 50. Holder in again. And uh, on a length there. It's just pushed down to mid on. And the other Division 1 score. Hampshire 356 for 8 against Lancashire. Division 2 quickly. Derbyshire 83 for 2 replying to Glamorgan's 237. Mm -hmm. Gloucestershire five, uh, 59 for 3 replying to Yorkshire's 326. Sussex 45 for 1 replying to Leicestershire's 338. And Northampton still batting there. 362 for 4. Emilio Gay 202 not out. Right then in comes Holder again. Uh, short of this time, and it is taken on, just helped round the corner there, and that's just going to find its way to the fine leg boundary. A casual stroll there from Joe Leach, he knew he was never going to get anywhere near that. That's just down the leg side there, just helped it on its way, it's a good cricket shot. He's under 48 now, Kelvin Harrison, partnership of 135, this is uh, now the largest partnership just quickly doing the uh, doing the math, as they say, doing the Rachel Riley's. 133, yes, later and Clark put on. So this is the largest partnership of the innings. Lyndon James is on 80, Grace. He is indeed, and hopefully we'll see Calvin Harrison get his first half century. For Nottinghamshire anyway, as Baker's in, it's full and defended straight back to the bowler by Lyndon James. Dad with us today? He will be. He will be. Hello, Dad. Always is. Came to watch us on Thursday as well. He loves it. He absolutely loves it. He'll be watching at Aintree as well as 
Similar to the last full delivery, James forward. This time pushed into the leg side. No run taken. Yeah, it's a great day for the for the telesport fanatic, I guess. Um, with all the cricket and all the football and the Grand National and the Masters. This time but cut off the back foot by Lyndon James. A great dive and stop. Just gets a hand on it. Backward point. Is that Dolivera there? I'm not too sure. But a fantastic mm. stop. It's usually populated right. by Jake Lee. Yeah, I was going to say, I think it's a little bit. It is. Definitely yep. saved three yep. runs there. Brings Calvin Harrison on to strike. Captain's at mid-off. Good delivery again. Harrison forward in defence. Yeah, a lot, lot, a lot of spin out there for him, but it's a uh, good length, good line as well. Keeping in check after a couple of bumpy moments yesterday. Baker in again and very similar to the last delivery. Comes from a nice height, doesn't it, Josh Baker? Pretty tall mm. lad. Must be what? Six six four? Yeah, he's a big chap. Useful with the bat, but uh, that will come as well. Good feel. A really good slipper actually. Can't get in the slip cordon at the moment. It's Baker's in again and this one fuller and pushed out to the man at long on. Singles taken and brings Calvin Harrison on to 49. Not out. Yeah, Nathan Smith doing the fielding both um, long off and long on got lifted for a couple of really sumptuous sixes, didn't he? By Joe Clark yesterday. But a solid start from the young spinner. And a holder is going to continue from the Stuart Broad end. And these two rattling along now. 375 for six is the score. And uh, Holder remains wicketless. 45 runs against his 18 overs. Very neat and tidy yesterday. Flurry of maidens. Hasn't been quite so effective today. But then no one in this Worcestershire bowling attack has, to be honest, have they? No, these two have batted really well. They've been so smart. Batted within themselves early. Got themselves back in at the start of the second day. But really impressive to see and great signs for Nottinghamshire who have sometimes struggled with batting collapses in that middle order but Lyndon James and Calvin Harrison standing strong well after uh, after a rather difficult uh, final day being skittled out for 80 they've, they've banished any nerves about a, a poor batting performance last time round against Essex this has been very impressive as Holder comes in again and this is just on his toes Harrison just pushes that into the offside picks up his single and there's his 50 and it's a very, very good 50 as well. A little bit of everything. But the control really is what's impressed me, Grace. Is uh, Almost everything has come out in the middle of the bat. Absolutely. Well batted, Calvin Harrison. 50 not out. Seven fours. Rotated the strike really nicely. Let Lyndon James take the lead as he's kind of come into his own, I think, in the last, last 20 minutes or so, would you say, and started to push on a bit. But fantastic and a vital partnership here for Knott's. Well, that's it. He came came to the wicket when it's uh, two hundred. The score was two hundred and thirty-eight for six, and you feel like another couple of wickets with experienced bowling attack as well that Nottinghamshire could actually find themselves in a little bit of bother. But uh, very watchful, along with Lyndon James, just settled things down, and uh, they've dug in and, and put on a fabulous partnership. Yeah, very and, uh, impressive to see. Very good. Last of the genuine all-rounders, say Calvin Harrison. So he came in under a bit of pressure, but. He's certainly risen to that as looks like they're having another look at the ball here, umpire and the Worcestershire men. But once again, little done. An hour and twenty into proceedings, they're still they're still trying to uh, negotiate the ball's release. But we will continue, and uh, so will Jason Holder. Yeah, the last wicket went down in the seventieth over, so uh, thirty-four and a bit overs since Worcestershire last took a wicket. Certainly none yet with this second near ball, which is in its 35th over. Well, Lyndon James is back on strike. We've got the um, man in on the drive, both offside and onside. Man onside, very, very straight. He's in close. Almost almost next to the uh, batter at the non-striker's end. Got a man on the drive on the offside. In it cover. And we just had a, a fleeting visit from Frank Watson. Which is nice to see. He's over at uh, the other Trent Bridge this afternoon for the football. And uh, Holden is on his way back in. Lyndon James to face. 
and it's just flashed away through the offside that's going to be four more bit too full and driven away beat the man out there in the deep four more to the total and Harrison is uh, sorry James is working his way through the 80s here yeah really nice shot he's, mm. he's looked good on the front foot through the offside Lyndon James he's, he's punished any length he's gone straight when it's a little bit straight and he's gone nicely through that cover region he's looked very good and as we say before great signs for the knots dressing room yeah it's a city ground actually it's oh, city ground <laughs> but, sorry um, the, other, the other Trent Bridge I think is uh, quite it's quite nice I've not heard it referred to as that but <laughs> it's like Old Trafford isn't it oh, do you mean football or cricket in comes Holder then and that's just pushed into the leg side no run taken you're absolutely right either in a former life, a former partner of mine was a big Nottingham Forest fan. I've done Nottingham Forest games. I'm, you know, I'm mortified by that. And if she was listening, she would have offered up a volley of expletives for my ignorance. But then, having said that, she took me to Millwall away once, and I've never really gotten over that. No one needs to go to that, do they, in their lifetime? Do you need to Millwall take... away for a team you don't even support? That's uh, that's commitment, isn't it? In comes Holder again, and again it's. Uh, straight and it's just tucked into the leg side and there's no run taken I need to tick them off I need to do these things I'll go to all the grounds I wonder where a wicket's it's too headingless to isn't it it's too headingless isn't it the rugby ground yeah. heading with that's there you go. Right. they're on the same I think they're well they are aren't they they're on the same no where, where am I on about Leeds Rhinos are on the yeah. same ground, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. In comes Holder again, then. And it's a uh, good pace. But left alone, wide of off stump. Have you Fades played into Roderick's gloves, no run. Have you played there? At Headingley. Mm. Yeah, it's my home ground for the 100, isn't oh, it? Of course it is, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Headingley. Huge fan. We well, say it's your home ground. I was used to, for a year, saying Lords is my home ground for the 100. It was, yeah. Yeah, I've been, been north, been south. Are you, are you normally in the Midlands. Are you back with the north and, northern super guns this year? <laughs> <laughs> I am indeed, yeah. <laughs> back, oh back, up, back up north. The northern superpowers. Yeah, which is where I wanted to be. I had a great time there last year, so excited to go back up there, middle of July. It will be Josh Baker mm. to continue from the Redcliffe Road end. So Calvin Harrison awaits and... He's hit his lengths nicely here. Josh Baker again. Calvin Harrison brought forward a little bit of turn. Where's your favourite ground, Dave, other than Trent Bridge? It's Baker's in again, and this time turned in the leg side mid wicket on it quickly to prevent a single. It's not really answering the question in terms of, of ground, but my favourite away trip is always Hove. It's just. Everything about it, the seasides, the seagulls, the fish and chips on the seafront. This, this beats the outside edge of Calvin Harrison squared up going back. I know a lot of people down there, obviously Adrian does the commentary, but I know a lot of people in the press box down there, I know a lot of people down there. It's, it's a nice trip for me, we don't do it as often as I'd like. In comes Baker and again Fuller and pushed out for a single played nicely by Calvin Harrison. The, the history and everything about Lords always makes that a special occasion, obviously, when you go there. In fact, you know, I, I try to get the most out of all the all the away trips where we go, but some are more delightful than others, but Hove, Hove would be number one. Top ball, again, good length from Josh Baker. Played there? No, it's one mm, of the ones I haven't, actually. You might want to avoid that one. There's only two or three, what is it, a bit of a graveyard? Well, it's, it, it's uphill from one end and downhill from the other. Baker's in and once again just hitting that spot. It's a good over from Josh Baker, just one run from it, 381 for six. And even experienced bowlers, you know, people who've taken 500 wickets have told me that they just can't get it right there. You're obviously accelerating too quickly going downhill and you just can't get your delivery stride right going uphill. It's, it's a difficult ground mm. from what I understand um, for, you know, for visiting bowlers. You know, the Sussex attack do have a um, a huge advantage there. Speaking of attacks, we've got a change in the attack here. Captain is uh, having a bit of a switch round, and we're going to get 
Uh, Brett D'Oliveira coming on. Well, just three overs yesterday, none for 11. Had an over before lunch and two before tea. No, it was two before the, the taking of the second near ball, just after tea, but uh, just the three overs. But clearly Brett is going to uh, see if he can winkle out a wicket in an all-spin attack in the, what, half an hour or so we've got before lunch. Yep, very effective white ball bowler. Dolivera, excellent in the blast last year with the ball. See what he can do here. And he starts with a short one. It just sat up. Harrison was... Uh, just dabbed the bat at that one. Sent it out to the man. Deep cover point. Suzanne's Very conservative, really. With what looked like a short, wide yeah. one that he could have climbed into. Mm, Suzanne's been in touch. Sorry. Fantastic morning. Keep it going, lads. Commentators cursing. Coming, she says. Thank you. Fantastic morning, depending on your perspective, yep, of course. Yep. Um, in comes Dolivera again. And uh, this one's a bit fuller, pushes that through. And then James doesn't uh, give it the time of day, just uh, lets that through to the keeper. Straight back into his delivery stride again. Dolivera looking to get through this over quickly. And uh, just feeling for that a little bit, Lyndon James. Good length from Dolivera. And uh, it's out into the man on the drive, it looks like. Rob Jones. Dolivera in again. A little bit straighter this time and it's just turned into the leg side. Again to the man. On the one, so there is no run. One slip in place, it's Jason Holder. Long on, long off. Man out on the offside, two out on the boundary on the leg side. It's a good drive there, but it's uh, fielded beautifully. To drive that through extra cover, but uh, sharp dive to his right hand side. So there's no run, and we're in again. It's short and wide this time, and it's just carved away to that man in the deep on the offside. So a single to finish the over, and uh, a neat and tidy start from Dolivera. If uh, if the opposite of exciting, I've got the answer to the question that we needed answering. Daniel says, I've just been across and asked the lads with the ears what they are. The answer is, they are all dog's ears because the stag, I think he's uh, he's got more of an outfit on, because the stag back home is obsessed with his own little sausage dog. So they've all put dog's ears on um, as a nod towards that. So thank you, Daniel. Thank you very much. We needed to know that. They sat um, square of the wicket in the, uh, Bridgeford, in the uh, Smith Cooper stand. As a single is taken here by Lyndon James, moves on to 87. Charlie, what an excellent partnership this is. Uh, key engine room runs from these two youngsters. Essential going forward, saying no more at the moment. Thank you, Charlie. Dog's ears and is obsessed with his little sausage dog. Bless him. <laughs> as as they had a fair amount of stick over that as Baker Bowles and Calvin Harrison on 52. Rocks forward and defends. Partnership of 146 now for the seventh wicket Liam Patterson White, Luke Fletcher, Dylan Parkinson to come, this is it, up in the air cries of catch and it's been held and Baker gets a second wicket and Calvin Harrison has uh, has gone with uh, a shot that he'll wish obviously he could take back straight away he's uh, been taken by Jake Libby running back from a conventional mid on position and took it nicely, well judged catch it's 384 for 7 and that partnership ends after they put on 146 together Harrison faced 148 balls, it's 7 fours was at the crease for just over 3 hours, 384 for 7 Blast. Yeah, very very tidy catch, that running back having to go over his right shoulder they're really difficult those and he made it look easy, fantastic catch and brings the end to Calvin Harrison Career best 52 for Harrison Going to get, uh, well, it's a great ovation from uh, those inside Trent Bridge. Worcestershire just getting together in a little bit of a huddle now. I'm sure Brett Delivere has uh, trotted out. Come on, lads, let's get another one. One brings two and all that as Liam Patterson-White for the first time in uh, in a while. It was last July, last time we saw him in the county championship side. Makes his way out to the, in fact, last May, so it's, uh, it's getting on for a year. Makes his way out to the middle. He'll have a major role to play with the ball, of course. Slow left arm spinner, but very capable batter as well. 
as uh, the first last 100 to his name. And he comes in with 384 runs on the board. Well, it's a second wicket for Josh Baker. Showed some good control there, didn't he? He came on to replace Adam Finch that couldn't find the right line or the right length. No two balls were the same. And he, he's brought his captain a little bit of control. And he's bought a four shot, but uh, really, really useful innings, wasn't it? Harrison, really impressive cricketer. Yeah, absolutely. And just on that, you say about Josh Baker, I totally agree. Um, as you say, I said before, he just kept it in that same area. And whilst it was a bit of a false shot by Calvin Harrison, it was definitely bought from the pressure by Josh Baker. So really impressive stuff for him. He's taken two big wickets, obviously. Joe Clark being a massive one yesterday, so he'll be keen to try and get into the lower order of knots here and take a couple more. So we've got the lefty out there, three balls left in this over as a helicopter goes over the Batman board. Heading out uh, towards the <laughs> west. I've just got that. <laughs> yes, it's uh, had that nickname since it popped up with the, uh, the two big ears on top resembling the Batman silhouette as uh, Patterson White defends slow left armour to slow left armour and Patterson White should be able to uh, to read what's coming down whether he's able to convert it into runs or not remains to be seen Baker in again and uh, this has popped up on the leg side had there been somebody in a little closer there well who knows whether he'd have played the same shot or not but uh, certainly popped up off bat and pad onto the leg side 384 for 7. Got, well, it's half past 12, so we've got half an hour to go until lunch. Just wonder if we might see Worcestershire having to face a, an over or two here. Depends uh, on how this partnership goes. It's defended onto the offside. Worcestershire still got a bit of work to do. Successful over for Baker. 29 overs, 2 for 89. They still need three wickets. They've got to break this partnership and then have a go at Luke Fletcher and Dylan Pennington so in all probability Knotts should be able to bat until the, uh, the end of this morning session I guess from uh, the perspective of those of you that want to have your lunch at one o'clock the worry is that Worcestershire only get two more wickets because if they're nine down at one we'll play on until the well, normally until the last wicket falls so it's going to be Dolivera then to continue from the Stuart Broadend Spinners in tandem. And that's just not timed, but uh, out into the offside. Finch does the fielding. And uh, a little bit of gardening now from Patterson White. That's uh, terrific stuff from. John Curtis, who's been in touch, should have been all over that, John, but wasn't. But John, a keen statistician, has pointed out that uh, that did break the Nottinghamshire seventh wicket record against Worcestershire, set by Cyril Paul and Bruce Doolan in 1939. Uh, of 139, I beg your pardon. Oh! Was that a chance? Cries go up to false shot anyway. And. Uh, they will have missed everything, hit Roderick on the thigh. Slightly tentative start, this from Patterson White. Probably wasn't expecting to see spin at both ends as he came in. And it's uh, four this time, driven back to the bowler. Yeah, that partnership, 1956 at New Road, 139 set by Cyril Paul and Bruce Dooland. It's been broken. In comes Dolivera again, round the wicket. It's full again, again push back and he'll do the fielding off his own bowling. Thanks to uh, JC for that one. Dolivera just tosses himself a few catches. Top of his run, in again. And he's wrapped on the pad, big appeal. And he's gone. Dolivera has struck. Two wickets in two overs. And Patterson White has to depart. Yes, the captain coming on, making the breakthrough. Alex Wolf, the umpire. Took forever and a day before raising the finger. He had a good old long look at that. Obviously trying to weigh up if there are any possible reasons why he shouldn't give Liam out. But uh, then eventually 
couldn't find any. Only faced seven balls, Liam Patterson White. Never looked comfortable, did he? And he just got caught flat on his back yeah. pad, wasn't it? Yeah, I've just seen a replay of it, actually. It was, uh, it was right on the crease, and it did look from uh, the little view I just had that it was going on to certainly uh, attack the middle stump. So 385 for eight. So there still is the potential that Knott's could be bowled out before lunch. There's still also the potential that we could be still here for an extra half an hour or so, if not a nine down. But we've just had the uh, return to the knot side of Liam Patterson White. That didn't go so well. Now, I think they'll loop Fletcher. Well, indeed. Firm fans' favourite here. You can perhaps hear it by the cheers. As uh, Luke Fletcher, who missed the end of last season with uh, an ankle injury, picked it up against. Uh, well, it, it was just getting worse and worse through the season. But um, his last match here against Kent last summer, I think everybody's heart went out to him. He a couple of times tried to to bowl on, and uh, in the end, he just went over halfway through and over, and had to go off. Required uh, a little bit of surgery to sort it out. Didn't play last weekend, played for the uh, the twos against Loughborough University Monday and Tuesday. Came through that pretty well, got uh, three wickets in next to no time and has found himself back in the team. be interesting to see how he goes. He a good record against Worcestershire, but he's one of those players that... Uh, is the Kookaburra ball going to suit him and his style of bowling, do you think, Dave? Is that going to be a problem? Or are you expecting more of the same from him? I think he'll just... Drop the ball on the spot with the uh, the new ball. Clearly, the spinners are in the side to do the work through the through the middle overs. Dolivera then into Fletcher, and it's very watchful from the new batsman who just drops it into the offside and it'll complete the over. But it's a successful one for Worcestershire, and it's 385 for eight, and that double strike really important in trying to keep Nottingshire to something that uh, Worcestershire can actually work with. He felt the way it was going. 10 minutes or so ago that uh, the game was getting away from Worcestershire. It's uh, still an imposing total, of course. But now there's uh, there's somebody to bowl at. Lyndon James has been so impressive. He's on 88 still. And Baker will continue from the Radcliffe Road end. Two Lyndon James, then. Oh, sorry, two in quick succession, Grace. <laughs> Yeah, unfortunately so, and this one's cut away off the back foot nicely by James. Brings Fletcher on to strike. You know, you're the neutral observer, don't you? You're the, uh, you're the one between us. Guess I am. I'm always neutral, Dave. It's <laughs> a word often used to describe me. <laughs> I'm sure it isn't. <laughs> no, it's definitely not. Um, it's Luke Fletcher. Bought on strike for the first time against Josh Baker. One slip in play. Jason Holder as he's in, and that's a play and a miss. And it's they've gone up for an appeal and a big celebration. I mean, Fielder's got their heads in their hands, but Baker goes back to his mark. Well, I said it was a play and a miss, Fletch. Well, the keeper must know, mustn't he? The keeper must know. Standing up, takes yeah. it, claims the catch. Is there in again? And this time. Luke Fletcher brought forward. Could it have just brushed something into the gloves and been that so close to Gareth Roderick that he that he didn't know? Baker's in again, and this time Fletcher on the back foot pushes that to mid-off. No run taken. Either way, umpire Ben Debenham didn't give the decision. This one given some flight and Luke Fletcher forward. They think of a quick single from short third, but with only one ball left in the over. Got to feel a little bit for Lyndon James as well, haven't you? He's 89 not out. Luke Fletcher at one end, groping a little bit in the dark. Dylan Pennington to come. He'll want to make sure he gets his opportunity. So that's defended nicely. Final ball of the yeah. over by Luke Fletcher. Yeah, I was just about to say, Brace, do you think... Lyndon James will do anything different here with Luke Fletcher at the other end. You think he'll go after it a bit more? Well, you tell me. When you've been 89 not out with just a tail ender to come, Grace, how do you go about it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wish I could have an answer to that question. What's your top I score? I wish it was relatable. Whatever. Yeah. I don't know. I've got, I've got a couple tons. 
Have you? Yeah, don't sound so surprised. <laughs> I'm only surprised because you haven't mentioned it before. <laughs> <laughs> At what level is that for then? Uh, for Warwickshire, in the age group For stuff. Warwickshire. A hey, hundred at any level is impressive. It is. A hundred at any it level is, is impressive, Grace. Don't you stand for Thank it. Thank you. No. Dolavira back in to Lyndon James. He just tucks that into the leg side. And Rodders rips off a glove, and does the fielding. I back my girl here, Jim. Always. Always. I'm just surprised she's never told me about that before. What about my 50 red at Grace Road? Have you heard about that one? In comes Dolavira again on a length, and it's just driven to mid off. Fielded for no run. Dolivera has ball in hand again. And again, he's looking to rattle through these quickly. James on strike. And it's very watchfully just pushed back down the wicket for no run. You can't tell me enough times. 50 red opening the batting. T20 final. Dolivera in again. There's a little bit of flight on that. And it's just swatted away. Good fielding out there in the deep, though. What would have been a boundary is going to be kept to two. Just uh, give it a bit more air by Dolivera. And Lyndon James obliged him. Driven them through the offside, but good fielding there. I think that's Adam Finch again. It's good for the Worcestershire players to get round him because he, he only bowled a couple of overs this morning, went for a few. Dolivera in again. And uh, straighter this time. And watchful again from Lyndon James. Those two runs take him into the 90s, last ball of the over coming up. I wonder if he'll be just looking for a leg side drop and run. There's been no response from Dolivera, who's the captain himself, he's bowling. There's plenty of space for it if he wants, but he's just mm. the back foot there and just pushes it into the offside. No run taken, so Baker will have another pop at Fletcher. And it's 388 for 8. Lyndon James on 91. Three first class hundreds to his name. All I think I'm right in saying batting at five, so this will be uh, a little bit different and clearly something that Knotts were, were looking for, were looking for runs from uh, numbers seven and eight, really. Not a half century from. Calvin Harrison, there's Baker bowling to Luke Fletcher. Defends. Still looking for his first run this morning. Lots have lost. Calvin Harrison for 52. Liam Patterson White without scoring. Wickets for Baker and Dolly Vera. And there is Josh Baker again round the wicket. Floats it up. Fletcher drives to <coughs> Dolly Vera at mid off. Nice looking shot from Luke Fletcher. But no runs. Big man Fletcher taps the bat and again just rocks onto the front foot and defends. It's fielded by Finch, who's, uh, who's come in, saving one from the bowling of Baker. And now Fletcher pushes into the offside and again no run. And that's Adam Hose doing the fielding. 388 for eight. Really good from Baker and. Oliveira. This next one goes through to Gareth Roderick. That's 12 away from the 400. As Baker comes in again. This next one's uh, just played out onto the leg side. So a maiden speedily bowled in terms of it taking only about 90 seconds to get through that over from Josh Baker here on BBC Radio Nottingham, BBC Hereford and Worcester and via the, uh, the pictures on Trent Bridge Live. Hint of the occasional ball doing a lit gripping a little bit. You don't want to see it turning too much from a Worcestershire perspective. They've got a lot of batting to do in this game if they're to get anything out of it. Yes, put in a good shift, Josh Baker. 31 overs now, 2 for 90. Back over to Lyndon James. And Dolivera to continue then. And he comes and it's just uh, pushed into the offside. Sleeves rolled up. And uh, he's rattling through these overs. 
in again. And I'm looking for a more expansive drive. Flourish of the bat, but he's not timed it into an edge as well. And it's bobbled its way back to Dolavira, who's already back into his short, efficient, effective run-up. Dolavira again then. A little bit straighter this time, pushed into the leg side again. No run to be taken. Played out a maiden in the previous over. And this one is following suit. Not looking to be too expansive here, is he, Lyndon James? No, I thought he might go after it a bit more, but he seems... Being in the 90s will do things to you, though, won't it? <laughs> there's, there's plenty of spaces there if he wants a single, but it's, it's footwork that'll get them for him. It's well bowled again. Mm -hmm. Driven down the ground, and there is one of those singles too long off. So Dolivir will have a couple of deliveries at Fletcher. Lyndon James creeps a little bit closer to a milestone. I won't say it out loud. I don't think that will be well appreciated, <laughs> but he's now on 92. Fletcher yet to get off the mark. That's uh, Dolivira is in. He's very watchful. Plants his foot down the pitch. Solid forward defensive. From the very solid frame of Fletcher, who's going to face the last ball of the over. Just a bit more flight on that one. He's just pushed that into the offside. That completes it. One from the over. 3-8-9 for 8. And that run rate has been curtailed. But Lyndon James continues. 92 not out and he'll face up next. Warwickshire still batting at Edgbaston. They're 623 for 3. Will Rhodes 128 not out. Earlier Alex Davis 2-5-6 and yesterday Rob Yates 1-9-1. One, one. Um, Jim was mentioning some of those Durham bowlers. I can tell you that uh, Matty Potts is uh, non for 106. Bryden Cars is non for 119. Ben Rain non for 100. And um, Callum Parkinson 2 for 187. 2 for 187 is a good day. That's a worry, isn't it? Blimey. Yeah, some, some horror figures there for the Durham boys, but... Some good batting from Warwickshire as the first ball of Josh Baker's over is a full and Lyndon James happy to take the single out to the cover sweep. Yeah, I think he's a fantastic bowler, Matthew Potts. I think, in my opinion, unlucky not to have a bit more time in an England shirt, but those figures definitely not supporting that claim on what must be a very flat one at Edgebaston. I hope it's not that flat when I play there next week, Brace, <laughs> with a white ball. <laughs> As in comes Josh Bacon. This is full and Shot. swiped at by Luke Fletcher. And I didn't think that had gone anywhere, but I was wrong. <laughs> it's gone for a six. Quite the opposite. A great shot. Just stood and delivered Luke Fletcher off the mark with a maximum. Just strong arm that, didn't it? It was, you know, it wasn't a flowing, you know, flourish. But it just punched that down the ground. Rather dismissive, wasn't it? It was dismissive. The, Mr. Luke Fletcher. Not bad. Your first scoring shot of the season. I thought it had gone nowhere, to be <laughs> honest. And then you think it, you thought you almost thought, clocked it. Oh, it, it's gone for six. It was, yeah, a fast bowler's um, boundary, that. Yeah, strong boy, isn't he? But you're yeah, going back to that work. I mean, that pitch, at what point do you start docking points? Because it's not, that's not a cricket pitch, is it? Uh, same waste, for both it's sides. It's a waste of time. Same for both sides, but not a good day to be a bowler. And this one's attempted to be cut away by Luke Fletcher, but nearly chops onto his stumps as it lands just beneath his feet. Well, I would hope people say there's nothing wrong with the Edgbaston wicket. It's the blooming ball, because I've not enjoyed watching this Cockerborough ball at all. <laughs> Baker in again and flights it up and watchfully Fletcher forward into defence. Well, it's, it's it's an approach that you know that's for the England. If the whole aim in cricket is to serve the England side and that is it, then it sort of makes sense a decision. But I, I would argue that that's probably not the be-all and end-all of cricket, you know? Baker in again, again full, and Fletcher takes a big... Quick single, oh. it looks like he should be ran out He's with a gone. direct hit, and he is ran out. A slightly reckless bit of running from Luke Fletcher as he runs himself out. Well, that wasn't a fair fight, was it? It was Luke Fletcher versus Dolivera. Dolivera is quick along the ground. He picked the ball up, swooped in, and just rattled a stump out the ground. That is top quality fielding. And he's given it away, Luke Fletcher. And Lyndon James will not be enjoying that one little bit because he's on 93 not out and Nottinghamshire are nine down. Right, 2021 at New Road, Worcester, Brett D'Oliveira is batting, pushes the ball out into the offside. Luke Fletcher runs in, picks up, swoops, 
throws down the stumps. Behind closed doors, not a soul in New Road bar the press and obviously the coaching staffs. First time in ten years that Luke Fletcher has run anybody out with a direct hit. Goes off on a run, arms waving, with his <laughs> teammates behind him like little ducks following the mother. Runs all the way almost to the cathedral yeah. uh, in celebration. There's some great photos of it. Uh, eventually when he was caught up he was mobbed by his teammates. The moment of um, the season for Luke Fletcher um, revenge is sweet Brett D'Oliveira will be thinking right now because he was the one that had to walk off at New Road having been run out by Fletcher um, now he's got his own back and uh, and Worcestershire if they need an incentive to get the last wicket quickly they've got it with the big uh, photograph on the screen of their former teammate Dylan Pennington yes Dylan Pennington now he's no mug with a bat by any stretch at all I, I think he, he's uh offered plenty of decent 20-somethings in his um, his short but very effective career for Worcestershire. Good player. Really good player. And uh, So he's no mug with the bat at all. But it'll be interesting to see how Lyndon James approaches this. Seven shy of a century. Not even sure. 396 for nine. But the past uh, 20 minutes or so, Worcestershire have managed to drag themselves back into this game in the hope of making it a contest. So... Lyndon James is on strike, seven shy of that century. In comes Josh Baker, one ball for Lyndon James, got off strike and he attempts to, and that's an excellent dive and stop to the right of backward point. Well, that was probably a bit of field in of the day. and Just plucked it one handedly, ju just off the deck, really good fielding. I think it was Nathan Smith. Not much recognition for it, really. I, I paused to have a look as kind of just got on with the over, but. And you're right, Grace, because that would have been a single, and that would have meant that he'd had... We're now in a position where Dylan Pennington is going to have to face... Uh, Adam Finch is going to come back on. And, uh, you know, the, the the one bowler that you kind of thought that would be the replacement for Dylan Pennington, they're trying to... You know, the latest yeah. off the production line, it will be Finch at Pennington. So this will be an interesting contest. Yeah, is this just a pat on the back from the captain to Adam Finch? Put him on at a different end from... Where he bowled those two expensive overs this morning. Is it a a message in the uh, in the direction of Dylan Pennington? This is uh, th there's a little bit of intrigue about everything involved here. Well, the um, the departure of uh, Dylan Pennington to Nottinghamshire, there was there was an element of distaste, I think, mid-season as Adam Finch is on his way in to Pennington. And it's just pushed into the offside to, to uh, field it at point. There's two men on the drive on the leg side. And uh, two men at slip. One, like a wide first slip, maybe second is Jason Holder. And you've got Adam Hose, who's a fourth slip as well. But yes, he uh, decided that he was going to do a photo shoot with the Nottinghamshire flag a day before the Worcestershire T20 quarter final at Hampshire. And we don't mind players moving on, that's okay. But that was a little bit... Well, it was uh, poorly judged, to say the least. In comes Finch again. I know that's just left alone there. Good pace from the big man. But Pennington lets that through to the keeper. Not sure if it would have been Dylan Pennington's decision, decision to wrap the flag round him. Well, it was his decision to be in the photo. Mm. Um, it, no one looked good in that situation, to be honest. N neither club looked good and neither did Dylan Pennington. I think just before a club quarterfinal that you're playing for is not a good look. Uh, he's not a bad lad by any stretch of the imagination. Though. I'm not, uh, it was uh, poorly advised, I would describe that as. Um, but there we are. Here comes Finch. And it's a bit of, ba bit of pad. Not in control of that. And uh, immediately Adam Finch looks uh, the bowler that we know he is, rather than that slightly, slightly scruffy couple of overs we saw from him earlier on. These things shouldn't be announced until the end of the season, should they? Or... There should be an agreement, and it, it, it happens immediately. You know, initially, if it's got to yeah. become a loan, but you shouldn't be playing for. I don't, know, I don't think you should be playing for one team when everybody knows you're going to go off and play for somebody else. Finch then in again, and it's just played into the offside and uh, fielded for no run. It, I mean, it happens all the time. There's no problem moving county, and I, I don't mind it being announced to a point, but I think there's a difference between saying that you're going to leave at the end of the season, which happens plenty in cricket. I, I agree with you, Dave, but I, that, mm. that doesn't matter so much, but flashing the, the another club's colours. 
the club, I mean, Nottinghamshire could have just not released that photo till later, you know, as well. So I, I thought that was a pretty cl classless move. Um, but uh, that riled a few Worcestershire fans, and I think rightly so, you know. It's, uh, Finch in again. And that's gone to the straighter of the two men on the drive. But again, I think it was just a, a misjudged rather than an attempt to be in any way disrespectful or uh, contentious. Yeah, highly doubt it. He's settled in really nicely, Dylan Pennington, into this not side. I think he's exciting bowler and really nice lad as well. He's we see him around the gym quite a lot, very friendly. He bowled quickly last weekend, didn't he? He did, indeed. You've got yourselves a good one, that's for sure. Really good player. In comes Finch. It's full of this time and then a very confident on the front foot push mm. right back and it's the same actually that uh, Jack Haynes as well he got some fabulous players and uh, on their way up and uh, that's the thing when a club like Nottingham shares the facilities that you've got the stadium you've got and what's on offer that makes perfect sense there's no there's no ill will all six balls pitched up there from uh, Adam Finch. I don't think there's anything... That, I don't think there's a fast bowler's union anymore, is there? But no. um, if Adam had, uh, had given uh, Dylan one, he could uh, rest assured when it becomes time for roll reversal, he'd get one back. But uh, that was nice from Adam. Pitched them all up. 3.96 for nine. Is, is there a fast bowler's union in the women's game, Grace? Nah, don't think so. Short ball's not used as frequently in the women's no. game, in fairness, with obviously the the variation of pace and also the the white ball yeah. um, format. But uh, it's not quite the same getting a tail end of wicket as a, as a top four, is it? Have you sconned anybody? Rattled anybody in the helmet? <laughs> I think I bowled one short ball last season, all seasons. Josh Baker into Lyndon James, and this is driven expansively, but a good stop by the bowler as he gives his hand a rub think that one might have hurt hit pretty well by Lyndon James yes I don't want to worry you good folk looking forward to your dinner but um, in five minutes time the umpires are going to say play on it's Baker in again and this is swiped at by Lyndon James mm. I think we see the intent that he'll be going at Josh Baker the field spread yep. there's a there's a deep square a deep mid wicket two, two men out on the cover boundary there's, and there's seven on two the fence. straight also as Lyndon James looks to cut this one off a good length as it playing a miss through to the keeper. Seven on the fence, bowler keeper, um, an extra cover, and Jason Alder's doing his own thing. He's having a bit of a dance. <laughs> well, there's our answer, look. He's trying to hit the casing off the ball. As Baker's in, and this is pushed in to the offside for a single. By Lyndon James, he could be keen to face a bit of Finch again after those two overs uh, I think it was 24 runs from it most from his bat so Dylan Pennington would have two balls of the left arm spin of Josh Baker to face uh, overnight Lyndon James was 39 so he's added uh, 55 As Pennington defends watchfully yeah 55 this morning Baker in then. One ball for Pennington to see off and he does so nicely. Forward in defence. Lyndon James will be on strike then for what we assume will be Finch from the Stuart Broad end. I'd imagine you'd get another go yet. Yeah, very good. Confident, competent um, from Dylan Pennington. He can bat. He can bat. So um, we'll see if uh, Lyndon James is going to continue this kind of aggressive approach. Look to be aggressive the first part of the over. That's if he gets the chance, so Finch is uh, just walking his run up. Yes, you don't always get what you deserve in life or indeed in cricket, but um, I think there'd be, uh, there'd be very few people who've watched this that would, uh, would deny Lyndon James a three-figure score here. But he's got to go on and get these extra six runs. Finch then at the top of his mark. Plenty in the offside. Four all on the two. 
plenty of singles there if he wants them. He just flashes that slightly wide from Finch, and he's sent that to deep cover, and uh, they've decided not to take the single. Now we get the game within a game, don't we? You'd imagine it's going to be a case of Lyndon James. If he's got the chance to throw the bat, he will. If he can penetrate the field, all well and good. But if he can't, he's going to turn down singles for the first ball, and then on ball five, probably, all the fielders will come in to try and stop him getting a single. In comes Finch then. James waits. That's an effort ball there, and he's just edged onto his own pad there, I think. And uh, it's gone back to Adam Finch, no run taken. There's a lot of big grounds where when, when all the fielders are on the fence, you can sort of drop it and run too, but it doesn't really apply in this situation, does it? Well, the rope's got... in, and the fielders are just slightly in off the rope to stop them doing that. That's right, they're all in 10 metres, aren't they, mm. on the offside on that, on that bigger boundary. <laughs> So we shall see. Holder's having a right old time. He's having a little dance and a sing to himself. He uh, remains at slip where he has been all day. In comes Finch again. It's just edged. And it's a genuine edge down to Jake Libby. They're not going to take the run again. He's frustrated there, Lyndon James. And so uh, quite a ball there from Adam Finch. Plenty on that. And uh, we're halfway through. Mm. Finch is 19th over. So now are we in the take a single? Hmm... Well, um, Certainly see. after this ball, I think uh, I think Dolly Vera will bring the troops in. In comes Finch again then. Standard deliver from Lyndon James. And it's wide this time. He takes an almighty swing in it and nearly turns himself off his own feet. But it's uh, not made connection with the ball, so it's straight through for Roderick. A bit quick update for BBC Radio Nottingham. Yes, the one rule we don't like in cricket is that if nine wickets are down, we don't go to lunch. We play on until the last one falls, and that's where knots are. 3.97 for nine. Lyndon James is 94 not out. Been a good morning for knots. Calvin Harrison out for 52. 3.97 for nine. Not sure Dave will get his lunch soon enough anyway. There's ball by ball commentary on the BBC Sport website and app today. In well, there's going to be a little conference here. As uh, Dolivera. I think that's Nathan Smith he's just called is, across to have yeah. a word. Um, and he's uh, no doubt having his five bobs worth on what they should do now. Um, Josh Roberts says it's very enjoyable watching Holder in the field. I'm sure at one point yesterday he was shadow skipping between balls. It reminds <laughs> me of when Mark Wood used to ride his imaginary horse. That's right, Josh. Yeah, he's played a bit of golf uh, in the outfield. Holder had a few dances, sung himself a few songs. He's waiting at slip now, though. In comes Finch. And this little shimmy there up the pitch from uh, Lyndon James. He'll take a single this time. Just squirts into the offside. He'll take it. And uh, yes, yeah, really good, uh, really good pickup, Jason Holder. They they used the money that they could have spent in the T20 Blast, but they wanted to make a mm. make a statement here at the start of the season. Really good character as well, very likable chap. That um, and it just gives Worcestershire. I feel like for the first time in quite a while, actually, in the first division, there's a, there's an air of confidence about this group yeah. of players. And it uh, it seems sadly that he won't get the chance to play at New Road because you've got a couple of games at Kiddy um, yeah. because of the. The waterlogged county headquarters. We were hearing all about it yesterday from both Frank and from the club president, Phil Neal, who came up and said hello. Well, Finch has got one ball left of this over. It'll be Paddington on the strike. There's a short leg in now. There's an extra slip in. About fourth slips Adam Hose in there. It's a two-man slip call, and they're trying to cover as much ground as possible. Still plenty of men out, though. So in comes Finch to Dylan Pennington. And it's full. That's a nice-looking drive. There's a run there if he wants it. And Billy, it was a beautiful shot. Pennington was on his bike, and Lyndon James sent him straight back, quite rightly, because he wants the strike for the next over as we... Uh, we're four minutes past one here. So nine down. So we will await the lunch break, and I can already start to feel my stomach rumbling. And this is an intriguingly poised game now. 398 for nine. And you're absolutely right, David. Lyndon James has batted so beautifully. It would be... Uh, it would be deeply unfair for him to not reach that landmark he's been fabulous but uh, the 90s will do things to you and number 11 in with you against his old club there's lots happening go on Grace get him over the line <laughs> or get Worcestershire a wicket however it uh, however it pans out I think 
really nice to see Lyndon James. Sentry here, he's batted very nicely and he's got every opportunity with Josh Baker to continue from the Radcliffe Road end and this is driven nicely to long off but again James chooses not to take the single. <clears throat> It's another case that you'll have to get 112 to get 100, won't he? Leaving a lot of uh, lot of runs out there. May just be waiting for that fuller delivery from the spinner in order to maximise on, but he gets an outside edge and he thinks of running a quick single. He doesn't look too pleased with himself there as he runs one but can't get back for two, so Dylan Pennington back on strike against Josh Baker and Lyndon James will be having a word with him. Clearly thought there was a chance to scamper a quick two there, but never really looked on, did it? see what Dylan Pennington has to say for himself against the young spinner Josh will, Baker will Baker put a bit of air on this and see if he can tempt the big man I'd be half, half tempted to get that up above his eye line and see if he fancies a dart two slips in place well, all the field with exception to with exception to nobody has has come up so if he wants it Dylan Pennington there's only has to hit it 20 yards or so to be safe. <laughs> I think we're waiting for a helmet to be fetched. I wondered uh, what the delay was. What have we got? Four balls left in the over. When we say we'll go on indefinitely, they can go on uh, for a total of eight overs. Half an hour or so is cricket, so uh, lunch could take place around about half past one. If this pair is still there. I wonder if the declaration might come if Nottinghamshire do uh, want to call him in if he does get his 100. Of course, they will have passed 400 by that point as well. It's 399 for nine. Two men in close then on the offside for Dylan Pennington. And also two slips in behind. Pressure on then as Baker's in and this is looped up and Pennington forward confidently and plays it nicely. Defensive stroke, he's got two more balls, or was it three? Three more deliveries to face. It's Baker in and driven nicely by Pennington but can't get past the slightly deep extra cover fielder and no run is taken. They're confident proper cricket shots though aren't they? Absolutely. It's Bakes in again, and this one's in leg side, and it turned. But don't think Lyndon James will be taking the single now. One ball left for Pennington to survive before Lyndon James can have another go from the other end. No. Not 399 for nine. Baker in, and this one's full and defended into the leg side. Ripple of applause from the members at Trent Bridge some good sensible batting from Dylan Pennington he's zero not out of 13 <laughs> deliveries but yeah. it's a good zero it's a good zero so far and Lyndon James will have another go he's one shot away from that century he'll so desperately want yeah poor old Dylan Pennington will feel well I'm already probably about three or four not out here but um, he'll he'll know the score be playing for his uh, new teammate here 399 for nine. Don't know how many people arrived here this morning who've uh, watched Nottinghamshire on a regular basis. We're expecting them still to uh, have a wicket intact by one o'clock. Certainly last week in the first innings, they lost not the last five wickets for six runs or something of that order. So he's on 96 facing Adam Finch from the Stuart Broad end. Comes in and Lyndon James gets a full pitch ball that was a perfect one day delivery wasn't it right up on the crease line just wide of off stump and Lyndon James couldn't make anything of it three previous times he's reached three figures in first class cricket twice at Trent Bridge the other one at his maiden one came at the Riverside they were all in 2022 when Knots were in division two so this if he does get there well aware that I shouldn't be saying these things while he's 96 not out, but if he does get there, it would be his first in Division 1. As Finch bowls to him, and he's gone to pull this away on the leg side. It's up in the air, and he's gone! He's hit it to mid-wicket. And uh, 
Lyndon James has got to go. They're just asking if that was above waist height. Um, Worcestershire is celebrating. I think Lyndon James felt that was uh, too high, but that is going to count as a wicket. And Finch has got his man and knots a 3.99 all out. And poor old Lyndon James still there. I think protesting um, solely to himself, but I think he feels there's a little bit of an injustice because it was very close to being a waist high full toss. And he's hit it straight to Baker. That mid-wicket from the bowling of Finch. And that is that. 399 all out. We have reached lunch at Trent Bridge with Lyndon James having hit nine fours. Faced 180 balls. Been at the crease for just over four hours. And he's got to go. Court Baker bolt Finch. 96. What a disappointing end uh, from... For, uh, for Lyndon James, yeah, it was it was a full toss, and as he hit it, he was already sort of appealing, saying that's too high, but without any uh, any chance to to review it in this format, I think the umpires are always going to say, now that's uh, that's that's out. I'm afraid you've got to go. Thoughts, ladies and gents, before we uh, we wrap up for the session. What have you made of it all, Jim? Well, I, mean, I have to say, I mean, first and foremost, that is an absolute heartbreaker for Lyndon James. He did absolutely deserve a century, and it was it, quite an. Uh, an unfortunate, quite an ugly way to get out, wasn't it? It was full toss that you thought you could climb into. Um, but as you rightly say, Dave, life isn't always fair. He uh, he played like he deserved, well, he deserved one, he didn't get one. But uh, from 384 for six and, and Nottinghamshire being absolutely in control, Worcestershire with the uh, two spinners in mid-April managed to um, quell the runs and then took some vital wickets as well. So last four wickets falling for just 15 runs. And it just means they're still in this game. But an intriguing contest nonetheless. Thanks very much, Jim. More from Jim later. More from Grace later. What have you made of it? Yeah, disappointing end, isn't it, for Lyndon James? Watching the replay, I think he's probably got a fair case to argue for that being slightly above waist height. It's a tall man. It was a, it was definitely a high delivery. But, yeah, excellent innings um, for Nottinghamshire. I'd say they're slightly ahead in this game here. But interesting to see how was to go about it. Uh, when you got to go, you got to go, and we've got to go. It's lunchtime here at Trent Bridge. Thanks very much for your company this morning. Thanks to everybody that's taken the trouble to get in touch. We'd uh, love to hear from you uh, through the course of the day. And if you want to uh, rejoin us, we'll uh, resume here at Trent Bridge. It's about ten past one now, so around about ten to two, the players will be uh, back out there with Worcestershire beginning their response to Nottinghamshire's 399 all out.
Hello everybody, welcome back to Trent Bridge as uh, the umpires Alex Wharf and Ben Debenham lead the players back on to the field at the start of the fifth session of this match, the uh, afternoon session on day two here. Nottinghamshire having battered for the first four sessions in reaching 399 all out. Now it's over to the Worcestershire top order to see what they can do in response. This morning, Knots resumed from their overnight 305 for six. They lost Calvin Harrison for 52, career best 52. Good catch by Jake Libby running back at mid on from the spin of Josh Baker. That was 384 for seven. Liam Patterson White was LBW to Brett Dolly era for naught that was 385 for eight luke fletcher his first scoring shot of the season was a six off baker and then uh, chanced a risky single, well, a, a fatally risky single to Brett D'Oliveira at mid-off and was run out having hit that six. So that was 396 for nine. The only question then as Dylan Pennington came out to bat at number 11, could he stick around long enough to help Lyndon James get to a century? Well, Pennington stuck around. He was not out naught, but Lyndon James getting a waist-high full toss. He clearly thought it should have been called a no-ball. Um, slapped it to uh, Baker at mid-wicket and had to go for 96. It's going to be Luke Fletcher to get us underway. Worcestershire sent out Gareth Roderick and Jake Libby and here is Fletcher, his first ball of the season and we missed the first game and it's right on the money just outside off stump and straight away the adrenaline is high out there, lots of oohs and ahs from the Nottinghamshire slip cordon of three. We've got a point, an extra cover and a mid off, three on the leg side, a long leg. Got a short leg under the lid and a mid on here at uh, cloudy Trent Bridge. The overhead conditions haven't changed at all today. Been um, very little by the way of bree uh, breeze, but it is fairly cold and chilly out there. As Luke Fletcher in again, passed on by Debon and bowls right on the money and Gareth Roderick steers it to backward point and there's no run. Yes. Squared him up a little bit there. And uh, he's big man, Luke Fletcher, with a big character as well. And you can see that uh, plenty of energy out in that fielding side at the moment. Plenty of oohs and ahs. Three slips in. A short leg as well. So Fletcher is on his way in again from the Radcliffe Road end. And it's Gareth Roderick to face. And he's wrapped on the pads, big shout, and it's an early wicket. Roderick's gone, and it's that man Fletcher. You cannot keep him out of the game, and it's the early breakthrough from Nottinghamshire. And Roderick's gone for a duck. Well, it was uh, a fairly inglorious end to Luke Fletcher's batting effort. Uh, effort uh, pushed Chancy single to Brett D'Oliveira at mid-off. D'Oliveira ran him out comfortably, but Luke Fletcher with ball in hand, back to the day job, back in the side, and he's wasted very little time in getting his first wicket of the season. Worcestershire naught for one. Gareth Roderick, the, uh, the latest in this match to um, shake his head as he, uh, as he departs. Ben Debenham. Had a good long look at that. We've seen uh, this from both umpires in this game. They've really taken their time over the LBW decisions. Former Gloucestershire player Gareth Roderick has gone. And uh, that will give Knotts an early opportunity with the ball. Still very, very fresh indeed to have a go at last week's hero. Real talent here for Worcestershire. Who, uh, of course, played for Nottinghamshire seconds a number of years ago. Cash Alley on his way out to the middle. Yep, I had the privilege of seeing that at Edge Bastard on Sunday, the second of his 200s in that match, and it was, uh, I mean, it was eye-opening. We all knew that he had talent, he's got flair to go with it, but uh, that was a coming-of-age moment for Cashy Valley, but he finds himself in, in the first over after lunch, and Worcestershire with some work to do. It's uh, really the start of this season has been all about the batsman, which you wouldn't normally say but that's the impact the Kookaburra ball can have, but making use of the new ball is so important. And uh, Luke Fletcher's done just that at the top of his mark now. And Kashif is taking guard. A couple of words from Jake Libby, who's come down from the non-striker's end. 
very distinctive guard that Kashi Valley takes. I don't know if you are familiar with it, but it's almost like a periscope. He's got the bat up round his ear holes. And he awaits Luke Fletcher. He's on his way, bustling in up to the wicket. Full and just uh, pushed back down the wicket, fielded at mid on by Liam Patterson White. He may well have a part to play a little bit later on. It was good work from both Josh Baker and Dolavera, the two spinners for Worcestershire, in dragging them back into this game. Last four wickets falling for just. 15 runs. And, uh, Kashi for weights. Three slips still in. The legs, uh, short legs in there as well. In comes Luke Fletcher then. Again pushed into the onside. No ball. I've seen plenty of those in the uh, day and a session that we've had thus far. Yeah, some things don't change. Luke Fletcher overstepping is one of them. And uh, the first couple of runs in the inning sport. Uh, so far, a very good over. Fletcher back in the side. He, those of us that were here, the, the match against Kent last year when he was in uh, so much pain with the uh, injured ankle. To troop off the field, away he went. In comes Fletcher again then. It's uh, angled in at the stumps. It's just played down to mid on. Patterson White does the fielding again. Good energy in the field as you'd expect with that early breakthrough. Just one more ball then to bowl of this over. He's having another go off to uh, overstepping. Worcestershire for two for one. And they're going to need some more heroics from Kashi Valley potentially here. Yeah, certainly in an hour or so, Fletcher will be the one to watch on the field as uh, the noise cranks up from behind us. People making their way out of Trentbridge Cricket Ground, making their way over the road to go and watch the football. They'll then come back later for the last session. Fletcher in again and... Uh, Extravagant leave from Kashi Valley. Let's that sail past. And uh, that completes the first over of the innings. A successful one for Nottinghamshire as well. That man Fletcher getting the breakthrough. And it's going to be the former Worcestershire man, Dylan Pennington, to open up from the Stuart Broad end. Lots and lots of people. Many thanks for uh, taking the trouble just to have a look back at the replays of the uh, dismissal just before lunch. Simon Trafford, the club photographer, sent me a photo. Um, you, can, you can look at photos and make them think what you want to think. Terrific photo, though, from uh, Simon Trafford showing uh, the ball. I've retweeted it at Brace Cricket, showing the ball leaving Lyndon James' bat. <laughs> Is it above waist eye? Isn't it above waist eye? That, uh, that argument, I guess, will, will go on it forever and a day. Is out. Depends um, how yeah. big the elastic on your yeah. waistband is. You'd be gutted if it was given, depending on which side, don't you? Well... <sighs> And six foot five, Lyndon James, five foot six or whatever he is, Brett Dolivera, you know, with his waist eye and his waist eye, isn't there? Here's Dylan Pennington, who bowled very, very quickly last week, comes in to bowl to Jake Libby, the former Knotts man, who's off the mark, first ball, driving into the offside. Good looking shot from the proud Cornishman. Um, we'll get a couple of runs. Four for one. Always used to te tease him that he was a Devonian, just to wind him up. Well, he's a Plymouth Argyle supporter, yes, which is, uh, we, I won't hold it against him. <laughs> I do a bit. Libby underway, first ball. Pennington finished naught, not out. He could actually have had three or four runs. There was uh, a number of occasions where Lyndon James sent him back just to uh, keep the strike. Pennington in again from the broad end. Edge caught! What a catch! Harrison can catch pigeons, but he's caught Libby. Super dive away to his right, and Pennington strikes early. Worcestershire four for two, moment of the game by far. Wonderful catch from Calvin Harrison. Well, that's superb, isn't it? Four-length dive, one-handed grab, and it was going quick as well. And uh, Jake Libby, since he signed for Worcestershire, no one scored more runs in county cricket than him. Two openers, both back in the hutch. The opening bowlers are doing their job here. That's fantastic cricket. Well, said earlier that like Calvin Harrison is a useful cricketer and I said he's a good fielder, but I think that probably epitomises it. Probably one of the best catches we've seen in the slip cordon at Trent Bridge and in the county championship for a while. Just absolutely fantastic. Full stretch dive to his right. One hand going behind him. He rolls round. Absolutely fantastic. And... Dylan Pennington, as you can see, is overjoyed. He's got a wicket and it's just the second delivery against his old side. And what a start from Trent Bridge. Tremendous start with Luke Fletcher getting a wicket. And now Dylan Pennington as Rob Jones 
fresh into his uh, time as a Worcestershire player after I suspect many seasons of quiet frustration at Old Trafford where he was very often the one omitted mentioned yesterday whenever Lancashire came here and Rob Jones was in the squad he always seemed to be the 12th man we'd often see him on the field as the fielding sub but um, I've not seen him play that many times yet I've seen, seen him be the fielding sub so many times he's just sort of had to dip in and out the Lancashire side and even when he had a run of games and scored r good runs once they'd got their England players back or whatever he always seemed to be the one that was left out well just maybe that was part of the thinking in moving to uh, to New Road and to Worcestershire wish him well talented player gets a chance now early on against Dylan Pennington two ships that crossed in the middle of the night Pennington left Worcester to come here and he left Old Trafford to go to New Road Pennington bowls and Rob Jones defends four for two well they have spent a little bit of time together Rob Jones did come over and uh, play on loan for Worcestershire last year uh, but it was in the one day cup so uh, it's it, an easy enough transition but you're right Dave he's a really talented cricketer that just couldn't quite find his way and uh, it's what Worcestershire are good at is finding players who haven't quite made it elsewhere and uh, giving them a chance to shine Pennington in again Jones right hander of course pushes it up to the effervescent Asiba Mead, also of course a former Lancastrian, I'm guessing Mead's last year or two at Old Trafford would have coincided with the first one or two of, uh, of Rob Jones, imagine they'd have played together, but uh, following a different career path right now, Asiba Mead has got his name on that honours board or the captain's board in the uh, corridor over at the far side of this Trembridge ground. Rob Jones looking to make an impression at number four for Worcestershire. Pennington's next delivery goes through to the keeper. Remains four for two. It'll be an update for BBC Radio Nottingham any second. Pennington back to his mark and then turns at the Stuart Broad end. Comes in past Alex Wharf bowls and Jones for the third delivery in a row. Just rocks forward and defensively pushes it, but he's managed to push it between the bowler and a Seba Mead, so can take a single and Worcestershire move on to five for two. Rob Jones is underway. Dylan Pennington going for three runs in that over. Two from the first ball, that single from the last ball, but certainly probably owes uh, Calvin Harrison a, a drink when they get together at the end of the season just to toast all their successes might just want to thank him for that one what a catch yeah unbelievable catch and great start for Notts I mean they've got two of their two of their front line Seamers missing out today Dane Patterson and Brett Hutton I think niggles for both but a formidable pair here in Luke Fletcher the all the experience and the cleverness of Luke Fletcher and the broad pace of Dylan Pennington so it's exciting to see as Fletcher's in again and this is straight and driven nicely by Jones that's a lovely shot to get off the mark and Liam Patterson White gives chase it shouldn't go for four and it doesn't he does a tidy bit of field and then they will come back for three good shot just lent on a slightly fuller delivery from Fletcher there yeah I think they've got to pick the pitch the ball up Grace haven't they early on and just hope they can find an error Absolutely, yeah. I mean, he does does a bit with the ball, doesn't he? Luke Fletcher is going to want to yeah. get it up there and fuller, but a good shot from from Jones, and he's done well to capitalise there. But three slips in, any mistake, and he could be back with the openers in the changing room as Fletcher's in again and just brings his length back a bit. Extraordinary, isn't it? Cricket, you can uh, like this morning go what, 90 minutes without a wicket falling. And this particular innings here, we had uh, two going down in the first eight balls of the innings. Extraordinary stuff. An exciting start after lunch. Hope the stag do over there are enjoying it, Brace. They're still here, yeah. As Fletcher in again, and this one turned into the leg side. There's no one in at mid wicket, so it should be a couple as Ali gets off the mark. Two runs. 
That's where you disappeared to at lunch, wasn't it? You go over there and see them, find out where they're going tonight, <laughs> where the party is. <laughs> no, unfortunately not. Back in early tomorrow, aren't we? So no lively Saturday night plans for me, not this weekend anyway. It's Cashy Valley's first couple of runs. Here's Fletcher. Past umpire Debenham and uh, this one's played up to Liam Patterson White at mid on. And there's no run. Liam Patterson White has been given out for naught this morning on his return to the side. Just a slight hold up here, whilst Cash Alley ties a lace. You'd say they're in the box seat at the moment, Charlie. Not all out. Uh, 399. We had a little bit of overtime in the morning session. Didn't go to lunch until 10 past one. But the players left the field, the Nottinghamshire players, that is, on a bit of a downer because Lyndon James last out for 96. He stood there. He, I think he felt that it should have been a waist-high no ball that he received. He slapped it straight to mid-wicket. Couldn't believe he had to go and was given out. A lot of frustration uh, departing for 96. Earlier, Calvin Harrison made 52 career best score for him. So, not 399 all out. We've seen with these Kookaburra balls, you've got to strike early, and Knotts have done precisely that. Luke Fletcher back in the side, got rid of Gareth Roderick in the first over of the innings, and then in the second, Dylan Pennington, the former Worcestershire man, dismissed Jake Libby. But what a catch, a flying one hander at slip from Calvin Harrison. Worcestershire 10 for 2 after Knotts made 399. Well, one Premier League game is approaching its final stage. End of the over here at uh, Trent Bridge. We've had three overs. On proceedings at the city ground this afternoon, where Nottingham Forest face Wolves. Still Collins, be 60 Brian overs Forest left in the day. Digital radio and on Freeview Channel 720. Lawsy, good afternoon. Nice to see you. This is massive this afternoon, isn't it? Oh, it is massive. You're absolutely right. It's, a, it's an appropriate word for sure. It's uh, well, it's going to be Pennington to continue. And Rob Jones will be on strike. Three slips, short leg in place. In comes Pennington then, and it's pushed into the offside. Plenty of space. They'll take a single. Ball escorted by Hassi Pamid, who uh, pings it into the gloves of the keeper. Strike rotated. Which brings Kashif Ali on strike. And it's just a case here for Worcestershire have just tried to rebuild. And... Uh, limit the damage here with a new ball but Paddington will have other ideas he's steaming in now from the Stuart broad end and it's driven nicely against Hamid there does the fielding grabs the ball at the second time of asking but uh, Kashif on the front foot there Paddington pitching that ball up giving it every opportunity to move some furious bat twiddling going on here from Kashif Different sort of pressure for him. Pennington on his way in then. And that's just uh, left. And uh, we have three slips here. We have a short leg. We have a leg slip as well. An aggressive field. But there's plenty of open spaces as well. I was told yesterday he had actually played some second 11 games for Notts and, uh, and I looked them up, believe it or not, in 2018 he played five games. Notts batted him at 10. Yeah. Notts batted he's, him at 10. He's played for a lot of counties actually, or had, had trials and such. It wasn't until he got to Saka really that um, things started changing. Comes Pennington again and just offered the bat up there and it's pinged off the face and it's squirted out to the offside. They'll take a single. Fielded by Jack Haynes, former Worcestershire batter. Um... 
Uh, Charlie says a sensational catch from Calvin. It was very much like the Ben Stokes one off Adam Voges here in 2015. That was the one where Broad put his hands to his face, the almost ghost like uh, silhouette. Couldn't believe it. Says Calvin Harrison can catch flies. I think I said Calvin can catch pigeons, didn't I? But it's the, it's the same thing. Well, it's not. A pigeon isn't a fly, but you know what I mean. False start from Pennington. We had a lot of that weekend because of the uh, last weekend because of the gustiness of the the breeze kept knocking the bowlers out of their stride. But I think that was because Jones wasn't ready on that occasion. Well, the batter's ready now. In comes Pennington, and uh, driven but mistimed into the offside. I mean, um, rattles round and. Uh, Sends the ball into the gloves of Joe Clark. I've not seen Joe Clark keep wicket. It's the, uh, he's definitely a, you know he's a, he's, a, he's a batsman first, of course. But what's his glove work like? It's not something that we'd seen at Worcestershire. Well, hopefully you won't see him, and, and I say that in the nicest sense. You, you didn't notice him, or you don't tend to notice him at all because he's, he's neat and tidy and takes what's offered. Pennington then in again, just back of a length, dug to the offside. That's quick as well. Yeah, he's a good glove man. Um, obviously, Worcestershire weren't short in that department, so although he was uh, a wicketkeeper batter growing up, didn't get many opportunities, of course, at New Road. And You see him in all the franchise tournaments all around the world, wherever he goes, ends up uh, keeping wicket there. So it does sort of give captains, as, uh, as it's happening with knots here, it does sort of give captains that extra, uh, that extra slot um, six, seven, eight, or, or whatever that normally a wicketkeeper would occupy. You can, on some days, obviously bring in an extra bowler, on others an, an extra batter. But uh, it makes him a, it, yeah. a bona fide all rounder, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, which is so handy to have in the top six. Like uh, last weekend, now he batted for a long time, and once he was out, the last few wickets went quickly. So he's on the field virtually all the game uh, last weekend, or all the first three days as. Fletcher Bowles, 12 for two. Sorry, Grace, I'll bring you in in a, in a moment. Do the, do the next over. That's all right. Lunch OK? Did they look after you today? Yeah, it was nice today. Had lasagna today. Never had that before here. Enjoyed it. Went for a little stroll into West Bridgeford as well in the lunch break. Bustling full of red forest tops down the high street. I can imagine. 12 for two. Playing the old goal today, aren't they? Walls are... In town, so Fletcher Bowl short pulled onto the leg side, but straight to Ben Slater, who's got those uh, cumbersome pads under his uh, under his whites. We got a bat issue here. Cashy Valley's just wandering out to umpire Alex Wharf, showing him his bat. What's that all about then? You don't normally show the umpire your bat unless the umpire said, I want to test your bat, but there's no reason he should have done in the middle of an over. I think Cash Alley's just gone over there and in... Well, I don't know. I don't know. What do you make of that? Maybe <laughs> it's split on the bottom. He's going to get a new one between might, over, but... Might have been, but normally you'd change it straight away, wouldn't you? Here comes Flesher. Uh, Flesher. Fletcher into Cash Alley down the leg side. Goes to pull that one away. <coughs> and... Uh, doesn't get anything on it and again just picking up on Jim's uh, point there that was just good tidy glove work wasn't it made made easy for Joe Clark by the fact that uh, he moved his feet straight away got down the leg side took it there was no tumbling diving around fumbling the ball he just made good ground to his left took it and sent the ball on its way Fletcher in again from the Radcliffe Road end bowls again. Clark takes it. Got six catches behind the stumps last weekend against Essex. Two in the first innings, four in the second. Bless you, sir. If somebody sneezes downstairs, picked up by the FX microphone. Did you get the sense, having a little walk round, that uh, there's a decent crowd in today for this one? Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's it's a Saturday, isn't it? So. Mm. Always going to be slightly busy and maybe accentuated by the fact that some people might have come for a couple of hours before the Forest game. But no, it's a nice, lively crowd, crowd in and not putting on a good show so far for their supporters. I think cricket followers like Friday starts. It's uh, defended here up to mid-on. Those that certainly uh, spend most of the normal working week 
with other things to do but if you know a game is starting friday saturday or starting friday so it runs friday saturday sunday monday i think you can sort of plan to come along saturday and sunday with a fair degree of confidence that there might actually be some cricket but when we had the wednesday or the thursday starts certainly you you, you were never certain that you'd be able to say we're going to the cricket on the Saturday and there'd still be some on or on the Sunday and there'd still be some on as Fletcher comes in again bowls nice and full hit back to him and uh, I think he got a fingernail on it deflected it very close to the stumps Liam Patterson White completes the rest of the field in but not before they'd scampered a single Worcestershire here on BBC Radio Nottingham BBC Hereford and Worcester are 13 for two responding to Nottinghamshire's all out total of 399 Cash Alley has four Rob Jones has five, the two out. Jake Libby for two and Gareth Roderick in the first over without score. Well, the Friday start is a rare moment of common sense in the scheduling, isn't it, really? Because of, um, getting a, uh, an early exit from work on a Friday isn't uncommon. Free after tea at a lot of grounds as well, yeah. which is nice. So, And then getting the, the bulk of the play. You don't want to risk missing out on a Sunday if that's the last day of the game getting wrapped up early. So it's about getting as many people in as possible, getting as many young people in and people who are of working age or aren't retired. It's just good sense, isn't it? Yeah. Well, it's going to be Pennington to continue. Five runs, one wicket for his two overs so far. He's bowled quick as well. Yes, and as a result, if you do bowl quickly and do catch the outside edge, the ball flies very quickly to that slip, Gordon, which... Made that catch by Harrison even more special. Got Montgomery at first slip, Duckett at second, Harrison at third. And unlike Worcestershire, we can see the numbers and the names loud and proud. In comes Pennington then. And that's back of a length. It's hit the splice of the bat, just dropped down by Cashy Valley. It's just, I tell you what, it showed the Harrison catch. Really good body control. Because it was that, had to have the roll as well, clutching it one handed mm. and surviving the grounding. But it was, uh, it was a very elegant piece of fielding as well, as yeah. well as being. Um, well, just a high energy, high drama, very dramatic looking catch. Yeah. But a fabulous grab as uh, Pennington is on his way in again. A little bit of sunshine. And that's just played into the offside. He's hitting the bat hard here, Dylan Pennington. I think okay. Ho's doing next. He's had uh, a bit of white ball success on this ground, certainly for Warwickshire over the last few years, started his career at Somerset now with his third county Brett D'Oliveira, the skipper at six and uh, Jason Holder at seven In comes Paddy, uh, Pennington then into Cashy Valley who just lets that one go a lot of oohs and ahs from the slip cord on there but it was uh, left, it was High and wide of off stump. Was that Dutch judgment from was, Kashif? Was that almost a Paddington then? It was almost a Paddington, <laughs> wasn't it? <laughs> we'd, we'd like a Paddington. I think he'd be considerably less right, wouldn't he, to face? <laughs> <laughs> he's a big lad, Dylan Paddington, big yeah. strong boy, and he's yeah. um, he's sending it down at quite a lick at the moment. So Kashif has to have his wits about him. And up goes the bat again, up round his ears. And in comes Paddington. And again, dropped into the offside, thinks about setting off for a single, but Hamid is in quickly, fizzes the ball into Joe Clark's gloves again. And uh, it doesn't seem to be much in the way of sideways movement, but there's certainly plenty of energy and a lot of effort going into the uh, this opening spell. It's getting a ticking off here. On, on Young pitch, Master Pennington, it? yep. Get off my land, says the umpire. Get off my land. That's what farmers say, isn't it, Grace? I haven't got much farming experience, unfortunately, but I'll take your word for it. He's looks in good rhythm today, doesn't he, Dylan Pennington? I mean, I was impressed last week, but he just seems to have an extra half a yard on today. Best place to face him is from up here. In he comes then, and it's sort of back of a length, just hits the body of Kashif there. Drops to the offside, there's no run. But this is uh, exploratory stuff from Pennington. And it's going to take a little bit of bravery here. Kashif is uh, finding a few of these deliveries up around his rib cage. Short legs in for that very reason. Man back on the hook and uh, at uh, deep square. That's a fine leg as well. But he, he was pulling and hooking fantastically at Edge Baston. 
But I have to say, the Warwickshire bowling attack were very much off the pace last weekend. It was surprising. These two, though, Fletcher and Pennington, are very much on it. In comes Pennington again. And again, it's just back of a length. Again, it's the splice of the bat. It drops down more oohs and ahs. Hasib Hamid likes what he sees, gives him a little round of applause as he completes that over 13 for two then, Worcestershire. And the rebuild continues. But uh, going to take a little bit of bravery, I feel, for these two batsmen. Not the, not the biggest in stature. Warwickshire have declared 698 for three. With uh, Will Rhodes, 178 not out. Grace, yourself accepted. We know you're the quickest, but in the women's game, <laughs> who else, you know, generally round the circuit do people say are up there? Lauren Bell, presumably. Yeah. Um, um, Catherine Silverbrunt, when she played. Um, well, she's yeah. still playing, isn't she? But um, who, who, who generally do they say are the quickest around the, the women's circuit? Yeah, but Bell's... Bell's relatively quick but she's also pretty tall and she yeah. swings it so she's got pretty much everything because Fletcher's in and that's a good ball and hands on his head as Jones is brought forward yeah Lauren Bell's a pretty good bowler obviously swings a new ball a long way um, Izzy Wong looks quick she didn't yeah she, can she was, shift it she was a bit quicker a couple of years ago I think um, are you the quickest left armour um, go on say it <laughs> I'm trying to think I don't know. I've put a yard on over winter. We'll have to. We'll have to see. Um, we get the speed gun out, don't we? The outfield season. at tea. Come yeah. on. I don't really try and. I don't. It's not my main priority, really. Bowling quick, but I've definitely put a couple of yards on recently. Obviously, try and swing it as this man does here, Luke Fletcher, as he's bringing Jones forward into a defensive stroke. Um, is is that because of something you're doing differently, or is that now just? naturally just getting a bit older a bit stronger you're running in quicker you work harder in the gym or or why are you bowling a little bit quicker and is that taking anything away from swinging the ball uh, there's, there's been a lot of things um really over the last 24 months i had a terrible front foot no ball problem a couple of years ago which a few of the boys have had today but I'll tell you more as fletcher comes in again and much like the last all in good areas jones brought in yeah, I had a terrible front foot no ball problem, which I think then kind of subconsciously stopped me running in as quick. Um, so I bowled really slow mm -hmm. <laughs> for a season, literally puffed it out um, when I was about 18, 19, and then sorted that out. I had a few technical changes, um, put a couple yards on last winter and then was still really weak. So had a big gym focus this year. So I think all those things combined over the last two years has helped. Um, so in comes Luke Fletcher again, and he just keeps... But not a two penny here, doesn't he, Luke Fletcher? Mm. As Notts fans have seen him do so frequently over the years. Again, Jones watchfully forward in defence. And is there anybody you tap into with regards to being a specialist left arm quick bowler? Are there any. I've never. I can't think of any women's left arm coaches that you might have worked under. Never, um, particularly, no. I've, I've had good fortune of a lot of them, um, a lot of good. Seen bowling coaches, all all male actually, really. Um, Fletcher's in again and a bit too full and driven, but him he gets round and prevents any runs. Yeah, as I said earlier, obviously had Alan Richard, Richardson mm. in my younger years, head coach of Worcester, Pops Welsh, Mohammed Sheikh, lots of good coaches at Warwickshire. Obviously, got Chris Guest now, um, head coach at the Blaze. But I think our overseas Nadine, I like to tap into her for. Obviously, she's a right-arm bowler, does different yeah, things to yeah. me, but um, just her knowledge of the game, and she's been really good, and equally Kate Cross at Superchargers. But no left arm has um, explicitly come to mind, but always learning. Every day is yeah, a school day. That's it. I think actually working here and watching a lot more cricket, a lot of Red Bull cricket has helped as Fletch comes in again, and this time on the back foot, not too sure it was the length to go back to, and... Not slip Gordon ahead in their hands. Another good over for Luke Fletcher. What's the 13 for two? I thought halfway through that sentence, you, you were coming in a different direction when he said working here. I thought you were going to say working here with you, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Fountain yeah. of knowledge. <laughs> As you say, every day is a school day. 13 for two. Seven overs have gone. And uh, straight away, Lyndon James into the attack. Now, it's a different makeup to the Nottinghamshire bowling unit this match uh, last week it was four essential uh, new ball or 
Scott seam bowlers for all right arm Dane Patterson, Brett Hutton, Dylan Pennington and Lyndon James but for this game it's uh, the two that we've seen Fletcher and Pennington, Lyndon James is going to be the, the first change and of course the two spinners of differing types, Liam Patterson White Recall to the side the slow left arm spinner Calvin Harrison who's had a good game so far, a 50 and that wonderful catch he'll be the, the leg spin option but just might be an extra bit of uh, work for Lyndon James and uh, following on his 96 he'll be uh, eager to get amongst the wickets here same umpire that gave him out as well James Well Lyndon James then on his way in to bowl to Kashi Fali and it's uh, on the money straight away. Push back down the ground to mid on for no run. Sorry, Jim. I've got, I've got James on my, on my mind. I'm saying Lyndon James. Jim, James, Jim. I'm, do you know, I'm not precious about these things. No. No. I'm not precious about these things. I uh, I spent four years in Liverpool and I very quickly went from James to Jimmy Laz. Hey, mate, hi, Jimmy. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm not being Jimmy. I'll be Jim for cash. And um, So there we are. James on his way in. Cash awaits. It's too straight this time. Just tickled round the corner for a single down to long leg. It's a pretty good Scouse accent, that. Sorry, mate, yeah. Is that what it was? Sorry, wouldn't you have a Oh, Dave, you brute. <laughs> Classically trained, darling. Classically trained. Actually, Frank Watson, he won't remember this. Frank Watson taught me to do a Scouse accent. He is my former teacher. He's a lot of people's former teacher. Mm. Uh, he was my old English teacher. And we did a play called Our Day Out. And it was based in Liverpool. Here comes Lyndon James. Again, just tickled round the corner. I think it might well have come off pad rather than bat. And uh, it has been confirmed. Leg bite. How's your Russian philosophy? I mean, Russian philosophy. Mm. Now oh, there's a question. I think I'm going to be um, chronically outgunned by our colleague yeah. who sat between us here, yeah. Dave. Yeah. <laughs> Russian playwrights not not quite so bad. If, you know, if it was on Uncle Vanya, then maybe. In comes James again, fuller this time, and a watchful Kashif just turns that into the leg side for no run. Yes, asked her if she was reading Harry Potter last week. And what was it? What what book are you reading? Karamazov Brothers. Well, I've, I've read it far too many times now. I like the Marx Brothers, but I don't know about the Caramel. You like the Marx so Brothers? Yeah, you know who the Marx Brothers are, surely. What? What, is in Karl Marx? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> James in again. Cash just uh, rolls the bat on this one. Goes to the man on the drive and the leg side. There's no run taken. Harpo, Chico, Zeppo. And Carl. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very sudden change of pace, isn't it? <laughs> I'm not sure Karl Marx was known for his slapstick. No. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Worcestershire have uh, one ball left to see out of this uh, Lyndon James over. Emphasis being on seeing out. They're just being watchful here, trying to see through the new ball. Cash waits. And oh, it's a good ball as well. Just move back in a little bit. Just back of a length, and it's just taking the inside edge but it's uh, dropped safely for Kashi and he can run through for another single wasn't where he intended though so 16 for 2 it is after Lyndon James's first forays with the ball and that disappointing end. and as, as a Worcestershire fan and I you know I try and be professional but it's hard for me to hide the fact that I'm a big Pears fan but uh, it did look quite no ball-y I will say that um, but there we are it will be Luke Fletcher Yes. to continue sort of alluded to it just before obviously the wicket went down and then it was lunch but three years ago at New Road um, behind closed doors nobody there uh, Luke Fletcher <laughs> threw down the stumps to run out uh, Brett D'Oliveira and uh, D'Oliveira got his own back today and writing in the New Road press box that particular day was Paul Edwards who happens to be downstairs now writing a piece and uh, it, was, it was just a wonderful piece he wrote about Fletcher's reaction to that run out so he's got a chance to rehash that as this is short by Fletcher and it's pulled away through mid wicket for four runs that was uh, a little bit of a long up from the big man nice shot from Cash out he moves on to 10 20 for two yeah just just a bit of a bad ball really wasn't it from Fletcher just 
missed his length slightly, but we'll let him off this time, Dave. It's big, well supported, possibly the a bit of a fan favourite, isn't he? He is indeed. Luke Fletcher yes. with with good reason. Am I just getting excited unduly, or is the sky suddenly brightening? I'm not sure. I think it is. I've got shadows around the players. Not really got crystal clear blue sky, but the skies are getting a little lighter. This is off the outside. There's going to be more runs here down towards third man. I'm going to be a bit of a chase on. Just been dragged back inside the rope. And they'll have to settle for a couple. Cash Alley on to 12, 22 for two. Here on BBC Radio Nottingham, BBC Hereford and Worcester with Jim Dale, Grace Ballinger, Dave Bracegirdle. On this Saturday afternoon, day two. It's supposed to be a, another dry, pleasant day tomorrow. Monday we are warned there might be a shower or two around. As Fletcher runs through the crease here, whether he lost his stride or felt the batter wasn't ready, I'm not sure, but he'll have to redo that one. All takes its time, so he walks briskly back. Worcestershire bowled their overs in a tidy and timely fashion. Finished plus two on the over eight. A lot of overs bowled by the spinners, principally Baker, but Dolly Vera bowled a few. Cash Alley, I think, bowled one as well as Fletcher bowls. Two Alley pushes this out to point. There's no run there. Harrison doing the fielding. It's not Harrison, it's Jack Haynes. He's uh, found himself at point. Word in the ear of Luke Fletcher from his captain. Served under a few captains now. Luke Fletcher, Chris Reed, of course, when he first got in the side. All through Stephen Malamy's reign as skipper and now Asiba Mead. Next ball is pushed into the offside and Mead will move briskly to his left to stop the ball advancing towards the rope. They take a single. 23 for two. Partnership of 19 since Knott's ripped out the openers with the first eight deliveries of the innings. A wicket for Fletcher from the third ball of the innings and Dylan Pennington and getting rid of Jake Libby from the eighth ball of the innings. Up for Roderick, Jake Libby made two. <coughs> Here is Luke Fletcher in again. Short, pulled away down to long leg. Just a single down there. 24 for two. Days one, two and three last weekend followed a similar pattern in that the new ball was relatively new at the start of the day and did things during the morning session the afternoon session was just laden with runs all three days century partnerships between lunch and tea so here we've got something different a new ball in the afternoon sunshine as this is left alone by Kashi Valley goes through to the keeper 24 for two and we've had nine overs of the innings just wonder how long it will stay hard and, uh, and perhaps do a little bit. Another update for BBC Radio Nottingham into their match day programme in the next minute or two. And about half an hour or so away from the kick-off in all the games up and down the country. Grand National, four o'clock. Need to get our bets on, Dave. I'm, I'm sorted, I'm sorted. People walking about behind the bowler's arm there. Holding play up a little bit here to Dylan Pennington's frustration. Also to Rob Jones, who's standing with bat in hand and uh, sort of moving them out of the way like he's trying to shepherd sheep out of the way. In comes Lyndon James, and that's driven them to the onside by Jones. Slightly off an off-stump line, I think. Quite right, it's Lyndon James, not Dylan Pennington. Think he wants to change of end, Dylan Pennington? I think it's the fact that it's just three seamers and they'll uh, he'll not want to bowl them all into the ground 
um, straight away if he'd, if he'd kept both Pennington and uh, Fletcher going for six or seven overs it, it, it almost meant he was obliged to bring one of the spinners on straight away this this way he's given himself an option isn't he very wise Davis Linden is in again and that's back for length slightly just punched into the offside but passed some white on it quickly Interesting to see how he uses them. Liam Patterson White's very often been used as uh, a bowler that will keep things nice and tight from one end. Just tie down an end, get through the overs quickly, but apply lots of pressure, make it hard to score runs for the batting side. James is in again, and this good length delivery just hits Jones on the top of his bat, not quite over it. Whereas with the leg spinner, um, Calvin Harrison, you, you generally find with the leg spinner every now and again there might just be a ball that you can put away, but they're prepared to take the risk, aren't they? You give it plenty of flight and give it a bit of a rip. Trying to uh, buy a wicket. I think they'll complement each other very well. James Bowles. Across the midfield, and uh, Rob right. Jones, Jones defends. James to Jones. It's the tenth over of the innings. Yes, very much, Charlie. And like you'll have found across the road there, the sun is now out. Lovely overhead conditions for the first time in this match as Nottinghamshire look to press on and add to the two wickets they got right at the start of this Worcestershire first inning. Straight after lunch, a wicket for Luke Fletcher, another one from Dylan Pennington, thanks to a sensational catch from Calvin Harrison. That reduced Worcestershire to four for two. They're now 24 for two early today. The big disappointment, Lyndon James out for 96 as Knotts were eventually bowled out for 399. Final ball of the over there was just pushed him mid on. No run from it. Lyndon James has uh, started very nicely, hasn't he? Dropped it nicely on the spot, given nothing away so far. Two overs, none for two to him. Luke Fletcher, five overs, one for 16, which also includes a no ball. I'd imagine Fletcher would have seven or eight, and then they'd give D Dylan Pennington a go from this end, whereas Lyndon James, he might have five or six or seven, depending on how long he can go, how tight he keeps it. And then perhaps we'll see a little bit of spin from, from that end in maybe, what, a dozen or 14 overs time. But that's all speculation, of course. Fletcher to continue, then. Into his sixth over of this opening spell. Two slips now to Kashif. Man on the drive in the onside. In he comes. A bit too straight, so just worked off the pad. It's a man out in the deep, though which is the aforementioned Lyndon James. He'll do the fielding, and they'll add one more to the total. Yes, sunshine, very welcome, if you're a batter, of course, but just for the spirits, guys, isn't it? Mm. It's good to get some sun on your skin. Raise the temperature as well here. We've got the window open, and it's... Uh, it's, it's yeah, I wouldn't say it's chilly, but it's not far off. Chilly if we were sat outside. It's, it's generally chilly away to our right in the Smith Cooper stand. In comes Fletcher and uh, pressed forward there from Rob Jones to mid-off. There's no run. If you look to our right, they they are well. They call that the fridge, the uh, the big stand, um, the Smith Cooper stand because of the, the roof on it and the, the sun. I've got always on that side, so they don't get any warmth. Whereas on the other side, the Fox Road uh, side of the ground, the Lord and Vos stand as well, away to our left. They're all the all fridge be, and the oven. They'll all be shielding their eyes. Um, they're in the. They're going to be in the warm glow of the sun if there is any but they've got to shield their eyes to see the cricket in comes Fletcher then Jones awaits and just drops that into the leg side Montgomery does the fielding yeah you don't like a standard flat roof here do you <laughs> some quirky architecture and I'm all for it we've got a Batman score um, well score sign isn't it score scoreboard it's the yeah, Batman board it's a digital that's a bit of the future, isn't it? And then we've got a roof that sort of isn't a roof. It's like a power quiff, really, isn't it? That Smith Cooper stand. 
And then we've got a we've got a, a, a sort of Boeing 747 wing of a roof away to our left. There you are. I'm not much of an architect, as you can tell. In comes Fletcher, and that's uh, eagerly defended there by Rob Jones. Montgomery does the fielding again. In close on the leg side, it remains 25 for two. And these two in the middle for Worcestershire remain watchful. Now it's nice to have a different perspective from somebody watching a game from this vantage point for the first time. We get what? used to it. It's... You know, it's one of my favourite views in cricket, of, of, of course, but I just think all the stands are different, yet they all complement each other. Fletcher on his way in again. Again, it's Jones on strike and uh, offers a blade at that. Stretched for it a little bit, still on the front foot. And it's just like fumbling the field, which means that they'll get through for a single. It's Slater there, who couldn't quite stop the ball. Well, I, I think there's, there's a certain sort of charm to it. Modern sporting arenas, they tend to be concrete bowls. And I get it. It's very practical and efficient and effective and all that sort of thing. But to have an inner city ground like this, which... Uh, I, I, you're absolutely right. Every single stand is different. But it all sort of fits and belongs and works. It's a fabulous, fabulous cricket ground. And I, I'm fascinated by that building over there, which I will ask you about in just a moment as Kashiv awaits another ball from Fletcher. It's full... And uh, not much in the way of footwork, but the middle of the bat is found. And uh, Fletcher fields up his own bowling. So, the um, Smith Cooper stand, which has got the power quiff roof, <laughs> just across uh, next to it, there is a building. And the there's the it matches the arc of that roof. And it's a, it's a, a brick building. But it's, it's a really odd wedge shape. So what goes on in there? What's that all about? There's all the admin offices. Everybody are in there if you uh, came to Trembridge in the middle of winter and the depth of winter in November and had come to see somebody, if you had come to see the director of cricket or the chief exec or the media department, the commercial department, um, you'd, uh, you'd find all the officers in there. It, uh, I like it. It's, it's been well thought out, hasn't mm. it? I like that. It's Lyndon James in from the Stuart Broad end, wearing, of course, Stuart Broad's odd number, number eight, top ball. Yeah, they had a ceremonial handing over of the number at the end of last season when Stewart left. Of course, I can remember all those years ago when Paul Franks retired and he handed over his number eight to Stewart Broad. Um, we may have another centurion, although um, bearing in mind what happened before lunch, so I should say any more on that. Dominic Sibley is 97 not out for Surrey against Somerset at the Oval. Two slips in then as James is in again, and this is driven unconvincingly. It's attempted to go through the offside, but ends up in the hands of Matthew Montgomery at mid-wicket on the bounce and Lyndon James off to a good start with the ball here following up a stellar 96. The biggest score of the round so far um, belongs to somebody who's just been dismissed, Emilio Gay of North Hans. He's just been run out for 261 as North Hans pile on the runs. 520 for 6 against Middlesex who conceded 600 against Glamorgan last week. James in again, and this time Jones forward in defence. Has been relatively solid in defence here. James sails 90 not out in that one. It's uh, It's been a, a fairly miserable time in the field for Middlesex the first couple of matches. Of course, they got 600 themselves against Glamorgan when it was their turn to bat at Lords, but uh, two matches running. I'm not entirely sure what they'll make of the Kookaburra ball and... Uh, all the supposed benefits of it. Well, they'll want some fresh legs, won't they? They're going to sign five new seamers just to survive the month. Blimey. Lyndon James in. Catching midwicket in play, and that's a glorious shot driven straight back past the bowler, and it will race away for a boundary. Dead straight. It's a good shot. Probably shot of Worcester's image there by Jones. Lovely. Just check drive, isn't it? Punch down the ground. Sprawling dive from the man at mid-off, but just couldn't stop it. Lovely shot. So what have we got? 20 overs or thereabouts to go until T. Wouldn't it be wonderful if they could time that to about 4 o'clock for the start of the Grand National? How about that? That would be much appreciated. I'm going to be on my own here, aren't I? I'm just, you're going to be off watching I'm the sure Grand I'm National. Sure we can you can't a, leave me in I'm charge. Sure it's too can, risky. I'm sure we can find a screen at uh, during the T interval. That's when it coincides. James again bounding in this one, push slightly shorter. Jones back in defence. Relatively quiet out there. 
amongst the Nottinghamshire fielders as Dylan Pennington looks to be keeping loose. Be back on shortly, I imagine. Bold with good pace in his short opening spell. Yeah, Fletcher's had six. This is his first first class game. He's had one two day match. In comes Lyndon James, and this is very nicely timed through the offside. We'll race away for at least a couple towards that Smith Cooper stand, just guided into that gap on the offside, and two runs have taken. And it looks like we'll see Dylan Pennington on from yeah. Radcliffe Road end as he strides over. Yeah, earlier I think I said he'd maybe have seven or eight, but sort of forgetting that it is Fletcher's first game back, and the last thing Knotts would want fielding only three seamers is, uh, is one of them to potentially break down early on or relatively early on in the piece and certainly with Fletcher they won't want to take any uh, any risks. I think the stag party are on the move, the, uh, the dock ears are on the move. They do look a bit draggled bunch it has to be say. Um, are they going elsewhere? Are they going over the road? Are they moving on? Are they coming into this stag? Perhaps trying to find a bit of sun. Perhaps somebody said going to be warmer over the other side of the ground but uh, here they come every single one of them looking at the phone as they as they walk round uh, to our right in front of the must William be a cracking stag then eh <laughs> well you can see, I think you can see who the stag is the one in predominantly fancy dress what four or five oh a bit of sunshine here fellas he says and yeah they've just relocated haven't they they're obviously getting chilly in the uh, in the stand that they call the fridge yeah, you look after each other, lads. Stay hydrated. In comes Dylan Pennington then. Kashif awaits. And it's a little bit straight, just worked into the leg side. But uh, some neat and tidy fielding by Liam Patterson-White. Prevents them from taking a single. They've not been hitting the pop that hard that they, they didn't absorb the fact that they just <laughs> all collectively got a little bit cold. So they've got up from where they were and they've gone and sat in the sun. Good move. So, slightly less aggressive field now. Two slips, got a man on the drive on the leg side. Pretty conventional, otherwise in comes Paddington. And that's just inside edge there. There's a bit of width, but there was plenty of bounce and it was just caught the inside edge onto Kashi's toes. That would have stung a little bit, I'd have thought. Because he knows them and they know him. He won't want to be hit for runs by the Worcestershire players, and they won't want to get out to Dylan Pennington. Unfortunately for Jake Libby, he's already got out to a former teammate. Pennington on his way in. Oh, it's full, the stumps. But uh, just pushed back to him by Kashif, straight out the middle of the bat. But again, he's Pennington's love to push it up there. Well, he was getting ticked off at the other end, Dylan Pennington, for running on the wicket. And now Ben Debenham at this end has uh, joined the party. Get off my land. That famous farmer's saying. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the umpire's saying, isn't it? Got their cameras on, haven't they, on their coach. You can see them. Pennington in again. It's full this time, too straight, though, and worked off his pads. I doubt to deep mid-wicket, thinking about a second, but uh, they won't chance it. Good bit of fielding. Yeah. Single it is done. Just straight a bit too straight there. And I think I might be misremembering this, so forgive me, but I think Pennington might have got a bit of bother for running on the pitch at Blackpool in the T20 against Lancashire last year. And uh, he might well have been... I might be misremembering that, but... Um, yeah, we can't help you. We can't help you. No, it's a classic Jim Dale conversation with himself. <laughs> or an argument, rather, which inevitably I'll lose. In comes Pennington again. Jones awaits. He just uh, jams his bat down on that. In behind it solidly, though. And he didn't really get much chance to do uh, to spend much time out in the middle. At Edge Baston, so he'll want to, uh, he'll want to cash in here. Oh, Rob Jones, good player. Very neat and tidy setup, very technically sound. But he is. Uh, he's got a very talented fast bowler herring in towards him, though. In comes Pennington. And it's just soft hands there, edged away. Through the vacant third man area, that's going to run away for mm. four. It was. Uh, there was 
more edge than anything, but it was very controlled. Play with soft hands as well, so there's no real danger there. It keeps that scoreboard ticking, which Worcestershire won't mind one bit. No. Worcestershire clearly, you know, they're, they're here to win this. It's a game of cricket. They're here, here to win this. But if they leave Trent Bridge with the, with even a draw, I think they'd be quietly satisfied with their start to the season. Go to Edgbaston and get good points from a draw. Come here and, um, you know, if they don't lose the game, leave here with reasonably decent points, and then they can go to Kidderminster in a still in a reasonable position in the table, still unbeaten, a chance to impress, and. Uh, I guess everybody's geared up and look, very much looking forward to that next week. Obviously a big thing for the Kidderminster Club. I know there's been a great deal of uh, upheaval. We were hearing from Phil Neal yesterday. A lot of things have needed to be transported from New Road to Kidderminster. But uh, it's a great thing for the Kidderminster Club. And let's just hope that people from different parts of the county will, will come and support the cricket next week. Well, I love an outground. I love an outground. And, you know, it's... You have to make the best of it. It is tough the way things are at New Road, and it's, you know... Have you been there? Have you been to Kiddy? I have, yeah. Uh, uh, so, press facilities, what will they get? The old traditional marquee or the grounds? I'd wear a sort, coat. Or... I'd wear a coat. I, well, I won't be going. But, uh. Um, uh, <laughs> having said that, Knott's play there the end of May, or play at New Road the end of May. As Lyndon James comes in, and this is dropped on the leg side. Um, I asked Phil Neal about that at the moment. The, uh, the Knott's game, I think it starts 24th of May, is scheduled for New Road, but of course... There's been a, uh, an awful lot of water on New Road in, in the past years. And the ground staff have absolutely worked miracles to get New Road playable. I just wonder how much rain falls between now and the 24th of May. And I suppose there is the potential that Bryce Girdle, for the first time ever, could be heading off to Kidderminster to see a game. As, uh, this has dropped on the leg side. Hence the question about the press facilities. Well, I'd, I'd be surprised if there's any cricket at New Road in May, to be honest. It's um, it's a pretty desperate state of affairs. You don't think? 24th of May, so what's that? What is it? That's, that's, that's a month and 12 days away. They do work miracles, your ground staff. They should, they should they get, do, they, but they should you, get can only, you can only do one or two a year. year. That's yeah. the trouble. They're going to have to do eight, aren't they? That's the thing. Cash Alley on strike on 15. Lyndon James bowls to him and brings the bat down sweetly, defends it. I hope I'm wrong, Dave, of course, but... Um, well, I'm. I'm not. I'm not confident. <laughs> Either way, I'm. I'm happy. I enjoy going to New Road, but also enjoy ticking off the new grounds. There'll be uh, a couple of new ones for me on the calendar, assuming we we fulfil them. Because not to go to Rugby School to play Warwickshire this year. I've not been there. As uh, Lyndon James comes in again to Ali down the leg side, taken by. Joe Clark, somebody let out an appeal, they heard something, but again, unfussy from Clark, good footwork, and the other one that uh, I've not been to, Knott's go to Neath to play Glamorgan in the One Day Cup, I've not been there either, so uh, a couple of fresh ones to tick off. It was Lyndon James with the appeal, and I think it was a classic bowler's attempt to distract from the fact it was rattling down the leg side, mm. and they wanted to take a, a leg by, potentially. Chelsea, the only two that are left. Next ball. Is edged down to third man, played with soft hands by Cash Alley. It's not going to run all the way to the fence. Calvin Harrison after it. And will restrict them to two. And a nice leisurely throw in right over the top into the gloves. 39 for two. Just good steady progression here by Cash Alley and Rob Jones. They're both on 17. Neither have made any glaring errors as yet just uh, accumulating the runs just settling into what they hope will be a lengthy partnership they've put 35 on so far as Lyndon James is in and bowls and this is pushed to mid wicket and there's no run to conclude the 14th over Lyndon James 4 overs none for 10 Dylan Pennington 4 overs 1 for 10 and here on BBC Radio Nottingham BBC Hereford and Worcester and on the live stream, Trent Bridge live, we're watching on as Worcestershire move to within 360 of Nottinghamshire, There's still 48 overs left in the day, so we're at the halfway stage of the day's allocation, the 96 overs, of course uh, we didn't lose any for the luncheon interval, Nottinghamshire being bowled out on the stroke of lunch so we don't lose the two for the change of innings so it would be a 96 over day so we're halfway through 
Paddington then back into the attack from the Radcliffe Road end and uh, Rob Jones just plays that into the onside straight to the man on the drive but that's a Back to your point, yeah, if we come away from here with a draw, that will be a cracking start to the season, mm. there's no question. Having a Kookaburra ball probably favours a side like Worcestershire in terms of their aims to stay up, with the bumping up of points for a draw. <clears throat> but just a quick update again for BBC Radio Nottingham. Steady progression being made by Worcestershire's third wicket pair, both Cashy Fally and Rob Jones each on 17. They put 35 on after Dylan Pennington and Luke Fletcher each took a wicket in the first over of the Worcestershire second innings. Not spalled out on the stroke of lunch with Lyndon James out for 96. 399 all out Nottinghamshire. Worcestershire 39 for two in reply. Thank you very much, Dave. So, uh be the end of the radio Nottingham updates until it gets to half time in the football. We've got uh, we've got our ears on Grace. Normally can start to hear the noise from over the road, but uh, it's not it's not been that obvious just yet. Might just be building up the atmosphere behind us. Literally three four hundred yards over the road at most, away from the city ground. But uh, generally you can hear all the roars and cheers and the music and everything. But Quietish today as uh, Pennington comes in to bowl to Rob Jones once more, a bouncer, which Jones bobs underneath. In the 15th over, this morning Calvin Harrison reached his first 50 in first class cricket. Was out for 52. Good catch by Jake uh, Libby. Rushing back from mid on, one of those that he had to uh, just check and see where it was as it dropped over his shoulder. That was off the spin of Josh Baker for 52 as Pennington in again to Jones and he defends. And then Liam Patterson White giving out LBW to Brett D'Oliveira without scoring. Luke Fletcher, his first scoring shot of the season was a six from Josh Baker, but then he pushed the bowler later in the same over to a mid off chanced his arm Fletcher tried to sprint a quick single but Dolly Vera always been a good fielder picked the ball up and threw down the stumps so that left Dylan Pennington to come out and try and just uh, chaperone Lyndon James for a while as he got through to 100 as Pennington bowls again and Jones once more pushes into the offside but Pennington did his job and he was not not out but Lyndon James pulled a full toss straight to mid wicket and had to go that was the end of the innings. 3.99 all out. Lyndon James out for 96. And since then, wickets for Fletcher and Pennington. And that's uh, where we are now. 39 for two. One ball left in the 15th. They've tried the runs up. Recent overs. Pennington is going to bowl another maiden. He does indeed. Rob Jones very watchful, but it's the right thing to do. We saw this approach from Harrison and from Lyndon James earlier. And uh, once they played themselves in, they were able to accelerate nicely. Sammy King's just been on the field as 12th man. Just uh, brought something out. Um, he's waving again. Where is he going? Sammy King's going off. It's going to be Lyndon James. Just in the last over, I, I noted Lyndon James. You can see the footmarks at the far end. The, um, the moisture makes the footmarks sort of stand out. Lyndon James must run in very straight, almost behind the umpire, because he doesn't stand on any of the footmarks that any of the, the other bowlers have created. If you're watching this over as he runs in from that broad end, sort of runs between the footmarks and, and the umpire somehow. 39 for two. You, you have a look at, his, at where his feet land. Nowhere near any of those other footmarks. There he comes. Lyndon James in. Just the singular slip in play now as he's turned into leg side but runs prevented by Matthew Montgomery in mid wicket. That's a very straight approach, isn't it? It is. Very straight indeed. That's my observation for the afternoon. Fully analysed. Get it in there early, that's it. Get your observation <laughs> in and take the rest of the afternoon off, Dave. Good thinking. 
if I had the rest of the afternoon off, I'd still be here. I want to watch this. This is great. <laughs> We've waited all winter for the return of the county championship. It's James in off that straight run up and a straight delivery. Pushed into the onside again by Ali. Both batsmen 17 not out. Worcester 39 for two. Looking forward to playing here, you must be. I know, yeah. you've, I know you've played here before, but... Uh... Yeah, it's always nice to play here at Trent Bridge. Obviously, we spend our whole winter here. Mm. Um, it's our home. We, we really enjoy it here, and I think, I think we've got at least four games in May, a couple in April. But obviously, different to the men, we're a bit here and everywhere in the East Midlands as James is in, and this is back for length and almost rushes or surprises Ali as he plays it late underneath his eyes. <laughs> It's a bit of bounce there, wasn't there? Pennington's last delivery of the previous over as well. He <laughs> bent his back. Got a little bit of bounce. And uh, Luke Fletcher's at it already. <laughs> yeah, you can hear the noise behind us now. They've cranked it up a little bit. He's singing, you. He's, 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 he's out there <laughs> singing and shouting, you reds, to the spectators. He's an entertainer, isn't he? Mr. Fletcher is James in again in another good delivery. Good area is being held by all three of the Nottinghamshire seamers so far. Is he a is he a Nottingham Forest supporter? Very much so. Yeah, okay, yeah. good. He's, he? just, he's not just playing to the crowd. No, no, no. So and he'll when, be hating um, this weekend cricket nonsense, won't he? And when he was on the field, and Stuart Broad and Samit Patel, all three of them Reds, and uh, and they were playing behind us. Um, it was it was fun to watch. They have a merry little dance when a goal went in. James in again and puts a bit more into this. Slightly back for length, slightly quicker, but Ali once again strong in defence. So we just begin to hear all the noise from across across the river. Mm. Where is there he is down at Fine Leg. Luke Fletcher will be keeping our eye on him as the game goes by as James and again and again back of a length and Ali plays late. Another good over. Worcestershire 39 for two. Good news and bad news for Dominic Sibley fans. He got his 100 and then got out next ball. Uh, Surrey are 219 for three at the Oval. Replying to Somerset's 285. So the defending champions on course there to perhaps go on and get a Substantial first innings lead. Hampshire made 367, Lancashire 92 for one. Um, Warwickshire 698, 698 for three declared. Durham a 35 without loss. Division two, Derbyshire 166 for six. Glamorgan made 237. Gloucestershire 150 for four. Yorkshire made 326. Sussex 168 for two, replying to Leicestershire's 338. And Northants have now declared 552 for six against Middlesex. Uh, James Sales got 100 as well. Uh, 261 for Emilio Gay. James Sales 113 not out. Son of David Sales, of course, who got plenty of hundreds of his own. Pennington in again. Forward press there. And... Uh, Rob Jones is watchful in defence as that short leg has uh, lost the helmet and moved into the offside. There is a leg slip though, two regulation slips as well to Dilling Paddington. LPW is loosening up Liam Patterson White. So uh, Lyndon James had five overs from the pavilion end, the broad end. So maybe that he's going to come on and have a spell there. Paddington in again. Jones again watchful in defence. Straighter and fuller this time from Dylan Pennington. And he just pushes this back down the wicket. Leaves two in no hurry at all. <laughs> get off my land. Might well get a tick in. I was going to say, the, the umpires are spending mm. a lot of time investigating. At what point do they start yeah. pointing fingers and giving warnings? Yeah, well, Especially I with a, a pitch that's going to rely on, I think, in, in the, the latter part of today and certainly mm. tomorrow, that spinners are going to come into play. Good point. Pennington's on his way, and it's short. It's a good bumper, actually. Rob Jones isn't the tallest, but he had to. Uh, he was he was hopping about a bit there. That's one for the over. Yes, in his first spell, Dylan Pennington was certainly told off, ushered off the uh, offending part of the the strip by Alex Wharf. He came down this end, and that's twice now that Ben Debenham has 
Certainly made a, a point of going down there and just examining where his feet are landing or where he's running and his follow through. It's actually the, the wrong sort of areas, isn't it, for a left arm finger spinner and a wrist spinner. Well, actually, like, maybe just a bit wide, but uh, keep encroaching like that, then it's going to be pretty handy. Pennington in again, good pace, taking an inside edge, but it's uh, bisected a couple of fielders, so it's going to be a single. Have well, we got any lefties in the Worcestershire side? Is Josh Baker bowls left arm, does he bat left arm? I can't remember. Oh, there's a question. I don't think he does. I think he's a mm. right-handed bat. I think he's a... Uh... So are they all right-handers? diddle de diddle dee dee <laughs> Yes, they are. Yes, they are. But you see that the, those footmarks, they're a bit too um, full, but as... Uh, I, I beg your pardon, I see Bermead has just gone over to the umpire and uh, and shown the ball. It's the old captain's ploy, isn't it? But um, he's shown it to Ben Debenham here and clearly Knotts wouldn't mind at all getting another ball. But um, it's been closely inspected oh, and then given back to the Knotts captain. Can't blame him for trying. No. Again, it almost looked as if... Might have just snipped something off, perhaps a little bit of loose seam or something. And uh, Paddington was on his way in there, but uh, halted by the umpire. Mm. Rob, uh, sorry, Kashif just uh, again furiously twiddling that bat and uh, moves away to leg side, so uh, Paddington's halted. Been one or two famous incidents in the past, hasn't there, where an umpire's just thrust out his left arm and Jolted almost, in the uh, almost polaxed the, uh, the bowler. And uh, that one's just wide enough to not worry Cashy if he lets that go through to Clark, who's uh, got the gloves for Nottinghamshire. So, again, very considered approach from these two. And you just feel like Nottinghamshire are going to keep probing away, keep thinking, you know, stay tight. But we've got... That's Liam Patson White. He's, mm. we, we've got the windmills out. He's going yeah. big arms, so yeah. he's definitely going to see action sooner rather yeah. than later. Has he got a preferred end, Dave? Paddington on his way. Short. And uh, thought about playing Cashy for a second there and then quickly thought better of it and just moved the bat inside the line of the ball. It will sway out the way. That's a good bumper again from Pennington. Trying everything they can here. As the the uh, that lacquer on that kookaburra doesn't last long, does it? You've got about six to eight overs before uh, you lose life in it. I don't think I've ever asked him if he's got a preference. I've seen him bowl many, many overs at uh, at each end, but he is going to start from the broad end. James Hayes doing 12th man duties for knots today, just uh, bringing out the extra <coughs> helmet and all the paraphernalia that they need. Well, it's the uh, short boundary to the leg side, but he's going to look to turn that away from the batsman. So this will be a, an, an interesting indicator as to how the pitch fares. Half a feeling that... Um, oh, I was going to say that he's on the brink of a milestone, but not quite on the brink of a milestone. Um, 95 first-class wickets for Liam Patterson-White. So if he, uh, if he rounds that up to 100 today, he's had a pretty successful afternoon. Um... This will be his, or this is his 42nd first-class match. I said he's scored 100. That was down at Taunton against Somerset 2019. 40 for two. In fact, his debut was at Taunton in uh, 2019. His century was down there, the same ground at 2021. Patterson White then in for his first delivery and it's turned into the leg side. There's no mid wicket, so it will be a single off his first delivery. Jack Haynes in at short leg with the helmet and the pads on. Ben Duckett still in first slip. It's Calvin Harrison also loosening off there. I'm sure we'll see him in the not too distant future. Bowled pretty well last week against Essex and he's had a good game so far. Calvin Harrison is Patterson White in and this is he's forward early. Ali's got forward even before the ball's left Patterson White's hand and defends it, covers it well. Yeah, bowled what we thought was the ball of the match, didn't it, Calvin Harrison to bowl was it Jordan Cox? Patterson White's in again and down the pat pitch advances Ali but can't get it past mid off, but nicely struck. 
you were here for that one, weren't you? It was the, the leg spinner's ball, pitch leg and I clip was. the top of off. Was Lovely indeed. delivery. Yeah. Patterson White. Turned into the leg side, timed nicely by Ali. That brings him up onto 18. Single taken. Pushing it through, isn't he? On that one. Mm. Pushing it through and nice and full. Playing safe here, I think, a little bit. See if he gives a bit more air to one of them. Mid off just sitting back and again turned into the leg side and a quick single taken to mid on. Well run as Matthew Montgomery is quite deep there at mid on. Yeah, runs have been hard to come by over the last half an hour or so, but uh, that's the way to do it, isn't it? Take whatever single is going. What well, Calvin Harrison loosening up now. I wonder if it's going to be a change at both ends, spin at both ends. Patton White in and again turned into that vacant mm. mid-wicket area. They've played him nicely there to start, to us Shabatters. Got to plug that, haven't you? That's, yeah, that's just too so. easy. Just too easy. Well, I suppose the idea is leave mid-wicket vacant, hope, you know, try and play against the spin of, of, of what's there, but it's just a bit too straight, a bit too full, and uh, it does make it easy, doesn't it? Yeah. You can, I mean, you can do that. You can try that when you've tried everything else, but when you first come on... Just keep it dry, try and bowl maidens, plug the gaps, make them, uh, make them respect them you and defend yeah. you. Yeah. Well, Pennington is going to continue, mm. so it's not Calvin Harrison just yet, but that'll be interesting to watch. I love watching a leggy, yeah. so it'll be good to see how he goes. But we'll stay with the former Worcestershire paceman for now. Kashif waits. Pitched up. It's a bit too straight again, though. So he worked into the onside and... Uh, I see Bermuda seen plenty of the ball at sort of wideish mid on. And uh, there's no run, but 44 for two. 36 these two have put on. I think it's the order of the day, really, isn't it, with this Cookerborough ball, the way things are set up, David? It's just don't give it away, try and stay in the game. And uh, runs will come easier later. It's in again. It's, oh, it's a leading edge there. And Paddington, it, he's just slapped the ground there. He's he's done his former teammate. Leading edge, just spooned up. There wasn't a man there, though. So the first false shot in a while. Good bowling. Ask questions, doesn't he, Paddington? Keeps you nice and honest. Made his debut here for Worcestershire. In that white ball game in... 28, uh, pink ball game, I beg your pardon, in 2018. And he is again then, short one, and uh, Kashif gets out of the way. Yeah, I've seen a, a three-year period where it really where We've seen him blossom, and he's actually a really, really top top quality opening bowler in white ball cricket as well. Last season, the amount of times he took wickets in his opening spell, yeah. first couple of overs, often in his first over. And it's just, uh, you saw, year before last really is when it all clicked. And last year he was he was excellent. But um, particularly in the white ball game. He had a propensity in, in the early part of his career to go for a few, but of course you've got to learn that skill. And in comes Pennington again to Kashif. Bit too straight this time, pushed into the leg side. There's a man in the deep, so it'll just be a single. And it's uh, Patterson White who does the fielding. Doesn't leave anything out there in terms of effort, does he? Absolutely sprints in every delivery. Gives it his all, which is great to see. Well, he's a genuine fast bowler, isn't mm. he? And it's, they're, they are, they're a sight to behold. They're, there's room for everyone in the game of cricket, and that's what makes it wonderful. But um, fast bowlers are exciting, aren't they? Yeah, what he won't want right now is uh, him to be asked to run in and sprint like this. And then at the other end, other end Liam Patterson White's bowling his overs in 90 seconds. on the money again from Pennington again just pushed into the offside you need a bit of a breather don't you between overs you won't get that with LPW bowling no and you don't want to especially you don't want him uh, setting the ball rather like Joe Leach a bit earlier on where, <laughs> where he put in a good spell to open up this morning and then was chasing the ball all over the yeah. place because Finch had lost his line but uh, last ball of Pennington's seventh over and it's third over in this little mini spell since he's switched ends, Jones awaits, and in comes Pennington. And that's just 
just on the back foot there and just push into the offside. They take on the single. I think it's to Luke Fletcher, mm. and they make it quite comfortably. It's good running from these two. They've been uh, sensible, if not exciting, and we'll take that for now from a Worcestershire perspective. 46 for two. Absolutely. Yeah, no, no prizes for being exciting. You don't get anything for flashy 20s and 30s. Grind out your runs if you can. Just look to dominate, look to stay there. So, uh, I'll be Liam Patterson White handing his cap to umpire Alex Wharf. As uh, the intensity from the sun increases, just gets a little brighter. 46 for two. Slipping a short leg, Haynes under the lid, Ben Duckett at slip. This is deflected again. We saw it in Patterson White's first over. Just deflected past Jack Haynes, and then there's an easy run on the leg side. So the uh, Patterson White's wagon wheel will just be a straight line at this point through mid wicket, won't it? Yep. Well, indeed. And it comes again. Bowling to Kashif Ali, who's on 20. And uh, this time it's more of a defensive block. The ball trickles its way back along the surface to the bowler, the surface that's getting paler and paler in colour, a drying breeze throughout the day, a little bit of sunshine on it now as well, and down the track yes. comes Kashi Fali, shot says Jim, and he's absolutely right, launched down to the far end, one bounce into the Hound Road lower tier, went uh, over the advertising boards and into the front row for four, and that brings the Worcestershire 50 up. Lovely shot. Sorry, Dave. No, I forgot, I forgot myself right. there, my friend. No, <laughs> absolutely spot on. It'll please my mate Rob Doverston, who's watching. Next ball to the same player, Kashi Fali, and a little push up to a C me. Not much pace behind the push, so he's able to garner a quickly scampered single. 52 for two. Ali on to 25. This partnership worth 48. Yeah, Rob, um, God bless you for tucking in and watching the coverage. He's a former left arm spinner himself but really enjoying watching Cash as well he might 52 for 2 Rob Jones on strike now he's on 22 push out as far as Harrison and there's no run final ball of the 20th over is bold now and again it's blocked back to Liam Patterson White two overs none for ten for LPW not really created the pressure just yet that Knotts would have been looking for and I see Bermuda's has recognised it gone straight over and he's having a word with him um, some of you were um, with us yesterday when Tim Jones came in the commentary box just brought out a, uh, a new book um, predominantly I guess for Worcestershire cricket supporters but uh, if you like your history if you like a good tale or two 61 for one the book written by tim jones um it's about the 61 players who've played just one game for worcestershire so many of the names are uh, unheralded but uh, each of them of course have a very fascinating backstory which tim has researched and uh, tim left his email address for those of you that might want to get in touch about it tim a jones 405 at aol.com really lovely looking ball paddington in again and on his toes there kashif pushes that down to uh, mid on there's no run and the same theme the uh, nottinghamshire cricket annual is now out um, available if you're coming to the ground or uh, indeed if you want to get in touch with the club um, as ever published by the Nottingham Cricket Lovers Society wonderful read there's everything everything in there all the cricket um, all the club cricket around the county women's cricket the age groups um, everything and uh, lots of features on the current side so the next ball is run into the covers but that's available if you're coming to the ground either in the shop or from reception or just get in touch with the club if you want to get your copy of the um, Nottinghamshire Cricket Annual for 2024 there's my book plugs done one for each side I don't think they'd appeal to a Russian philosophist <laughs> slightly different crowd I feel There you go, I'd read both. Paddington then, on his way in. And he 
that's uh, on a length there, just uh, fended away into the offside as news comes through. If you're into this sort of thing, of course, that uh, Worcester City are one behind, having started really well in the FA Vars semi-final. Great Wakering have scored, an absolute screamer of a volley. And I've managed to keep my composure, which is very much unlike me. But Worcester City one game away from playing at Wembley, of all places. Hmm. They are out at Great Wakering, which is, uh, for the most part, I think they uh, close most of the land around Great Wakering because it's a live range for the MOD to do manoeuvres. But there we are. Moving into position is Pennington, who is again on the money there, and it's a solid defensive push there. From is, this, is this a second leg? Second or? leg. We won the first leg 1 0. Okay. And there we uh, are then. started the game, had chance after chance, first 12 minutes all over, and they've just scored an absolute scorcher of a volley, apparently. My so friend Daryl Butler is there. He's done the journey. He would have been here, but he's uh, he's making the most of the last bit of the football season. The, I don't know what he's thinking. So it's level on aggregate right Never now, is what you're saying. But yes. he could be sat in the sun, staring at the power cliff stand. Watch an intriguing passage of play here as Pennington is in again. And it's carved away over the slips. And that's going to go away for four. Bit too much width. There's element of risk in that shot. I don't think it's entirely in control of it, but it was deliberate nonetheless. But no third man. It's been a reasonably profitable area for Worcestershire. And uh, that brings up the 50 partnership between these two. Rob Jones brought to the wicket when uh, Jake Libby was caught brilliantly by uh, Calvin Harrison off the bowling of Dylan Pennington. And these two have just steadied the ship. Yeah. 29 for Kashiv, 22 for Jones. Similar strike rates, though. Pennington looks to close out the 8th over and his 4th over of this spell. In he comes. And it's just uh, straight and on a length. Just pushed into the leg side for no run. So 56 for 2 then. Trail by 343. And although you feel like these two actually look reasonably comfortable, when you trail by 343, that's uh, scoreboard pressure can play a part in this. There's no real assistance, though, being given to the bowlers. Saw Pennington there, looked a little frustrated at the end of the over. He's running in, he's bowling quickly, but the fella at the other end, whoever it may be, with this kookaburra ball, just wants to roll forward and defensively block it. It, it does seem like it, it does make for rather turgid cricket, rather than uh, the absolute tussle between bat and ball that we're used to in this country with the Duke's ball. Well, with wickets at a premium with a kookaburra ball, is no one wants to give it away, do they? So it doesn't even really promote kind of expansive and exciting stroke play. Even if even you see when uh, Nottinghamshire were in a really strong position this morning, uh, Fletcher's I think gone off for a comfort break. I think it was Fletcher who went. James Hayes is on as the sub fielder, just popped in at backward square. So it will be Patterson White to continue from the short broad and. The Getting through it, Patterson White. He's not giving it any flight. He's certainly getting through and it's forward defence from Jones. Patterson White at the end of his short run up. Get through his overs quickly and again, not giving much flight and down the track and it should race away. It won't race away to that long mm. boundary. It kind of plugged in the outfield, yeah. didn't it? But they'll get a couple and there's a ripple of applause. Round Trent Bridge. You've been pleased with that shot at Augusta. The um, <laughs> the greens there. There's not too many plug on the greens. They just Good tend to roll shot, off, don't it? they? Yeah, I was watching it last night. Put it on the green, and the ball just rolls off again. Yeah, good footwork, but edge on that, wasn't it? Patterson went in again and again. Jones advances down the track, and there's a chance for a run out. It's a direct hit, and is it given? All the Knotts players are up in celebration. Jack Hayes has his hands on his heads, but just not quite. Quick enough, I don't think. Well ran between the Worcester batters, but I thought from our angle he might be in trouble for a second, but clearly back safe. Good he bit was of work. Fine. He was fine. Matthew I Montgomery was the fielder. Terrific bit of work. Clean pick up through down the stumps, similar to what Dolly Vera did this morning to uh, run Fletcher out. It went to him quickly as well, wasn't it? Mm. It was a gutsy run. 
That was a gutsy run. They were lucky there. So Patamite right in and again a bit short and this time just placed into the offside gap. Another comfortable sig single. Not too much pressure being applied from this end at the moment, Dave. Yeah, what they've done this over knots, they've taken away the short leg just to try and stop him dropping it to mid-wicket, taking the single. Patterson White bowls in better length and brings Jones forward into defence. In fact, I think Knotts have got two subs on there. Sammy King is at uh, is on the point boundary. Where's number one? Who on earth would wear number one on the back <laughs> of a cricket uh, shirt, Grace Ballinger? Patterson White's in again and sure. this time Jones advances down the track and he gets all of that. It goes into the stands for six. A brilliant shot. <laughs> Knotts are sending for help. Knotts have sent. <laughs> <laughs> they've sent for Richard Marshall, who's come out with that pounder thing, the uh, the large hammer type thing that uh, is going to bang into the ground. Clearly, at this end, um, some of the turf seems to have been brought up, maybe by the bowler's spike. Dylan Pennington running in hard, pounding away. There he is, Rich Marshall. Dragged away from his Notts County commentary that he'll have been uh, listening to, I'm sure. Luke Fletcher back on the field has a little bit of a look. So James Hayes goes off. Sammy King goes off as well. So uh, I don't know who the other one who was. Now Luke Fletcher's taken. <laughs> <laughs> Luke Fletcher took over. And, Out the uh, way, son. Yeah, well, he nearly, Leave it to me. <laughs> he, he nearly flattened uh, Richard Marshall there. Um, if you're not watching the live pictures, uh, you're missing a treat here because that... Um, what do, do you know what it's called, Grace? I, no never, reason you should know. I've no. never seen that in my that, entire that life. big pounder thing there. <laughs> I ho, how, I ho, how do you look for I one ho. online to buy one? That's what I want to know. What do you what do you search? Uh, well done, Richard Marshall, son of the not scorer Roger Marshall, bringing out the uh, the pounder just to flatten down a bit of earth that had come up in uh, Pennington's um, approach to the crease in his run up. I think his spikes had brought some turf out and they had to flatten it down. But uh, good fun there. Luke Fletcher took it over and said, "This is how you do it, son." What's that? A little delay there, which um, may not be a bad thing for the bowling side. And we're we'll getting a bit of momentum. Patterson White sticking it in the same place at the same pace with not a lot of spin, and he got lined up there, really. Rob Jones isn't known for power hitting, but a lovely, lovely straight drive for six. Yeah, it was interesting. As I say, they took away the short leg, so they plugged the gaps a little bit. So uh, Jones and Cash Alley decided, well, We've taken away our single option, so let's. Uh, Why well, he hasn't got a long on and a long off down there? Let's just yeah. get down the track and lift it in the air, and both just did to great effect. A one bounce four followed by a big six. It's actually relatively safe, isn't it? Mm. With not a lot of turn, that uh, even a miss hit's going to clear that man. Uh, Pennington then round the wicket to Kashif, and he's going to get some of the short stuff. No catches behind the wicket at this point. Short leg is in, but no slips to speak of. So we're going to see a little bit of. Uh, Nathan Smith's tactic that we saw this morning which was coming round the wicket and just going for the body line stuff strong leg side field got short leg you've got uh, uh, mid wicket very, well, very straight mid wicket then you've got behind square like leg gully two men in the deep on the leg side as well so it's more short stuff and that is as best you can describe as an agricultural sort of swoosh I'm not sure that's a cricket shot. Whatever it was, it was ugly. Um, and he just tried to back away to leg and get something on that, almost like a baseball smash, wasn't it? But it's... I think he'd do well to leave that alone, David. A big fan of the word swoosh. Seven yeah. on the leg side. Seven fielders on the leg side. And the two on the off side are at third man and backward oh, square. Oh. Just push it into the covers for two, if you, if, if you can. <laughs> we'll just drop it in deep extra cover. You could probably run five. Um, the captain's coming over now to have a chat. Not on, not on here. There's even time for me to get down there and stop and running five, I think, on here. 66 for two. Jones, 31. Cash Alley, 30. Um, not so trying. Something different. Um, for that, they need to be applauded, but... If they get a wicket from this leg side tactic, I'd be surprised. Well, it's most likely going to come from a lapsing concentration from the bats batsmen, so they've got to uh, keep applying themselves here. Pennington in again, still around the wicket, and again he's gone for a 
big swipe and he's got a big top edge on it. And it's gone behind the wicketkeeper and all the way for four. So he's going to take it on Kashif and I'm not sure that's the smartest move. No. Given the field and given the state of the game, I think you just get underneath this and uh, let Dylan Pennington tire himself out. But there we are. Exactly. He likes to put on a show, <laughs> Kashif. Yeah. And, uh, you know... We're here for a good time as well, aren't we? So fair play to him. I nearly got an assist there, but I say I'd be very surprised if he gets a wicket because, it, as you say, he shouldn't have taken that on a top edge over the keeper down to the long stop boundary for four. Pennington then in again, still round the wicket. Kashif, will you have another go? This, he will, you know, but uh, this one's fuller. And it's just tickled round the corner off his pads. And I'll take a single. The Yellow Belly says, watching Fletch on the live stream, helping with the ground repairs, reminds me of watching Dane Patterson operating the lawnmower last season. Wasn't last season, Yellow Belly. I was out there in the uh, in the middle with him. It was the end of 2022 as all the Knots players just gathered on the outfield to celebrate um, winning the Division 2 title at the end of the 2022 season. Um, the ground staff, um, I think they wanted the players to be moved because they said they had to do some mowing. So, uh, Pennington in again. Uh, on a leg, just tucked into the leg side. One bounce to the man at short leg. I think it's Jack Haynes. So, so Dane asked if he could do it, and so he got on the uh, got on the mower and went up and down, did all the stripes on the outfield while the rest of the players had a quiet and well deserved end of season beer. But uh, yeah, I was I was in fact it was me that took the photographs of him um, end of 2022 when Dane became groundsman for the afternoon. It's always good to branch out into other things. <laughs> You've got to have a hobby. Uh, although at the expense of a championship winning beer, I'm not sure about that decision. Pannington then in to finish his over. Round the wicket, back to the shorter stuff. Back of a length. That's a uh, slightly more probing line and slightly more probing length. But it's kept out well by Jones. And it means that Wutashire are 71 for two. Kashiv 35. Rob Jones 31. And that's uh, the fifth over of Pennington's spell. Might that be the end of him mm. for a little while? I don't know. So they've got to change tactics, haven't they? Because he's clearly the enforcer. You're not going to get Lyndon Jones to run in at that pace and bang it in and try and get it up around your ears. You're not going to get Luke Fletcher to do that. So Pennington being used as the enforcer. But as you say, you can only do that for so long, especially when, as I pointed out, you're only getting about 90 seconds breather at the other end because Liam Patterson white bowls his over so quickly. So that might be the end of him. Now, Pat Patterson White has dropped mid on deep. Surely not going to fall for that one, Grace. Well, only time will tell as in comes Patterson White and it's turned smartly into the leg side. It could even race away. It doesn't as further out mid wicket comes around and just one run scored. I thought there was a bit more on that for mm. a second, but. Mid-wicket fielder came round nicely. Slip still in play then. Jones to face, 31 not out. Alley at the other end, 36 not out, as this one is, again, slightly short of a good length, and Jones defends. Patterson White into his fourth over 21 runs for no wicket so far and this has turned into leg side Jones thinks for quick single but Jack Haynes ran quickly mm. there even though he's got the pads on he's athletic Jack Haynes Jones taking a minute there just slowing Liam Patterson White down he's quick between his overs he gets it done quickly as that's driven nicely to mid off and I see him is deep there, so a comfortable single taken to the fielder. Yeah, they haven't been able to break this partnership, but you fancy the last two or three overs, it, it, just almost something there that something might happen, whereas the ten overs before that, you thought, well, this is just fairly pedestrian progress. Patterson White in and ushed into the offside by Ali. How do you think Patterson White's gone in this first few? Well, the first two overs they just milked him and then they changed the field round and just getting more of a look in here. He's in again and brings Ali forward into a defensive shot. Another over gone, that's 25 I think, unless the scoreboard's already changed. I think they could stand here till a week on Wednesday and just block him, block him, block him if they wanted. Now if they're going to score runs that does bring him, in, him into play. It's just a, a matter of 
getting the field in the right place, isn't it? And if there is an error, just hoping it goes to hand. But if they just look to block, I, I fancy they could stay there for as long as they want. But of course, you've got to try and keep the board moving, otherwise you're still going to be 300 plus runs behind. Pennington's going to get another one, which is good fun for Jim. Hey, why not? Why not? And the wind's picked mm, up as well. Has. Blustery. Has. Still got, what, three, six, seven on the leg side. Well, they're going to stick with it. But it's uh, <laughs> Rob Jones rather than Kashif. And Rob Jones is slightly more circumspect in his approach. In he comes a short, and yes, he yeah. does well underneath that. Going at a reasonable pace, actually. Actually, I think he's outscoring Kashif in terms of strike rate, which doesn't happen very often. I think he said one for the over. I was just going to make that point. How many times can you, you bowl a bouncer that Rob Jones ducks underneath? Well, we've got the answer straight away. The umpire is going to be all over that. That's one for the over. So it might become a little more in the batsman's favour here if Dylan Pennington is, is almost obliged to pitch it up. It's when you have a lenient umpire who lets you repeatedly get away with banging it in short. Pennington's back in then. A little trigger movement mm. back there from uh, Rob Jones. He just has to drop it in the offside. Lots of open space, but it was close enough to that one man on the offside doing the fielding, which is uh, Jack Haynes, who's uh, working hard on the ball, which we saw from the Worcestershire lot earlier on. No run, so it remains 73 for two. And of course, at this time of year, it should be 120, plays 109. And 20 wickets in a day. But none of that anymore. <laughs> Lots of helmets being... Oh, they're playing past the parcel with the helmets out there. Well, we've got two men under the lids. One on the leg side, one on the offside. We've got a leg slip as well. And Pennington's on his way in. And it's just back of a length. But he's uh, got him behind that well. Just pushed that back to vacant mid-off area but no great pace so uh, the man at short point <laughs> has uh, bobbed around picked it up we've got a change of field now we've, got, uh, oh, we've only got six fielders on the leg side now we've got a change of helmet yeah Just suddenly got very noisy behind us I don't know if uh, anything's happened in comes Paddington again then, into Rob Jones. Again it's short, and uh, evasive action taken, but he wasn't far away from that. I think he was about to wear one in the kidneys there. <laughs> he's, uh, he's done well to avoid that. That's uh, only really back of a length. It's well directed from Pennington. So he's trying to ruffle a few feathers. Took the wicket of Libby, of course. One for 22, and we're into the best part of 10 overs from Dylan Pennington. Fall this time and right down the leg side. Looking for that Yorker. But it's a little bit too far down the leg side in the end. It's a attempt at a little clip and they can't get anywhere near that. So Joe Clark does the job behind the stumps. Yeah, and again he did it well. He just, you know, he's light on his feet, isn't he? He gets in good positions early on, so there's no, uh, there's no histrionics with him. And uh, good. just coming over, have a word with Pennington again. Yeah. One ball left of the over. It's always fun when they do this with one ball to go. <laughs> there's still one. Well, they do say, thing. try and get him out. Okay, good thinking. Let's do that. <laughs> And uh, the grey clouds are starting to move over again. We had a hint of blue sky for a moment, but it's gone a bit dark here. In comes Pennington, round the wicket still. Again, it's short, and it's too short, and there's no need to play that. In fact, he's going to be no-balled. So we'll have another go. Mm. And uh, any runs are welcome for Worcestershire. Still trailed by 324, so any which way they want to come. 75 for two, though. And then we've sort of found ourselves again in a very... Just drifting a little bit, the game, in the past 15 minutes or so. And in comes Pennington again. Two men in close. Leg slip as well. And it's a nick there. Oh, it didn't quite carry. No. And it was a tricky one to stop. It bounced just in front of Joe Clark. But there was a nick there. Almost strangled down the leg side. 
And uh, on his haunches there, Dylan Pennington. That was a little chance there. The wickets are so hard to come by. But Worcestershire will take a single. Rather fortuitously, though. And uh, it's 76 for two. 25 overs gone. That's uh, more than three and over. If I just... Yep, that is. Yep, six overs to go until... T now the most advanced game anywhere in the country is in Division Two at Cardiff, where Derbyshire are now 180 for nine, replying to Glamorgan's two three seven. So 19 wickets have gone down in that one. Down in the Welsh capital, still going to be Liam Patterson White. Six overs to go until the tea break. This partnership worth 72. Not begun the session with a case of bang bang, two quick wickets. Patterson White bowls just too short. Enables Rob Jones to back away. Cuts it into the offside. Takes an easy single out to Lyndon James. Jones on to 34. Cashy Valley has 36. 77 for two. Patterson White bowls again. A little push by Rob Jones into the offside. This time Harrison does the fielding, but not before they can gather another single, 78 for two. You'd like to be a fly on the wall in the dressing rooms at half-time, wouldn't you? At half-time, at uh, tea time, as uh, Patterson White bowls. This is just nudged out onto the leg side for another single. That's three balls this over, three singles just uh, pushed into the gaps. It's like to know what how, and how Nottingham should think they can able to break this partnership and get wickets. Patterson White bowls again, that's a slightly edgy shot, they've only got one slip in there, wouldn't have carried had there been two or more in there. Pennington runs down to third man and there's two more to the total. So one, 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 two in this. Patterson White fifth over, he's none for 27. Not seen Calvin Harrison bowl as yet. Liam Patterson might not have in the greatest of days individually yet. It might turn, of course. None with the bat, none with the ball so far. Is another single from Rob Jones. And becomes 82 for two. All just a little too easy at the moment. I think so. I think definitely from this end. I think Pennington's looked dangerous. I think he's unlucky to not have another one. There's LPW again bowls and blocked. So six from the over. 82 for two after 26 overs here on BBC Radio Nottingham, BBC Hereford and Worcester and on the live stream on the pictures brought to you by Trent Bridge Live. Grace Ballinger, Dave Bracegirdle and Jim Dale watching on as we get now within 30 legal deliveries or a maximum of 30 legal deliveries before the tea break. 37 overs to go in the day. Should be, uh, should be done before half past six I would imagine. This evening, if uh, things go to plan, go as they are doing at the moment. It's nice to have both sides fielding spinners as well. It's not just a steady di diet of spin. I wonder if the ground staff during the tea break um, might just want to re-peg down those s strips. One has just billowed up in the air, the uh, protective strips they've put on the netting wickets just in front of the William Clark stand, if the guys are listening. One just billowed up there as if it's... Uh, threatening to get away. Paddington in again, still around the wicket, still short. Change in the field though, only six on the leg side now, so uh, extra man on the offside. They've got a, it's almost like, mm. almost like a fly slip, yeah. but it's gone right back to the boundary. So it's not, it's the finest third man I think I've seen. <laughs> We're not a million miles away from the old school backstop position yeah. that you find in, in uh, schoolboy cricket, a schoolgirl cricket, but yeah. uh, there's a, I suppose a wide third man and a very, very fine third man. And then you've got the man on the drive. Short cover under the lid. Short again, just ducks underneath that Kashif. I think he's learned his lesson. I was going to say, do you think that, that almost backstop position you speak of is is for the it's catch? It's for a miscue, isn't it? It's cause it and, and I think Pennington saw, especially that little niggle down the leg side, it clearly took the bat. He thinks, go on, give me one more skip. It's been a goal behind us and it's gone very, very, very quiet. Tell you everything you need to know. Leg slip in then. Floodlights are coming on, folks. 
And short leg in. Switch from the offside to leg side. Round the wicket again, Pennington. Kashif waits. He swats this away. It's going to be trouble here. He's going to be out. And it's taken. And Kashif, if we're honest, has not made a great decision there. He backed towards leg and fancied taking it on. I think he fancied smearing that away, away towards the offside. But it's a top edge and he's given it away on 40 here, Kashif. And he was uh, staring down the barrel of a half century there if he wanted it. Yeah, Jack Haynes. It's uh, a Worcestershire 1-2 in terms of the wicket. Cashy Valley out caught. Haynes bowled Pennington for 40. 82 for three, so Notts get their first bowling point to add to the three they got with the bat. And, uh, well, he just couldn't resist, could he? Cashy Valley, you, uh, you live by the sword, you die by the sword. He wanted to get on with it. He wanted to try and dominate, to try and take down... <coughs> Worcestershire bowlers and uh, particularly Penny, uh, the Nottinghamshire bowlers and particularly Pennington if he was going to keep uh, banging them in short around his chin he was going to try and take him on but the top edge flew all the way down to third man just as the floodlights were just starting to come on and uh, reach up to full power Adam Hose will be the new man coming in at five important wicket for Notts to get just before tea well whether it's uh, captaincy or Pennington insisting that he stays on He's getting through plenty of mm. overs here. And he just felt he could sense there was something in it for him, couldn't you? And uh, and it has paid off. Reckless that by Ali, I think. I mean, he's been... He, you said he was good on the short ball at Edgebaston, but I think he's been struggling against Pennington. He had a couple near misses and it just seemed like he almost got himself out there in my opinion. Well, I mean, I, I, do you know what? It's it's one of those where Pennington, the tactics were so clearly that they were going to pepper him with a short ball on a from a difficult angle and ask him to play an awkward shot that he's not going to be in control of and he has obliged him. I think it's, I mean, to bear in mind that he's only played nine first-class matches. So he's, you know, he's a, a, the, the, the fabulous display he put on 93 at uh, Headingley last game of the season last year when Worcestershire got promoted and back-to-back centres at Edgebaston. <laughs> um, it's quite easy to forget that he's, he's inexperienced uh, in, in this form of the game and I think he's in good form he got himself settled <laughs> and he up. just fancied it you know it's, uh, he decided he'd back himself and I th but I think it's, it's easy to say it's the wrong decision when he gets out doing it but I think he would have been serving his side a little better if he had ju just ducked underneath that one and Great. seen uh, Paddington off, but Paddington's in to the new man hose. Bit two leg side that shorter ball, so he just weaves slightly out the way of it. But Worcestershire still trailed by 317 here. So um, at a noisy Trent Bridge, all of a sudden <laughs> they've, uh, they've equalised behind us to the delight of Fletcher. Yeah, they should. The old school player cam they used to have on the football should have on Fletch. She'll be all over that. In comes Pennington again from the Ratcliffe Road end. More short stuff. Still two leg side again, and Hose is unmoved. Digs out a little trench again for his guard. Goes down the wicket to do a bit of gardening. He's doing a job here for his side, Dylan Pennington. It's it's not. You know, it's not his normal day job, is it? You know, what what do you do? How do you bowl? How do you get your wickets, Dylan? Well, I run in and do this and this. One thing he wouldn't say is, um, I'm going to run in with seven on the leg side and just bang it in and, you know, get away with as many short pitch bumpers as I can and hope one of the batters will take me on and play a false shot straight up into the air. He's, he's not trying normally to get his wickets like that, but he's doing a job for knots on a flat surface with a ball that's unresponsive. Pennington in again, more short stuff, and he's just worn that one on the chest. Looked to weave out the way of that, but it's just glanced through Adam Hose on the uh, on the breastplate. But yes, I mean, Kashif gave him, gave him invitation to continue yeah. that, really. I, I don't think it was actually a particularly successful tactic until two overs previous and, and Kashif just had a little yep. nibble a little nibble again yeah Rob Jones showed how to play him if he bangs it in short I'm just going to duck underneath but again it's all part of the, all part of the learning process and understanding the, the circumstances and uh... bit of leg spin before 
the tee break. Liam Patterson wide out of the attack. Calvin Harrison going to get a bowl. There's four overs to go before tee. 82 for three. We've got dark clouds overhead, hence the call to put the floodlights on. Hopefully there's no wet weather around. I think it's just the, the, the gloom. It does, I guess, throw into question the uh, possibility of, batting, of uh, going on playing all the way until we've got all the overs in. 82 for three. As Harrison starts with the ball pushed into the offside by Rob Jones. Comes in again to the same player who backs away. This time he's found the gap. We'll get a single. 83 for three. Jones onto 36. He's played nicely. And now Adam Hose is on to strike for the first time at this end. He'll take guard. or to give him his full name. The Isle of Wight's Adam Hose. Is he from the Isle of Wight? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Him and... Danny Briggs are the two current first-class cricketers from the Isle of Wight. Played at the Isle of Wight last season. That was a new close. Yeah, it was a yeah. long, long away trip. Yeah, went with Knotts in 2018. I guess you'll have gone for the day, will you? At least, at least Knotts went down there for a four-day trip, even though the match was finished in three. As uh, this is pushed into the offside, and they'll take a quick single of me doing the fielding, and hose is underway. Yeah, we stayed night before and night after, obviously, but yeah, just mm. for a for a 50 over game, it was quite the journey. And good job we won; otherwise, that would have been a pretty horrendous 10 hours travelling each way. Nice ground, isn't it, with the uh, purpose-built banks all mm. around Very for nice. the spectators to get on. Nice pavilion. Very much enjoyed it down there. It was a nice sunny few days. As uh, next one's cut away onto the offside by uh, Rob Jones, another single. It's three from four deliveries in this over. Jack Haynes being brought in to pop the helmet on again at short leg for the new man, Adam Hose. 85 for three. In comes Calvin Harrison. Balls with a lovely rhythmical action. This is work behind square fielded by Pennington. And there's no run. Hose one, Jones 37, not out the three out. Jake Libby for two. Gareth Roderick had already gone by that stage for naught. And Kashi Fali just gone for 40. Next delivery is blocked by Adam Hose. That's the end of the over. 85 for three. This morning, Knott's bat began from their overnight 305 for six. Lunch was delayed 10 minutes because knots were nine down at one o'clock. And the final wicket was that of Lyndon James, who went at 10 past one for a frustratingly, agonisingly disappointing 96. Century was always there on the cards for him, or so it seemed. And, and he got a full toss that he slapped down the throat of mid-wicket and hung around. I think he was hoping that the umpires would say it was... Just too high. It's Pennington. He's really giving it a go here, Grace. Yeah, Pennington in and again short and just evaded by Jones, who's played him nicely. He's, as we said, shown how it's to be done. Just get out of the way of it and it's no trouble. But, yeah, he's been impressive here, Pennington. He's bowled quick, he's bowled short, and he's showed some good robustness. Yeah, putting in a big shift for his side. Ollie Sargent needs to um, have a quick reappraisal. I'm a Knotts fan. But I didn't celebrate that wicket because Kashi Fally's in my fantasy team. What has the world come to? <laughs> what has the world come to? Terrible. Yeah. The vanity. The vanity. Well, the clue is in the word fantasy. It's a fantasy. Get real, Ollie. <laughs> <laughs> Pennington in again, and this is another short delivery played nicely by Jones. Just dropped short into the offside and there's three Nottinghamshire players with both hands on their heads but I thought he played it quite nicely he doesn't mean it Ollie you do what you want mate you live a happy life sir there you go says somebody else who clearly plays fantasy cricket I've dropped never, <laughs> never in my life never in my life I have a two and a half year old that gives me no peace whatsoever 
I haven't got time for a quiet weep in the bath, let alone do fantasy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Paddington on his way. That's another bumper. And uh, <laughs> Rob Jones hot foots it out the way. Quiet weep in the bath. Oh, that would be the dream. <laughs> As, if the only reason why I took this gig is they've given me a hotel for the evening and oh, I'll get well. a good night's sleep, Dave. It's... Uh, when he comes in tomorrow morning, Grace, and he tells us he's been out clubbing till three o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> With the stag do. The Nottingham night. Oh, life, now yes. you're talking. Where's the stag do? I'm going to go and make some friends. They've gone back. They've gone back to the original there position. There you are. There you are. That, that's, uh, that's my evening sorted, isn't it? Very eyed first thing. <laughs> Pennington, back in. It's full this time. And I tell you what, it wasn't too far away from the man at short leg. Got plenty of it, did Rob Jones. But uh, in the end, he found the man at mid wicket. There's no run. And it's been a it's been a hearty spell, isn't this, from uh, Dylan Paddington? It shows that he can be a work for a workhorse as well as being a a, you know, a strike bowler. He can This is his twelfth over, and we've only had this is only the 29th of the innings. Yep. So uh, giving it a go, isn't he? He'll have earned a cup of tea, won't he? A few minutes time, he's in again on a length, and it's a good leave there. Just uh, shoulders, arms, and lets the ball. Hurry past his midriff as Jones. A composed cricketer, isn't he? Yeah, it always looked as if Cashy Valley was the one that would potentially toss his wicket away to this short pitch barrage, and that's the way it turned out. Rob Jones has, I think, very much from the word go, set his stall out to leave anything he didn't have to play out, bob underneath anything that was short, just defend anything that was on his stumps. Got to be careful though, there's a silly point in there and a short leg. Pennington in again and more short stuff, not quite short that time and again he's slightly losing his balance but the stumps aren't in danger and Jones doesn't want to play so he survives again. But that's just something that, that Kashif will learn isn't it? You want to feel bat on ball and when you're in form and people are talking about you and uh, those quiet passages of play, you've just got to learn that patience and the uh, especially with this ball and the wickets that they're, they're playing on. You'll get a chance to score runs and this one's about accumulation. Sometimes you've just got to earn the right before you smack it about. It's very evident there, I think with two overs to go in the session, that uh, maybe Dylan Pennington has, uh, has bowled his last over of the session because one or two of the other players came up, gave him a pat on the back and now uh, Asiba Mead has gone for a chat with Pennington and then he patted him on the back. So uh, that very much looked as if to say, it's a great effort, mate, thank you. So somebody else may get the last over. Harrison in and this is full and turned into the leg side and races away for four. Adam Hose's first boundary. Yeah, full toss, just lent on that. Plenty of wide open spaces, time beautifully. Manchester City leading at home to Luton Town, early doors through. But at lunchtime, Newcastle United beat Been updated for Radio Nottingham in just a second. Is Harrison bowling now, and this is uh, pushed out into the offside by Adam Hose. In comes Asiba Mead to do in the fielding. 89 for three. That's really fun. Should began their innings at the start of this session, so we know they've scored 89 runs in this session, which didn't get underway until 10 to 2. Next one is blocked on the leg side. Great catch from Calvin Harrison to dismiss Jake Libby. Right at the start of the session, can he end it with another impact? Balls to Hose, who's on five, blocks this one. And there's no addition to the total. That's the 30th over of the innings. It's Calvin Harrison in again on four or five paces. Bowls! Oh! And a little bit of turn there. And was it bat? Was it pad? It I think went might through have been a little to Clark. And uh, Clark couldn't take it cleanly. It bobbed up in the air. And Ben Duckett tried to dive underneath it. Now, whether he's just reacting normally as you would, or whether there was a little bit of bat involved. Not sure, we're not sure. There's Harrison in again, and uh, this time it's defended. Didn't seem to be outright 100% disappointment. Oh, crikey, we've missed a wicket, but they seem to be desperate to catch that ball before it hit the ground. Absolutely. I'm not mistaken, that might well be their third match. 
So one over left in the session. It's going to be Lyndon James. Not sure about that. Come back for one over before the, the break. Lyndon, hope he's had uh, sufficient notice to get himself loose. Earlier five overs, two maidens, none for ten to the fella today that was dismissed. Final ball before lunch for 96. He's going to be bowling the final ball before T. There's Rob Jones on 37. Jones has now faced 80 deliveries. Done a good job since coming in at number four as early as the second over. That stage was sure four for two. They're now 89 for three. And Lyndon James is going to be bowling from this Ratcliffe Road end for the first time in this innings. His first burst was from the far end. Here is uh, Lyndon James comes in and bowls short, pulled away onto the leg side, into the body of uh, Ben Slater. And there's no run. Five balls left. for Radio Nottingham in a minute. What are we hanging on for now? I'm not sure. Oh, maybe it was maybe it was pulled into the body of Ben Slater and Slater seems to be saying I'm OK but I think Asiba Mead, his captain, says no, you've been struck by the ball and of course the umpires, they're always on red alert if a player was struck by the ball so um, I think they're going to get the physio out there. Now in these instances, when we're so close to T I, I never really understand why common sense doesn't take over and they say Look, Ben needs just the physio just to come out and check that he is OK. He's had the ball pulled into his body at pace. Can the physio come? Uh, can the physio check him out? Meanwhile, the rest of us will... They're absolutely no interest at all in us having a, a, a break on time, David. That's what's happening. Well, I, 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 mean, I, I don't think that... I don't know if that's it or not. I think this is the Worcestershire 12-man um, coming on with a drink. That's certainly not the uh, not the Knotts physio. But if that is what it... Yeah, they all, all seem to be... Just checking Ben Slater. And here comes uh, Phil Tranter, the Knotts physio, so that's what it was for. But crikey, just wouldn't it have made sense? Bring a substitute fielder on, finish the over, give him a once over in the dressing room to make sure he's okay. Well, not even that. We'll go and all have tea and, you know. As I just mentioned a moment ago, we'll see. 89 for three. We'll check in with the cricket across the road from here today. Dave Bracegirdle is watching Nottinghamshire against Worcestershire. Well, frustratingly, Charlie, we're in the final over before tea and uh, we're all being held up whilst the Knotts physio checks out Ben Slater. He's in there close on the leg side and the ball has just been uh, pulled on the bounce into him. Slater clearly said he's OK, but the umpires have insisted that he's checked out. They could have trooped off five minutes ago and gone for tea with Worcestershire 89 for three. It's been a session very much of two halves. Knotts picked up wickets right at the start of it through Dylan Pennington and Luke Fletcher, then a long and lengthy partnership between Cashy Fally and Rob Jones, which has just ended. Dylan Pennington, who's bowled terrifically well against his former county, got Ali caught down at third man by Jack Haynes for 40. Earlier in the day, Knotts 399 all out. Lyndon James frustratingly out. Last ball before lunch for 96. But Knotts will feel they've got the better of it at the moment. Worcestershire 89 for three. Thank you, Dave. Ball by ball commentary. And uh, for those of you without the pictures, just listening to me talk, you've not missed anything at all. Ben Slater still saying he's absolutely OK. And now Phil, Trent, uh, Phil Tranter, the Knotts physio, makes his way off back to the dressing room. And presumably everybody else will go and follow him in just a moment when uh, the session finishes. Five balls away. It gives me just enough time for those of a, a Worcester persuasion that it's one all in the FA Vars. The biggest games in the club's history. Worcester City are one all with Great Waker. And Dave, you're delighted that you've uh, been updated with that. I very much hope that uh, Worcester City get through. As uh, this is short, pulled away behind square on the leg side, and they'll take a single 90 for three. I think the last time Bots played at New Road was when there was all the trouble for the the rugby club. They were um, going through some pretty lean and bleak times and. 
um, remiss of me as I don't follow rugby union, but did those bleak times continue <laughs> to this Look, day? And... Worcester Warriors are no more. Yeah. So the, the, the football club, until the last time, it was a, a year away from running out of money and going out of business. The rugby club had gone, and Worcestershire were in, well, actually, financially kind of off the field, reasonably well looked after. But, you know, it's problems with new, new road needs developing anyway really facilities need updating and of course with the with the flooding that's now so frequent that uh, something will have to give there so i know it's uh, non-league football and all but having a, a worcester side being successful and the possibility of some silverware the, the city couldn't have to do with a happy story I'll, I'll say say for that and the cricket club are actually doing a very good job of flying the flag for professional sport um, not just in the city of worcester the whole county of course um, with the promotion last year. This and, might uh, just be the up. longest over of the season, and I don't mean here at Trent Bridge, I mean of the season. Unbelievable. I bet this over started 12 minutes ago, and we've had two balls in it. Anyway, here's Lyndon James in now, nice and full. Um, I don't know what all the uh, animation was about. That seemed to be nine inches away from off stump. Lyndon James didn't uh, engage in it, but maybe it's just a bit of kidology out there trying to convince Adam O's that you can't shoulder arms to Lyndon James because he's got the capacity to just jag the ball back nine inches and knock off the top of off stump 90 for three it'll be good if it happens from the, the knots perspective halfway through the longest over of the season here's Lyndon James in again to Adam O's down the leg side taken by the tumbling clock but nobody bar me slightly for a second question whether there was a thin tickle on it. Adam O is walking, almost falling off balance. Down the leg side, he uh, tried to tickle it away and didn't get anything on it. But again, a really decent non-fussy take by Joe Clark. Two balls left. Linton James bowls. Adam Hose nudges it back to the bowler. So the session began with Worcestershire starting their second innings, uh, third ball of this innings, Gareth Roderick given out LBW by Luke Fletcher, umpire Ben Debenham at this end, sending him on his way, naught for one, didn't get any better as the start of the second over, Jake Libby ran the first ball from Dylan Pennington away for two, second one I think uh, might even have been half in his mind that he was looking to run it away again. A thick outside edge, well taken at third slip. Diving one-handed catch by Calvin Harrison for two. That was four for two. Cashy Valley played nicely for his 40 as the session ends. Good catch by Haynes from the bowling of Pennington. Saw him off with a score 82 for three. Eight more have been added and eventually the over comes to an end. Worcestershire 90 for three here at T. We'll have a 20-minute break and then... When we return, the visitors will pick up. The floodlights are on, the dark clouds overhead. Um, just makes us wonder if we might get through to the end, but if we do, there are 32 overs remaining. Hope you'll come back and join us for them.
Hello everybody, welcome back to Trent Bridge for the final session on day two here of this Vitality County Championship Division 1 game between Nottinghamshire and Worcestershire. Nottinghamshire bowled out at lunch on day two for 399, so the afternoon session saw Worcestershire begin their reply 90 for three at T, having lost Jake Libby for two, Gareth Roderick for naught and Cashy Valley. For 40, two wickets to Dylan Pennington, one to Luke Fletcher with Rob Jones and Adam Hose just about set to resume their innings. Jones came in at number four in the order. He's 38 not out. Adam Hose is uh, only at the crease for the last 15 minutes or so of the session. He's five not out. Going to get underway by the looks of it with some leg spin from Calvin Harrison. I'm Dave Bracegirdle from BBC Radio Nottingham. We'll have uh, the Blaze fast bowler Grace Ballinger with us in uh, the fullness of time. And also here, ready and uh, about to come in off his long run for the first over after tea from BBC Hereford and Worcester. First time at Trent Bridge, Jim Dale. Yes, it is my first time. My first tea at Trentbridge. Excellent scones. Oh, my goodness. Jam and cream. So the long run-up will be a, be a casual amble, rather like the leg spinner. Who's going to be uh, getting us underway after the break? It is Calvin Harrison. And here he goes. And he, nice length there. Good start. Not a huge amount of turn there. But inviting the batsman forward, and Jones obliges him. It's uh, met with a full face, pushed back down to Harrison, who's straight back into it. Next delivery in. And uh, it's just jammed down on the ball there, and it spun back towards the stumps. But it was uh, watching, watched by Jones, made sure it didn't uh, didn't upset the timber. Just put a boot in away. And uh, we'll go again. One slip in place. A man on the drive on the leg side. A bit shorter this time, and it's just pushed back to the bowler gone almost wintry hasn't it the breeze has picked up it's uh, dropped a few degrees as well and slate gray clouds mm. above our heads lights beaming here floodlights are on as harrison comes in and uh that's well bold he's uh scratching his chin there is harrison he liked that that didn't come off the middle of the bats a little bit of little bit of movement but the rotations you get as a as a leg break bowler gives you a little bit of dip as well and he comes a bit too short that time, just onto the back foot and punches that into the gap at cover point and the, the man in the deep does the fielding, so it will be a single. Yes, I, um, I've i I've seen a, a, a bit of him in white ball cricket on the TV, admittedly, Dave, but I, I like this lad a lot. He's got so much to offer. Harrison. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So Adam Hose, another fabulous white ball cricketer, getting his chance in the uh, longer form of the stuff with Worcestershire. Short sleeves, and the, you can see his sleeves there, just, uh, billowing in the wind. Mm. As it's uh, quite blustery. You can see the flags in the far end there. Wind changing direction every moment or two. But he uh, safely negotiates the end of Harrison's over. And Worcestershire 91 for three, and Luke Fletcher is back. Six overs in a hard-working spell. Very threatening earlier on as well. Took the wicket of uh, Gareth Roderick. Caught him flat on the crease. LBW. Yeah, Notts fans will be delighted to see Luke Fletcher back again. 35 years of age now. Did wonder last season how much uh, more cricket we'd see of Luke Fletcher. But he had uh, surgery on that injured ankle. Almost the first time in his career he's uh, had to spend any time out of the game through injury. Got himself fit over the winter. And he's good to go for match two. Here he comes to bowl two. Rob Jones drops this on the leg side. Decent opener after tea from Luke Fletcher. Been out there maybe ten minutes before the session started. With uh, Kevin Shine, the bowling coach, just turning his arm over Luke Fletcher. So it was... Uh, Clear and apparent to all here that he was going to get an early bowl. Five fielders on the offside, including two at slip. He's got a catching short mid-wicket in there again as uh, Fletcher bowls driven into the offside. And 
And there's no run. Ben Slater doing the fielding. He's not got his protective pads on Ben Slater anymore. He was uh, struck in the final over before T, and uh, the umpires, quite rightly of course, um, insisted that the physio came out, just checked him out, that he was OK, he was in there at short leg, and the ball was uh, hit down into the ground and then struck him somewhere. He clearly was saying he's OK, but the umpires wanted to check him out. Next ball from Fletcher, just thuds into uh, Jones' pads above the knee roll, I fancy, but it got him backing up a little bit there, and Rob Jones comes down and taps away at the offending part of the pitch that forced that ball to misbehave a little bit. He's had a good haircut recently as well, Luke Fletcher. Receiving the ball from Dylan Pennington who really put a shift in between lunch and tea. Here's Fletcher in again. Bowls up there, driven into the offside. It's a no ball from Fletcher. Second time he's overstepped. Effort ball, just trying to get it up there and uh, it plonks those big size 14 or 15s or whatever they are down there and asks the umpire where he was landing. 93 for three. We're in the 33rd over in the innings. We're going to get them all in. We'll have another 30 overs after this one. And as it's already half past four, we're very much on target for a 6.30 finish right now if uh, we get them all in as this is punched up to the not skipper, a Seba Mead at mid-off and there's no run. Maybe that the dark clouds are just starting to break up if we look to our right to the west. The uh, clouds that seem to be rolling in this direction are more of the white fluffy cotton wool variety rather than the grey stuff that forced the floodlights to come on around half an hour or so before tea as Fletcher's in again once more pushed into the offside and there's no run just the two runs so far from this over from the no ball one delivery left on the first ball didn't it got caught on the crease a little bit didn't he Rob Jones yeah. and since that he's been uh Looking to get on the front foot. Everything since then has been a, a drive into the offside, although stretching a little bit for him, feeling for the ball a little bit. But uh, no real danger at the moment, but Fletcher probes away. Here he comes again. Final ball of the over. Balls to Rob Jones, and Jones content to give Fletcher another dot ball. Would have been a maiden, but for... The overstepping, seven balls there right on the money. Worcestershire 93 for three. Knott's made 399. 105 yesterday from Joe Clark, 70 from Ben Slater. And this morning, Calvin Harrison out for 52. That's the first time he's reached 50 in first class cricket. It was all about whether Lyndon James could go on and reach his fourth century for Nottinghamshire, but he was dismissed four runs short out for 96. 93 for three. Well, Calvin Harris will continue from the Stuart Broad end. One slip, short leg as well, under the helmet. Got a man at uh, deep mid-wicket, a man pretty much on the fence at cover point. In he comes then. And it's just fended away from Hose. And uh, it's found its way down to third man. They'll take a couple. But not in control of that. Right at the top of the bat, not far off the gloves. But uh, it brings him on to seven. 18 balls faced. Fuller this time and uh, met with the full face of the bat. Field it at short cover by Hasib Hamid. There's going to be another change in field. Mm. This time the man under the helmet goes into the offside. And in comes Harrison again. Really full this time. And it's just clipped off his toes to the man at uh, a wide mid-wicket. Doesn't let things just 
go on indefinitely a see me does he's uh, he's always proactive he's always trying different field settings drag down this time and uh, cut away not with any real power though so it'll just be a single out to Lyndon James but that's it isn't it you've got to try and keep the batsman guessing try and get fielders in his eye line disrupt the concentration if they can another game of catch with the helmet as uh, Rob Jones is on strike one slip in place I think it's Slater in there I oh, know it's Ben Duckett apologies in comes Harrison then and that's just swept away good shot and that's going to be four powerful strike across the line despairing dive out in the deep and that brings up the 100 for Worcestershire. It's going along very nicely, Rob Jones. Into the 40s now. 43, Hose has 8. Sun's trying its level best to give us a decent end to the day, but uh, very blustery. In comes Harrison then. Last ball of the over. And cut away this time. Better connection. And there's some fielding to do. Lyndon James runs round. And uh, Worcestershire pick up two. So a profitable end to that over. 102 for three. And uh, Rob Jones moves on to 45. Doing a good job for his side here. As we do finally see that sun break through the clouds. Mm. Grace Ballinger back with us. The... Uh... Please. <laughs> Look at me when I call you a fast bowler. That's your role, isn't it? New yeah, it ball is bowler. These days. It is these days, yeah. Opening bowler. 102 for three. It's bread and lard for us all uh, this evening, I'm afraid. Um, no good on the old Grand National. I don't know if any of you out there uh, bagged the winner. Just saw the end of it, Grace and I, didn't we? I think they're still running hours. <laughs> <laughs> Disappointing. <laughs> Poor racing form for me of late. Told you earlier, they're just brown with a leg in each corner. In comes Luke Fletcher then. Two slips in play and Hose forward covers that nicely. Defensive shot into the offside. What's going on? Over at the city ground race, you got a score for me? I think it was two all last time. Uh, last time we heard. Certainly vocal over there, aren't they? We can can hear it from here. I'm sure Luke Fletcher will be keeping at least one ear open as in he comes then from the Radcliffe Road end and bowls and that's slightly back for length and pulled away and it will race away for four. That's a well-timed shot by Adam Hose. Bit of a half-jack from Luke Fletcher but Hose gets on top of that nicely and no field is in with any chance. Well guided to the boundary. Four runs. Uh, producer Kirsty. Well, she might not be. Uh, she might not be here for the rest of the day, and no doubt she's booking a um, a table in a fancy restaurant somewhere. I did say let us know if you back the winner. Producer Kirsty. The drinks are on her. Got the winner. Well done to uh, to Kirsty and to anybody else. It's a bit of a bit of a lottery, literally, isn't it? Trying to get the winner, but uh, well done. Fletcher in again, and this time straighter and off the outside, inside edge, I think, of Adam Hose's bat. One out, to, oh, no, two out to square. Good running from the two. Champagne and caviar, no doubt. It's your normal Saturday night, isn't it? <laughs> Grace? Not so big on the caviar. All the champagne come to that. Oh, really? Give me a nice steak and kidney pie and a pint of lager then, <laughs> <laughs> a carling is that what you go for no I like the one that has a Belgian origin Luke Fletcher no. in again and good areas defensive shot by Adam Hose rhymes with smelly car tours it's a good job it's not named that that would be a tough <laughs> ask for the marketeers isn't it <laughs> We've called it Smelly Cart Horse. What can you do for us? Oh. That's what I'd normally have if, uh, if we're going out for a little sip of something. 
in bounds Luke Fletcher. Right arm over and pushes back Adam Hose. Back foot punch to mid wicket, no run. When we go abroad, we, we're not so fussy, are we? we you know, what, what do you want to drink? You generally say two beers or a, a beer, or, <laughs> don't you? When you when when you go abroad, especially if you've got a wristband on, the old uh, all inclusive. <laughs> what would you like to drink? Well, two beers and a wine, please, or, or whatever it is. I mean, here, or, or what would you like? And you get twenty questions, don't you? Never ordered a beer in my life, and this one's short and. Attempted to be cut away from Adam Hose. It was short and straight, but he doesn't quite manage to find the gap. End of the over was 108 for three. Just don't believe you. I don't drink beer. I don't like it. In fairness, there's plenty of time. You know. <laughs> no, I, I drink other things, just not beer. It's just not my preference. The worrying thing is you've not bought a round then, because I'm sure somebody that you knock about with would uh, would want a beer. Oh, um, yeah, obviously. I, uh, <laughs> don't be... You um, said you've never ordered a beer. Don't be painting me as a <laughs> someone who skips around. Very blustery out there. In comes Harrison again from the Stuart Broad end. An attempted sweep again. Claiming for a stunt here. Joe Clark really likes it. Umpire unmoved. But it was a, a false shot there. And rather an elegant one from Rob Jones. Pete, the inside of the bat. Quick work there from Joe Clark to whip the bails off. Yeah, it's a bit out of character with Joe Clark as well. He's absolutely adamant that he's got his man there. Absolutely adamant. It's always the worst one to get. The first ball of the over, because you, you're always reliant upon the umpire having a bit of a look. As... Sweep this time. Hit hard to the man out in the deep who uh, fumbles it, but... Uh... It was hit to him so quickly that there was only ever really a chance for a single. Five yards either side, it might have been interesting, but uh, it might be a let off there. When you're that close as a keeper as well, and you're that adamant, it's hard to argue yeah. against it when you've got an umpire that's, you know, the nicest way possible, like yeah. 20 yeah. metres back. So uh, that's one for the replays. But it means that we're still three down, 109 mm. on the board. Hose then facing Harrison. As an oh, I thought there was an edge. There was bounce taken by Joe Clark up round his armpits. Certainly went, didn't it? Really went a long way, and uh, as you say, a bit of bounce just over the shoulder of the bat. Oh, that's what you really want, isn't it? Tall spinner, bit of bounce too short that time it's pulled hard but straight at the man at mid wicket gets a half stop to that does Ben Slater which means they can go through for a single and things mm. just heating up a little bit here because there's that bounce when you're trying to draw a batsman forward and often a little bit of bounce brings the edge in play a slip is there for just that Jones back on strike having a little look around he's a, he's checking out the leg side boundary the man on the 45 has gone back up bit too short, rocks onto the back foot does Jones punches it into the offside, man in the deep will do the fielding, another single so ticking along, Jones moves on to 47 now and he will hog the strike too because that's the end of the over, Worcestershire are 111 for 3, if you're superstitious do what you have to do to get through the next run <laughs> and I imagine we'll oh, so my apologies, still one more ball to come hose on strike that's uh, chopped away. And again, Lyndon James will be in business. They'll look for a second, which that's yeah, good running as well. Not a great throw, if we're honest. So Nelson was easily avoided. I miscounted, but that is the end of the over. And we'll assure 113 for three. Elsewhere in Division 1, Kent now 156 for one. That's at Chelmsford. Essex piled on the runs there. 530 for seven declared. Uh, 82 for Daniel Bell Drummond. How did he not ever play for England? Fabulous player, I think. Down at uh, Southampton, Hampshire made 367. Lancashire in reply, 146 for two. Keaton Jennings, another really high-quality player, is 49 not out. Luke Wells made 55 there for the Red Rose. It's going to be Luke Fletcher to continue. Give you the other scores in just a second. Fletcher passed on by Debenham and a uh, bit of a... 
loose flail from Jones on 47. He won't want to throw it away now. Sorry, 291 for five. They've just taken the lead over Somerset, who made 285. Dominic Sibley out for 100. Uh, ben Folks is currently at the crease. He's 34 not out. And at Edgbaston in Division 1, Warwickshire, 698 for three declared. Durham are 122 for two. Alex Lees is 69 not out for the northeastern county. 113 for three here. This is pushed to point. Division 2. They're into uh, the third innings of the match already in Cardiff. Glamorgan 237, Derbyshire 198. So holding a first innings lead of 39. Glamorgan a 20 without loss in their second innings. Going well. Yorkshire made 326 at Bristol. Gloucestershire 248 for nine in reply. At Leicester, Leicestershire 338, Sussex 218 for four in reply there. Chiteshwa Pajara is at the crease, 18 not out as uh, this is steered into the offside. Century for Tom Haynes, but he's now out in that one. And at Wantage Road, where North Ants rattled up 552 for six declared, thanks to 261 from Emilio Gay and 113 from James Sales. Middlesex, 58 for one. They've lost Mark Stoneman for 12. 113 for three. There's the score here at Trent Bridge. With uh, two full days and 26 overs to go after this one, as Fletcher comes in from this Radcliffe Road end. Bowled all his overs from there. That one just kept a whisker low. Just dragging down the leg side, I fancy. Strikes. Jones on the pads. Partnership of 31. Knots next go to Taunton. I'm in Taunton next weekend. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. And then another away match in a fortnight's time. That's at Edgbaston. Which seems to be a ground full of runs at the moment. But of course it'll be a, uh, a Duke's ball. Not a Cookaburra ball when Knots go there. This is uh, played back past the bowler. No run, fielded by Pennington. Then Knotts have a week off, first week of May, the fifth round of matches, and then uh, three more during May before the T20 starts. For Worcestershire, they've begun with two away matches. Obviously a draw at Edgbaston last week, playing here this week, and then two matches at Kidderminster. So... Uh, if you want to tick off a fresh ground, I didn't play all that often at Kiddy. Wanted to go and watch as mm. Rob Jones just cuts this away down to third man, and that's Rob Jones 50, a battling innings from Jones. He's left what he's been able to, he's bobbed underneath what he's been able to, and he's uh, just kept the board ticking over, and Rob Jones, close season signing from Lancashire, goes to 51 not out from 105 balls, been at the crease for two and a half hours, hit four fours and a six, and you have to say very, very well batted. Really composed innings, isn't it? Understands the situation, knows his game really well, and uh, you have to say that he's not looked in too much bother. He has survived that body line session from Pennington, who looked to be aggressive and, you know, get after his ribs, and... Uh, Keeping things uh, ticking along as well. Not a bad lick. So, very mature responsible innings that from uh, from Rob Jones. Harrison's in to Hose. Hose is uh, got his forward defensive out. Big chap and he's got a good step down the pitch. Just block that out. Straight back to the bowler. Slip in. It's short extra cover, and again, just prodded back down the wicket. Plenty of encouragement for Harrison here from the fielding side. Leg spinner is in again. A little bit too short, cut away. There is a man out there, but he's going to have to do a bit of running. Looks like there'll be a comfortable two for Adam Hose. It's Lyndon James doing the work. Covers the ground well. Good throw in as well. But an easy two. Adam Hose has quietly moved on to 19. Doesn't seem like he's done an awful lot to get there. He's just all of a sudden... 
On 19, 119 for three the score. Harrison in. Again, fuller this time. Just dug out by Hose. Just playing within himself a little bit here. He's a, a dashing batsman, really. Cracking white ball player. Plays mm. all the way around the world for all kinds of franchise. He came to Worcester for the chance to play county cricket more. And he's getting that chance. And onto the back foot there. And punched into the offside. And uh, the not skipper is there. To tidy up, no run taken. Terrible mess of his trousers. To get those cleaned overnight. In comes Harrison again. Gives it a good rip. Bit fuller this time, bit more leg side. Just dropped into the leg side. No run taken. 119 for three. Yeah, where's number 54, Adam Hose? Can't get too many of those, but uh, Dan Christian, of course, who. Had uh, a very successful time here as the Knotts T20 skipper, the Outlaws T20 skipper, led them to both the 2017 and 2020 crowns. Dan Christian, he always used to wear number 54. Now retired. Fabulous player. Lyndon James had five overs to begin with from the Stuart Broad end. Then he came back for the last over before tee from this end, an over that took absolutely forever. Now he's replaced Luke Fletcher early into the evening session, so his figures are six overs, two maidens, none for eleven. Got twenty-five overs to go. Worcestershire going on at just over three and over, so uh, another eighty runs or so if they continue at this rate. Going to be round about two hundred runs on the board, Worcestershire Grace by close. How many wickets down? Five. There you had it. So you can head off out for your evening plans, your Saturday evening plans <laughs> uh, from Grace. 200 for five at Stumps. In comes Lyndon James then. And uh, that's on a length. Flirting with the off stump and Rob Jones just plays that back down the wicket. Did you manage one of those naughty cream scones downstairs? Mm. Yeah. Half of one. Half, only half. Yeah. Very difficult to eat those with any kind of uh, elegance. There's no dignity in that. It smears all over <laughs> the place, but thoroughly tasty. No need for the top <laughs> bit, in my opinion. No, it doesn't need a lid, does it? No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Well, you don't need just to eat it as a lid. You just have two halves. Yeah, uh, but then you've got a cream half and a jam <laughs> half, yeah. and then which one do you eat first? Oh, all the, the jam pearl. and creams on one side. Fallen apart says I'm absolutely loving watching Luke Fletcher keep turning round asking the Fox Road stand what the score is across the road. What are we waiting for now? We're ready. Well, moving the sight screen, Rob Jones wanted the, the sight screen moved a bit. They've obliged him. In comes Lyndon James. Nice straight drive. Lovely shot. There's a chase on, but he won't get there. That's going all the way to the boundary. Just over pitched and uh, dispatched. Lovely shot from Rob Jones. Hmm. Very nicely timed. Nice and straight. And what's James's response? He's in now. It's a bit too straight. Clift off his legs. Mm. This is more runs. This might run away for four as well. And it will do. It's full. It's straight. Just clipped off his pants. And it's gone fine. Back-to-back -back boundaries here. That just ups the run rate a little bit and gets that momentum going for Worcestershire. 127 for three now. Jones has 59. Getty goes back and does a bit of gardening. Starts prodding parts of the pitch. The ball wasn't anywhere near. Man on the drive either side. One slip in place and a backward point. James is in and it's just... Solid defensive Ooh. shot into extra cover. As uh, that, I mean, however close that helicopter is, it's just above our heads. That's noisy, isn't it? <laughs> Trying to play cricket here, guys. Come on. He's certainly not interested in finding out what the score was. Sometimes they go over very slow and you wonder if the, the pilot's just trying to get the angle to see the score off the scoreboard. But he was in a hurry, wasn't he? Yeah, I got tickets for this and they've made me uh. work. Just hover above the ground for a bit. Here comes James. Jones waits. And it's pushed on the back foot up on his toes there. Into the deep on the offside. There's a man there, though, so there'll be a, a comfortable single. 
Actually, looking skywards, I think we've got our first glimpse of a little bit of blue sky for the first time today. Which is a, it's a good omen, really, as we've still got 24 overs to get in. Still quite early in the season. I don't know how many club sides will have started today, perhaps one or two friendlies. Not sure too many leagues would have started yet, maybe one or two, but the majority will maybe start next week or the week after. James is in again. Bit too straight this time, worked off his legs. Adam Hose will pick up a single, and he'll keep the strike as well. That ends the over. 39 overs gone. Worcestershire 129 for three. Nice shot from the camera at our end of the ground, those of you watching the pictures. Just see that uh, blue sky over West Bridgeford Town Centre down there, where Grace, Grace goes and gets a coffee from. That I do. Too frequently, actually. So how many different coffee stops are there in West Bridgeford? Six or seven. Is that all? So you've... <laughs> <laughs> so you've started a blog on the different coffee stops in West Bridgeford and there's only six or seven. That's a hell of a lot of coffee shops for a high street, six or seven. But not enough really to have an in-depth study on them. Ah, it's not a blog, it's just an Instagram story. You got Instagram, Dave? A what? Instagram. <laughs> an Instagram story. What do you think? Can I go with no? Not a clue. <laughs> Calvin Harrison then to continue. This is a full delivery. Hose drives back to the bowler. Do you do that TikToky thing as well? No, I know TikTokies. <laughs> Not yet, anyway. As Harrison's in, and this is off the outside edge, and they think of racing the way for one. But Lyndon James round does an athletic dive. Presents any runs being taken. Worcestershire, 129 for three. Just shy of 40 overs. Ben Duckett in slip and Jack Haynes in short leg as Calvin Harrison's in. It's a low full toss and it's hoiked away mm. to mid-wicket and Matthew Montgomery can't get round with a dive in vain and that races away to the boundary. Sense of momentum just shifting towards Worcestershire here. Yeah, that'll have been... Uh pleasing for Adam Howes on it, nice low full toss that he punched away, he's been a couple of moments hasn't there, there was the uh, Matthew Montgomery um, as the 50 partnership comes up for the fourth wicket from 79 balls even split, Rob Jones 25 and Adam Howes 24 but uh, Matthew Montgomery threw down the stumps, they appealed for a run out, Joe Clark's appealed for a stumping Single out to the deep cover boundary, Dylan Pennington out there, all on his own. Both of those knots certainly gave the impression they were very confident that the decision should go their way, but didn't. Been uh, one or two that Nottinghamshire might feel have, have gone against them in this match. Harrison in and stopped by the wind. Mm. Jack Haynes certainly hung around a long time, couldn't believe his LBW. Lyndon James thought his, I'm sure he thought his was over waist high this morning, the full toss he got. Harrison in again, and slightly back for length and pushed into the offside. Quick single. Good running again from the Worcestershire pair. But I'm sure on the other side of things, Worcestershire, I'm sure there'll be one or two that happened during the course of the game that they feel perhaps might have gone their way that haven't. It's just the nature of sport, isn't it? Two slips in play then. Adam Hose is on strike. Harrison in, and that's cut off the back foot. Again, Pennington out there. Comfortable single. <sighs> it's finished in Essex. Was the City have lost 2 1? It's 2 all on aggregate. I think it goes straight to penalties. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Lyndon James is uh, going to continue a spell from the Ratcliffe Road end. 136 for three. Is Hose on the start strike. 26 not out. Is the coverage there on BBC Hereford and Worcester? There is. Trevor mm. uh, Trevor Owens, the uh, sports yeah, editor, yeah. 
he has he's done the job. It was uh yeah, it was supposed to be played last weekend. I was gonna be doing that game. But I'm very, very happy to be here. This is uh this is rather special. James is on his way in. Oh, his weights. Push back down the wicket. Yeah, it's that sweet spot where if you're a football and cricket fan, you get a couple of weeks of overlap. And uh as you mentioned with the Grand National, there's uh, there's plenty going on if you're a sports fan. Finished in a draw over the road. James in again. Hose just pushes it into the onside. Liam Patterson White does the fielding. No run taken. And quite a lot of excitement from the fielding side, considering that came quite clearly out the middle of the bat. Mm. Yeah. Honours even there between Nottinghamshire and aside from the West Midlands. What will happen this side of the road over the next two and a bit days? In comes James again then. Hose waits. Again, just jabs down on that into the leg side. Again, no run. Still trailed by 263 here, Worcestershire. But they have plenty of time. It's all about whether they have the inclination to stick about. And there's a. Uh, done a good job of keeping the scoreboard mm. ticking with the spinners, which is important. We're only three seamers. Got to get some miles into those seamers' legs. James in again. Hose weights. That's a firm push down the ground again to the captain. That's Eva Mead. Who's seen plenty of the ball? Yeah, I'd imagine if Worcester should get up to somewhere near or around 300, this uh, this will be racing headlong towards a draw, especially if there's some wet weather around on Monday, as Lyndon James is in again. Oh, that's a little short, but dragged down the leg side. Remains 136 for three. A draw for Nottingham Forest, a good day for Mansfield Town, a good day for Notts County, and it's not been a Hose bad day at 26. For in the county championship at Trent Bridge. It's Notts against Worcestershire. Day break here watching. Yeah, still 22 overs to go in the day here, Charlie. The uh, skies are uh, brightening all the time, first sight of any blue sky today, and Nottinghamshire could really do with picking up a couple of wickets here. As you say, it's not been a bad day. Notts got 399 disappointment in the fact that Lyndon James was dismissed. He was last out out for 96 he hit a full toss to mid wicket stood around he I'm sure felt it was above waist time should have been called a no ball but the umpires I think were ready for the lunch and off they went uh, he shared in a lengthy partnership with Calvin Harrison who passed 50 for the first time in his career so not 399 which I'm sure they'll feel is slightly above par especially when they had Worcestershire four for two a wicket for the returning Luke Fletcher one for Dylan Pennington but then Cashy Valley and Rob Jones dug in they were part just before T, Pennington getting the wicket of Cash Alley, and now Worcestershire 136 for three. This Cookerborough ball's gone soft. The wicket's not offering a great deal for the bowlers. Tough work for everybody out there, and the run scoring is fairly pedestrian. Worcestershire 136 for three. Thank you, Dave. Ball by ball. As I say, run scoring relatively pedestrian, only uh, just above three and over. Nice shot by Rob Jones down the ground. Takes him on to. 65, 140 for three. Just uh, took the opportunity there just to lift Calvin Harrison back over his head and uh, straight down to the advertising boards in front of the pavilion. Nice looking shot. There's Harrison in again to form a Lancashire player. He'll get another single here. He just stretched forward and just deflected it away through where a short leg would normally be fielding, where there were one in there, but there isn't. It's 141 for three. Worcestershire, 258 behind, but they're heading towards calmer waters almost with every over that passes as Harrison into his eighth. Now bowls and nicely defended by Adam Hose. 59 run partnership and still some quality players to come. Brett Dolivera and of course 
I think a lot of people looking forward to seeing Jason Holder. He's not had too much county championship experience. So the first time he's played against Knotts. Had a little spell a couple of years ago with North End. Single taken by number 54. This is uh, cut away onto the offside. And there's a single. I seem to think number 54, isn't it? Is it featured on a car or something? What was Herbie? Was Herbie number 54 or something? I think such? he was 53. There's Studio 54. Uh, that's it, yes. Um, uh, yeah, I used to go dancing there. Um, <laughs> 143 for three. I can't begin to tell you how much I need to see photos of that day. <laughs> no, I'd love that to have no, been a thing. No, that's New late York, 70s, wasn't it? Late what? 70s, hanging out with Andy Warhol. Oh, no, yeah, yeah. David Soul. Yeah, whenever I... Um, Whenever I go to Manchester, generally tweet, I'm in Manchester. Is, uh, does anybody know if the Hacienda is open tonight? And you always get somebody say, I think it's closed now, Dave. All well, the nightclubs are available. That one isn't anymore. 143 for three. Hoses on 27. Seem to give that a real old rip, Calvin Harrison. This like exaggeration of his uh, action as if he was trying to get extra purchase, but... Again, just another single. Gross on the board, 144 for three after 42. Hose, 28. Jones, 67. Libby made two. Roderick, naught. Cash Alley, 40. I keep saying it that way because that's the way it's written down. Libby first and then Roderick. But it was Gareth Roderick who was out in the first over without scoring. And From four for two, Worcestershire and their supporters must have feared the very worst. But Rob Jones and Cashy Fally steered them to calmer waters. And now Adam Hose... Is, uh, is doing the same. Again, the, the ball is being passed to the umpire and it seems as if it's not a case of just seeing if it goes through the gauge. It almost seems as if they're getting the scissors out just to keep snipping a bit off. Well, it's taking further inspection here from uh, Lyndon James and his skipper. Patterson White was having a good stare at it. Fletcher. Sorry, have we lost our stag party? Have they gone? A long gone. Has Lyndon James in, and this back for length attempted to be cut away by Hose, but doesn't quite get hold of it, and it's a single to Jack Haynes at the point. Yeah, stag party long gone. Smith Cooper stand looking a little bit more barren. Uh, fallen apart, says um, update on Luke Fletcher. He's absolutely buzzing with the fact that Gor Forrest got a point because Luton lost. Thank you, falling apart. In comes James again, and this one's straighter and driven beautifully. They will run a quick single to Luke Fletcher, who had to reach to his left to yeah, retrieve that. That was the thing, wasn't it? It was a long way down for the big lad, but even when he got there, it was with his uh, giant left paw, so he was never likely to throw the stumps down. No, I agree. Pretty safe single there. Brings Jones on to 60, 80s accelerated in the last half an hour or so as James in again this time to Adam Hose who defends to mid on and wait there no single to Fletcher this time and now once they've got the floodlights on they, they tend to leave them on but um, probably no need for them right now really oh I agree blue skies bright Summer inbound. Well, I think I'm okay. I think you're okay, Grace, but there's. In comes James <sighs> again, and a good delivery kept out by Adam Hose. But I think we've got a bit of a, a, a breakdown going on uh, to the right of the commentary box. My what? father, who is, uh, uh, of course, not <laughs> listening to us, he's listening to um, the other lot on Hereford and Worcester, because Worcester City, it's, it's gone to penalties, it's now sudden death in the penalties. <laughs> I'm worried about. I'm trying to figure out whether he's taking his heart medication. Oh my goodness! There's no need for that, is there? <laughs> Drama in the commentary box. Mm. Well, Birmingham City won three 0 and they're at the relegation zone. In comes Lyndon James, and this one back for length and pulled away into the gap at square leg by Hose. Good bit of field and done out on the rope. I think that's Dylan Pennington out there at fine leg with mm. the help of Matthew Montgomery prevents the boundary, two runs. I've never heard of great wakering, I have to say, before today. Mm. Me neither. And now we're casting spells on them as if 
we've hated them all our lives. Just, just, just so. That's it. Come on, just bring so the Jim, energy. Just so Jim isn't. Uh, I appreciate the moral support. Thank you, guys. James in again. Bowls in this one down leg side, and Hose tries to turn it, but no bat on it as Joe Clark does the glove work. End of the over. 20 left in the day if the light holds. Was to 148 for three. Yes. James through nine overs. Just wonder if Liam Patterson White might. Do and not, well, as I say that, I actually started saying it before he started loosening up, but he has just turned his arm over. Luke Fletcher's just popping off the field. I think it's Sammy King who's uh, coming back on. Lots of had two or three subs today. James Hayes, now oh, it's James Hayes, I think, who's uh, just herring onto the outfield and uh, being asked to. What no, is it? Sammy no, King. it's Sammy, it is Sammy. Yeah. Number one. His name's King. One works, doesn't it? This one is uh, swept down to number one. Otherwise, it is a gutsy call, isn't it? It seems like you're giving yourself a review, doesn't it? You've got to be sort of some sort of cocky, arrogant person to have number one on the yeah. back of your cricket shirt, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> Are you? You went number one. Yeah. That is a gutsy move. <laughs> Good on you, Grace. <laughs> arrogant indeed. <laughs> Hey, all the greats are. All the greats are. No, I'm not. That's why she's amazing, Grace. Well, I'll commentate then. As uh, this leg spinner is cut away into the offside for a single. Whose ends this? It's not mine. I just did Lyndon James's over. 150 up, 150 for three, Worcestershire. Need another 100 for a batting bonus point. Sure, I like the batting bonus points starting at 250. They always started at 200. Next one's pushed out into the covers, but the one I would change, send it this morning. The one regulation I would change is if you can score 500 in 110 overs, you should be able to get six points, or if you can score 550, you should be able to score seven points. There's an LBW shout, they're asking the umpire, and it's not been given by uh, Alex Wharf. That was Rob Jones. Just hitting round the ball. It must have been fairly close. Rob Jones has been very selective, very watchful, very careful. He's, uh, he's played the percentage game, not tried to run into too much difficulty, but it's a full pitch ball that he played all around. Umpire said not out. Here's Harrison in again. This time he backs away and cuts it out onto the offside. Definitely looks as if Jones is just trying to increase the tempo a little bit, whereas. He's played nicely up to this point. He's got to 70 now. No need to do anything different. Just keep going. Get yourself another 70 and another 70 after that. 151 for three. Brings Adam Hose back into the firing line. He's on 32. Jack Haynes has in, gone in close at silly point there. Or ridiculously silly extra cover, whatever you want to call it. His shadow is almost on the toes of Adam Hose, who... Just pushes it back to the bowler and another one slips by. 151 for three after 44 overs. We've got 19 overs left. And Nottinghamshire, from their perspective, looking for ways to break this partnership, which is now worth 69. But Worcestershire will be more than content just to keep the board ticking over and try and get to some, certainly with no more than one more wicket down this evening. Andy Eason says uh, the Magpies, as Notts County, rode their luck today, but three points in the bag. Thank you, Andy. It is going to be LPW to uh, come back on for his second spell. He was a little expensive from the other end. Um, and it did seem a little bit needlessly expensive. It, didn't have anybody stopping the single on the leg side, so Worcestershire just kept gathering five, six and seven runs and over, didn't they, without having to work too hard for it. This time, he's bowling from our end of the ground, the Ratcliffe Road end, and they have got a Seba Mead in at mid-wicket. As in comes Patton White, first delivery, good, gives it a tiny bit of flight, and Jones forward. 
he bowled. He bowled a little bit quicker than normal, I thought, in his first spell. I haven't obviously haven't seen him in this side for a while, but I just thought it was a bit too quick. Right? It seems like he's given it a bit more of a chance here, as that one is just miscued. Yeah, I mean, that 45. wasn't... You know, that wasn't the purest of shots from Rob Jones. And like I said in the last over, it just seems as if he's, I don't know, just having a little bit of a mental tussle with himself as to whether he's doing the right thing or not. That just seemed a, a bit of a rash shot again. Mentioned it in the last over. Just needs to calm down a little bit. And somebody, maybe Adam O's at the other end, just needs to say, playing absolutely brilliantly. Just settle down, mate. Push six back and get going again. Patterson White, left arm round the wicket. It's a play and a miss, and I don't know if it's a shout. It's a shout of the closest mm -hmm. ball. Joe Clark takes the stumps, but don't think there was much of a chance for stumping. It looks a good delivery. Nicely Patterson flighted, White. wasn't it? You were just mm. saying about his speed. I think he held that one back. Beautifully flighted. Absolutely. Certainly looking a lot more aggressive here. Liam Patterson White from the Ratcliffe Road end in just three deliveries of his second spell. Slip in play then as Patterson White is in and again flight it up and Hose covers this one nicely, gets forward to the pitch. Some quiet um, field movements made by Asiba Mead. He moved uh, Sammy King just two yards to his left there, knew exactly where he wanted him, got his fielder in the spot he wanted. Patterson White's in again and again Hose forward much like the last into defence. Good over then so far to start his new spell, Patterson White, just one run for, from it. Final delivery as he's in and bowls. And this time on the back foot, Hose attempts to punch it straight, but good stop of his own bowling and a good start again from Patterson White. Worcester 152 for three. Yeah, by some distance, that was his best over. Seemed like he'd got a better field and, as you said, slowed his pace up just a touch but also flipping it round it, it did look as I said as, as if Rob Jones just got a little frenetic and when he's 71 not out and have played as well as he has it's, it's going to be a real shame if he just tosses his wicket away just had a word there with Adam Hose and I hope Adam just said calm down Rob just calm down it'll come to you fresh into his Worcestershire career Rob Jones love to get a three figure score here and there's one for the taking and in comes leg spinner Harrison, and Rob Jones just rocks back, cuts that away, just in front of square on the offside, takes a single, I've regained my composure after finding out Worcester City have lost on penalties in sudden death. And uh, uh, that's heartbreaking as the Worcester City season ticket holder, and even more so as that little glimpse of possibility of commentating on a game at Wembley has evaporated. Well, just think of the value you got for your £5. Hey, come on now. It was £8.50 and you know it. <laughs> Anyway, there's a small matter of a cricket match in play here. So Harrison's in again, fuller this time. A bit more air driven nicely to wide mid-off. They take a comfortable single. And Hose continues on his merry way. He's on to 33. It also ends a 25-game winning streak as well. It's the first time they've lost. The first time they haven't won a game in 2024. But there we are. Harrison's in again. Again, rocks back, cuts away. Man in the deep, one more to Rob Jones. I won't talk about football anymore, I promise. But I am feeling it, I will be honest with you. Uh, so. Another one to Rob Jones. Hose back on strike, 155 for three. Trail now by 244. Two slips in place, looking for a... A breakthrough here, not again, there's a little tinkering with the field. Man on the leg side comes from behind square to just in front of it. And that's dollied up in the air, can they reach it? It's just dropped short. Two slips, there was a man at point, there was a man at extra cover. There was a genuine edge, just dollied up. Field is set for a miscue. And uh, mm. it just didn't carry. It's a little warning there to Adam Hose. Harrison in again, and that's a too short, but he's uh, queued that up in the air. This is going to be caught and bowled, and is a miscue the delivery before. 
This one was shorter and Hose looked to dispatch it away to the deep mid-wicket boundary. But he's made a terrible mess of that and he's got to go for 33. <sighs> I'm not surprised it's wicked. I'm surprised it's, uh, it's Hose and not Jones. I, I don't know. They've just forgotten all the good things they were doing up to tea and for the first half an hour after tea and, and they've just taken on some shots that they needn't take on. Um, that's a tame, tame end for Adam Hose. Went uh, many mile into the sky and Calvin Harrison, who we earlier saw catch a pigeon, um, almost literally, um, in getting rid of Jake Libby. That was a simple court and bowl for him. 33. Adam Hose made the crease for 75 minutes, 65 balls he faced, three fours, 155 for four. That's disappointing from a Worcestershire point of view. Knotts will be absolutely delighted. Um, I, I, just, I just don't know the, the change in mindset. But whether they, between them, decided, let's try and take the spinners down as the, um, I mentioned it before, T, the, the, um, the sheet, the tarpaulin, um, over by the uh, William Clark stand is again just blown up in the air it's pegging down 155 for four as Brett D'Olivier the Worcestershire captain makes his way out to the middle another centurion in this round of matches I don't know how many that is 10, 11, 12, don't know, lost count but uh, Daniel Bell Drummond has reached his 100 for Kent at Chelmsford and at the other end Ben Compton latterly of this parish is 75 not out Kent 199 for one replying to Essex is 530 for seven. Another Division One game, of course. Uh, here then, 155 for four. Harrison's got his first wicket. Bit of a gift. Yes, I mean the the approach Worcestershire have taken in, in recent years, certainly under the stewardship of uh, Dolivera as captain, is to be aggressive. It was it was a short delivery, wasn't it? But. Um, in the end, it was just poor execution. I don't think it was. The, I don't think it was actually too bad an idea to try and uh, dispatch it. I just think it's a poor execution. But um, Harrison's always in the game with bat, with ball, and in the field. And we have two slips. We've got a man on the drive on the onside. We've got a man in close under the helmet on the offside, and that just fizzes through. Dolivero doesn't offer a shot. Not too far away, but as uh, as Dave says, you just feel that Worcester they don't want to find themselves in bother in this uh, in this game on the last innings. You just bat themselves into a safe position, and you feel like that's that was there for the offing. But if the approach is to be to try and be positive when you can, you have to accept that sometimes it doesn't go your way, and it's both Kashif and. Uh, Adam Hose, who have perished, trying to play expansive and aggressive shots. Well, Grace has got a wicket. She said it'd be 200 for four at Clet. No, was it 200 for four or 200 for five? It's 200 for, for five, five, wasn't yeah. it? Well, you said 200, <laughs> I just said five down. But I have a feeling, Grace, that one more wicket in the next few overs and we could even be six down. Who knows? Who knows? Certainly not me. And <laughs> <laughs> just something that I'm learning quickly don't know much at all as Liam Patterson White will continue from the Radcliffe Road end after a promising start to his second spell as he bowls and kept out nicely by Jones who probably needs to bat a bit more within himself. Well you'd like to think he's thinking crikey that could have been me that could have been me I've lost a wicket can't lose two in quick succession Still slip in play as that cut off the back foot and fielded nicely by a very backward point. I think it might be Lyndon James. It is number eight on the back of his shirt. Two dots to start the over. Fletcher out at long on. Calvin Harrison at long off as this one is left alone outside the off stump. Got four out for Jones. 73 not out deep kind of cover point long on long off and a deep square leg or maybe even a square mid wicket as this one is left and doesn't miss the stumps <laughs> by too much at all head in the hands Liam Fadson White has a smile on his face and you just sense knots are a bit more up for this they're definitely up after that last wicket yeah got to be haven't they got 
want to do. 16 overs left. They've picked up the run rate since spinners have been bowling in tandem and that one's short and too short and cut into the offside but there is a fielder out there so it will just be the one run out to Ben Slater as Don Vera takes his guard for the first time from this end mm. played against his granddad back in the mid 80s oh I meant the to great, ask you uh, the great Basil, yeah. What, what's with the playing for Italy? Are you Italian? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> no, more so than, no more so than Gareth Berg or Jay Dernbach, I'd imagine. That's right, Wayne Madsen as well. He played for Italy last year. Patterson White in again, and this one does turn, and Jadavir is on the back foot in defence, so talk us through it, Steve, Bryce. Steve Crawley says somebody needed to wind hose in. Yeah, very good, uh, Steve. End of the over, 156 for four. I was in the Air Force in Italy and um, I played cricket, I played a lot of cricket, played a lot, a lot of cricket and um, I had an invitation to play for an Italian 11 against a touring England side. Um, on the island of Sardinia and uh, there was a cricket cruise there was a, a cruise liner called the Canberra and they used to advertise on the back of the cricketer magazine um, tour for cricketers hosted by celebrities etc as Harrison comes in and bowl and this is defended and this particular one was hosted by Bob Willis who we've, who we've mentioned today and Bob Taylor the former Derbyshire wicket keeper and they were staying in Sardinia and uh, they wanted to play some decent opposition, so um, uh, an Italian 11 was put together. And I was asked if I'd play. So uh, I made up the numbers. This, uh, this next delivery from Harrison strikes somewhere. I thought it, <laughs> I think it was on, actually on the elbow of Rob Jones. And. Um, Anyway, I got a few runs. I got 60 out of 85 all out. Something oh, like, I had to some, mention that one. Something like, well, you asked. <laughs> uh, 156 for four. The next ball. And this is pulled away on the leg side for four. That was short. That was the one that got the wicket in the last over. But Rob Jones has played this better than Adam Hose. Um, and so... Oh. Yeah, well done, Dave. Well well done. Um, how long have you been in Italy? I, by then, I'd been in Italy nearly nearly six years. And in 1992, it was the first European Cup for the Associate Nations. This one's cut away onto the offside by Rob Jones, and he'll get a couple here, taking him up to 80, 162 for four. He's got going again here, Rob Jones, after uh, Adam Hose left in the uh, last over. Anyway, to cut a long story short, as that sheet goes up and the ground staff are out there, just now, now trying to tether it. It's a little worried that that might uh, disappear out of the ground and to be never seen again. That's, uh, that's going to be <laughs> quite a problem for the ground staff as the next ball is, is blocked. And the qualifications for the first European Cup in 1992 for the Associate Nations uh, that entered um, was that you must either hold a passport of the country that you're going to represent or must be able to prove that you'd lived in that country for five years. And I'd lived in Italy for six years. And down the track comes Jones, he's lifted Harrison up into the air and straight over the ropes down into the lower tier of the Hound Road stand, not three, four rows back. Gentleman goes and gathers it from behind one of the white plastic bucket seats for six. That's a lovely shot. And Jones on to 86. He really got going in that over with uh, a dozen runs. 168 for four. Um, I've got a nip next door to do an update, well, I, but I, I want to find out more about the cricketing facilities in Sardinia, Dave. We'll come back to that momentarily. <laughs> I'm going to go and cheer no, everyone I've, up. I've told it a thousand times, but to cut a long story short, of all the places that the 1992 European Cup could be held, um, just think of all the wonderful places right the way across Europe. We were all based at Worksop College in Nottinghamshire. <laughs> <laughs> 
so I came back here. They were played at all the club grounds around Nottinghamshire. So uh, I came back and I played seven, eight, uh, seven or eight games for uh, Italy in the 1992 European That's a Cup. Heartbreak. There, yeah. Why couldn't it just be the Caribbean, eh? <laughs> well, we'll see that well-known European yeah, nation. Yeah, that well-known European nation. There we are. Here's <laughs> Liam Patterson White. Here's Grace Ballinger. Patterson White then into his eighth over. Not too many for the left arm spender today, and it's a good delivery. Bringing Donavira into defence. Yet to get off the mark, Skipper Worcester. I've got somewhere. If I can just very quickly bring it up, I'll, uh, I'll retweet it. Um. Patterson White in again, and relatively full delivery, but Donavira goes back and cuts it, but can't get past Lyndon James at point. You'll have to keep talking, Grace. I can't do 25 things at once here. I'm just trying to find this photograph of... Uh... It's Patterson White's in again, and much like the last forward into defence. She's found slightly better rhythm from this end. A sense, Liam Patterson White. Back in the side for a first time in a while. Short leg, still in play. Ben Duckett as he has been for the entire inning, still in at Sliff, and this one is punched into the offside and a good bit of fielding by the Nottingham skipper. Prevents any runs out to the cover boundary. Uh, I've just, uh, on at Brace Cricket, I've just retweeted a picture of me in my Italian colours um, with Bob Willis and, uh, and Bob Taylor. Another dot ball, another defensive stroke from Donavira. Which one are you left? <laughs> you must know Bob Willis, surely. <laughs> <laughs> Bob Willis Trophy. That's played for Warwickshire, no? Yes. Patterson White's in, and this time, good foot movement by Dolivera to punch a good delivery into the offside as he gets off the mark. Yeah, skipper uh, Dolivera. We'll keep strike, he's on one. Rob Jones on 86. Great start to life as a Worcestershire player then for Rob Jones. Had a really good time of it in the last over against uh, Harrison. But it's going to be Dolly Vera to face him. Another update for BBC Radio Nottingham. Just a second, 169 for four. Worcestershire trail by 230. Follow on mark. Still uh, around about 80 or so runs away, but you wouldn't imagine Worcestershire would need to fear that. Harrison, who only comes in off about three strides, pulls away. Whether Dolivera wasn't ready or whether the uh, gusty conditions caused him to pull out, but here goes Harrison in again to bowl to Dolivera. Down on the Sweet, the ball balloons up on the leg side. Half an appeal there from those not in line, but neither keeper or bowler were interested. 169 for four. Umpire at that far end is the former England seamer, Alex Wharf. There's a single taken by Dolly Vera. Jones was quick to get down to this end. He wants more of the strike now. He wants to feed whilst. There's uh, some to have a little go at. Not respond by dispatching three fielders on the leg side, including a long on, just in case he um, decides to take the aerial route again. In fact, on the leg side, there's one anywhere he wants it. So it would be a little silly here if Rob Jones decides to take the aerial route again. He can have a single anywhere he wants it on the leg side. and. Just pushes this back to the bowler. One seventy for four. They're not quite that good. Um, what we do have is the cricket over the road this afternoon. Nottinghamshire against Worcestershire. Dave Brace Girl is watching day two. Yeah, Worcestershire now one hundred and seventy for four. Thirteen overs left in the day. Not so been gifted a wicket since I last spoke to you, Charlie. Really, Adam Hose just couldn't resist having a little bit of a go at Calvin Harrison, the leg spinner. The ball went straight up in the air. Harrison can almost literally catch pigeons. A wonderful catcher was.
himself. He'd made 33 in reasonable time, was holding knots up. At the other end, wonderful knot this from Rob Jones. He moved in the close season from Lancashire. He's 87 not out. Brett Dolivier, the skipper, fresh at the crease, is on four. 13 overs to go. Knots made 399. Worcestershire 173 for four. Thank you very much, Dave. The ball by ball. Complicated, Dave. Dolivier has four. One ball left in the 50th over. It's also the 12th over that Calvin Harrison has sent down. All from the Stuart Broad end. Ball's now a little push into the offside. Thought for a moment that they were going to risk a chancy single. It was pushed straight to a Seber Mead. End of the over, 173 for four. So I thought you <laughs> I thought you got pearls of wisdom there, Jim. You were, pearls of no you pearls of oh, <laughs> no. I I mean <laughs> playing in Sardinia. I need it. I mean a, a proper cricket wicket. Um, it was a matting wicket in the middle of a sports stadium. Um, the outfield. You know, one of these. Um, no, it was caught. They made a, a decent enough job of it. Yeah, it was. It was okay. It's okay. It was okay to play on. And in terms, I, I mean, I imagine that the food at, at lunch. Tea, yes, everything else yes. would have been pretty special. It Any wine to keep you going? Um, I don't recall. This was this was 1992, as I say. Don't recall. That's Patterson White is in. That's chopped away, but only to the man at uh, backward point. I'm sure there would have been a little tipple of something afterwards. Well, what a lovely thing to do. And uh, Patterson White is in again. And... Uh, just solid forward press there from Jones, who has heeded the advice of Dave Bracegirdle, and uh, he is uh, being much more watchful. Pick your battles. And Patterson White, the little flick of the legs that he does at the start of his run. And this is pushed nicely down to long off, which is quite wide. It's an easy single, which brings the captain on strike. I think we played eight games, beat Greece, lost to everybody else. So um, I think Germany won it overall um, that first year. Um, there was Spain and Portugal, Malta, um, Greece, Austria, France. So you know, central mainland Europe. This one's just carved away, just backward of point by Dolivera. He'll pick up a single as well. And um, and then at the end of the tournament, we all went down to Lords for a very plush dinner and all the, uh, the presentations and the ceremony and what have you. So it was uh, it was a good, I don't know, whatever it lasted, 10 or 12 days. Nice, nice little one to have on the CV and bring out at parties. Another one drilled down the ground there. Easy single. Not that I've ever brought it out at a party. Um, Definitely but, have. But uh, no, no, just, you know, it's, it's there. It happened. Well, look, it's, it's what a lovely thing to have um, elite cricketers aside me here. I feel cons <laughs> painfully outgunned. The uh, winning post versus the... Um, Farrier's Arms pub match <laughs> that I excelled in seems uh, somewhat redundant here. And uh, was just uh, pushed through there by Patterson White, and he had to be on his uh, toes there. Dolivera keeps that one out and sends it to the offside. Yeah, it's not but good radio this, Jim, but I, ju I just showed Grace this. That's the, the picture of that game I was talking about. Bob Willis on the right hand side of the picture, Bob Taylor on the left, and wow. me, me next to Willis. That's, that's superb. Uh, that's superb. That's me in my, uh, in my Italian top. And there's Willis in the the um, MCC colours as well. Yeah. The uh, the, uh, the England would tour in. Yeah, like I say, I, I, I got a few that day out of a, a very meagre total. So um, my uh, my performance, I think, was exaggerated a little bit by the fact that everybody else got uh, a single figure score, or or not even that many. But 177 for four. Was there's great, no great iron fun. team, Dave. No, but there's no, loads. Right, no, there's no. loads in individual glory. So don't worry about it. It's, uh, no, that's a that's a lovely thing and a cracking photo as well. I've, that photo, literally, I was only sent about a month ago. I'd never seen it before. Never seen it before. It's Harrison starting a new over. Oliveira is on six. I've got a I've got a few. I've got uh, one or two of the the dinner at Lords and it's all um, uh, in jacket and tie in front of the pavilion at Lords. Um, one or 
two of the team in whites as Oliveira dances down the track. Gets to the pitch of it, but doesn't go through with a shot. Just happy to block it. Really pleasant conditions right now. You might even be almost persuaded that it's late spring, early summer, but it's not. It's still, I think, the back end of winter as this one's dropped on the leg side. It's 177 for four. Well, I've attended a few fancy dinners at Lord's, Dave, but not as a guest as staff. So that's how the other half live, you see. Calvin Harrison balls again and blocked once more by Dolly Vera. Just feel that Harrison, I mean, got that wicket now, has uh, just tightened the screw a little bit. He's got a bit of confidence here, and certainly it's easier at the moment bowling to Dolly Vera than Jones. And this one is again off a leading edge and drops on the offside between fielders and bowler. Falls safely to the ground, and I think. I think if you're in and you've had a bit of a look at him like Rob Jones, yeah, you can play him with more certainty than clearly somebody like D'Oliveira who's just come out of the pavilion and having to play the spinning ball. But he's cut this one away. We'll uh, just get a single after a partial stop from Lyndon James. 178 for four. And that's the end of the over. Graham Swan always said that it was a uh, high-end sport, but particularly with uh, spin bowling, it's 90% mental. And that's the thing, that little bit of confidence. And the new batsman coming in and not wanting to get out cheaply. Got to be watchful. The psychology of it just changes, doesn't it? Mm. Momentum is a very strange and very powerful thing in sport. And you're so determined in this particular situation, Worcestershire don't want to hand momentum back to Nottinghamshire, as Grace pointed out, that uh, if one becomes two, then Worcestershire again will find themselves in trouble, rather like they did when they were four for two. Because they still, they're still in arrears here by 221, which is sizable on any surface. And uh, you do not want to give them anything for three, as Patterson White will continue to Dolivera. One slip in place. And uh, one man under the helmet on the offside, just skipped across the wicket from the leg side. So in comes the left arm finger spitter. Patterson White is in, and that's full, and that's a uh, skewed away off the inside edge down to the man behind square on the leg side. I'll take a single, but it wasn't convincing. I know last year they only changed the uh, the over rates on scoreboards up and down the country at the end of each session, showing knots being minus one at the moment. I can't believe they are actually at this moment minus one with. Harrison and Patterson White bowling in tandem here, getting through their overs quickly. I would imagine that will be yeah, very much in Nottinghamshire's favour by the end of the day. In comes Patterson White then. Jones waits, just punches that down the ground. Lovely shot. Plenty of control. There's a man down there, of course. Fletcher will do the feeling. It's a comfortable single. It may well have something to do with that 23-minute over we had just before tea, Dave, that uh, seemed to go on forever. I've had jobs shorter than that. <laughs> Again, that says more about me than it does about the cricket. So, in comes Patterson White. And on his heels there, Dolivera keeps that out. In again, and that uh, just moves away to leg and tries to push the way. Hits the uh, shins of the man in close on the offside. There's no run. And uh, Dolivera's just feeling his way here. Jones on 90. Dolivera not long been at the crease. He's eight not out. Patterson White in again. Gives it a twirl. Again, onto the back foot and just pushes it into the offside. And uh, again, as Grace has pointed out, it's... Uh, a slightly more challenging prospect this spell from Patterson White. He's <laughs> willing to give it a little bit more. And David's chuckling away. Yeah, what, what, are you, what are you looking at on the internet, I'll Dave? I'll tell you why at the end of the over something I've been sent. Full and straight. And Dolivera just tucks it into the leg side. He's quick between the wickets. Thinks about two. If there were two of him out there, they might well have got it. But uh, they'll settle for a single. So he'll pinch the strike. As that is the end of the over. Also sure 181 for four. <laughs> I've been sent a scorecard, Italy versus Malta. I can't see a date on it, and it's obviously from 1992. Italian national team. Let's see if I remember any of these names. Yeah. Uh, Daniela Blaine 
that was Dan Blaine, Victor uh, Ricciobone, Matteo Maggi, uh, Luigi Pidge. <laughs> <laughs> Pietro Bracegirdle. I don't know where they've got Pietro Bracegirdle. Anyway, this is against Malta, presumably that very same tournament. And it's got me down as Pietro Bracegirdle, uh, caught by John Grime, bold Alan Swift for nine. Oh dear, I didn't do very well in that game. As Harrison bowls from the other end, and this is dropped on the uh, on the leg side. Uh, and Malta knocked them off. Malta won by six wickets. Uh, Pietro Bracegirdle bowled <laughs> six overs, one maiden, one for 18. Hey. Well, open the bowling. Crikey me. Pietro, you've never sounded so... The musicality well, of your name I, I there. Don't, I don't know where... I don't know where, Nigel King sent that. I don't know where he's found it. Anything about it. Never seen that before in my life. Uh, the other names, yeah, vaguely familiar from, uh, from 30-odd years ago. Pietro. Crikey, that's extraordinary. Next one's uh, turned away behind square, 185 for four. That's that's worth framing, isn't it? Well, Get no, that printed. No, what, what? Stick it next C to the caught, photo. Caught for nine and one for 18. Now I'd, I'd, <laughs> I've got one or two other performances that I'd framed before that one. But um, yeah, oh, Well done, Nigel. That's fantastic it, work. It, it sort of adds a little bit of credence to those that... Don't ever believe I'm, I'm an Italian international cricketer or, or was many, many, many moons. There's a court and bowl from Harrison. Pushed back to him by Rob Jones, who's got to go. Harrison has dived forward, scooped underneath it. Jones hanging about here now. This is one of these where they've just got to check with the umpires and he's been given out. I Harrison's maybe, got a court and bowl. I thought maybe he was thinking it was a bump ball. He doesn't look happy about it, does he? And he did stick about. It did look like a clean catch. Second time today, somebody's got to leave in the 90s, and it's 186 for five. And Rob Jones, Court and Bold Harrison for 90. He was at the crease for three and a half hours, faced 142 balls, eight fours, and two sixes for Rob Jones. Got to wait uh, a little longer. We're going to see a replay here, but it is from Harrison's... Well, now sideways on. Yeah, he's, uh, he's dived forward and caught that, and Harrison straight away celebrates. It's, uh, it's one of those, I think, very low down. If you're a Worcestershire supporter and saw the replay, you'll have a look and you'll have a look and you'll have another look. But Harrison certainly claimed it and was confident, and the umpires have uh, seen no reason not to give it, as Jason Holder gets a great ovation from this Trembridge crowd. He's very much hoping he'll be back here, I think, later in the year when... England hosts the West Indies in a test here. I know he's sort of been challenged, I think, by the West Indies selectors to prove his form and fitness ahead of the T20 World Cup in, uh, that's in June, isn't it, in the Caribbean and, uh, and across the United States, Jason Holder. Um, but I would imagine if he goes well then... Look at that, just just look at that. Jason Holder, 7 foot 19, has come out and he's just done a high five while they've touched gloves with Brett D'Oliveira, who's, um, what, four foot shorter than he is. Incredible stuff. 186 for five. Talk about bowling to your lengths here. It's going to be two foot difference, isn't there? Where you're going to pitch it for uh, D'Oliveira and where you're going to pitch it for Holder. Good catch from Harrison. Said that a few times over the last couple of years. 186 for five. Halfway through the 54th over. So I think Worcestershire just got to be a, a little bit careful. They won't want to lose another one. They've got Josh Baker, Nathan Smith, Joe Leach and Adam Finch. Perhaps not for me to say. Maybe uh, maybe somebody else might look at that and say, yeah, a little bit of a look of a lengthy tail about it. I think whenever I've said that about a side in the past, the lower order's put 200 on, but it does look a, a little bit long as Harrison bowls to the Bayesian bomber. Jason Holder, former West Indies test captain. Giant of a man in every sense. Lovely fella. Some good photos last night of him signing autographs, posing for photographs with some of the youngsters that were here. Terrific stuff from Jason. It's caught! It's gone at slip! He's duck it with the catch. In and out, quick as a flash, Jason Holder. 
and Nottinghamshire have gone bang bang and Calvin Harrison's having a very special day here 186 for 6 Nottinghamshire have got two bowling bonus points and now Worcestershire have got to be a little bit careful they are still 50 what four runs away from saving the follow on 64 runs away from saving the follow on Holder has gone second ball just pushing at Harrison well caught at slip by Ben Duckett two in three balls well, you talk about the tail. I think every all of them can bat. I think that's that that's an important thing. But it depends really on the context, doesn't it? And again, we were talking about momentum, and this is a big swing in favour of Nottinghamshire. It's these, it's these sorts of situations where you feel comfortable and you get rolled quite quickly. And I think uh, I think the contention that's a that's a flat-footed waft, really, isn't it? From Jason Holder, Duckett makes no mistake at slip. But I think Ben Jones felt. Like, I'm sorry, Ben Jones. Rob Jones felt that. Uh, that it jammed down on the ball, and that was a bump ball. They caught and bowled. I think that was his uh, frustration. You can see it carried from here. And Worcestershire now trail by 213. And all of a sudden, there is that sense they do need to avoid the follow on here. They could be in real trouble. Nottinghamshire with their tails up. Harrison making a difference with bat, with ball, and in the field. Is that a good day, Calvin Harrison? Figures now of three for 67. One ball left in his 14th, and he comes and bowls to the new man who hasn't even got a name up on the scoreboard. He hasn't got a name up there. It's defended. Be they'll just be, Smith. yeah, I'm going to say they'll just be clarifying um, in the score box if it is Nathan Smith or, uh, or Josh Baker. I think you're right. From what I've seen over the last day and a half, it uh, very much fits the silhouette of Nathan Smith. 186 for six. What an important over that was in the context of the game. Well, it's certainly moved things up a couple of notches, isn't it, in terms of intensity. It's moved the game on a little bit as well. And you feel that a couple of overs ago, Worcestershire was still in the game. All three results were possible, but now you feel that uh, there's only two. As Patterson White is in, darts in at leg stump there, just nerdled away by Dolivera, who's got a job to do here for Worcestershire. He's on to 15, and Nathan Smith is a, he's a first-class average of 25, so he can bat. Josh Baker as well can bat, and uh, well, Joe Leach. You're not quite sure what you're going to get with uh, Joe Leach. It could be fireworks or next to nothing. <laughs> Solid forward defensive from Nathan Smith. And Adam Finch, of course, uh, hit 19 off the last over at a T20 to beat Yorkshire. So he's no mug either. But uh, altogether rather different context as uh, Smith then just pushes that into the offside. And no run is taken. 187 for six is Liam Patterson White around the wicket. Bowls. He's looking for his first wicket. Nathan Smith does defend. Knotts just pressing the accelerator pedal here as we uh, go into what undoubtedly will be the last half an hour of the day. Eight overs to go after this one. Liam Patterson. White round the wicket. Bowls. And this is dropped on the leg side by Smith. Olivier has 15. And those two wickets, really important. And uh, obviously, Jones going just before, or Adam Ho's going just before then. Single taken here. By Smith. That's the end of the over. Eighty-eight for six, so we have got eight overs to go. I'm sure, Calvin Harrison, yeah, can't uh, get the sweater off quick enough. Trevor Arbin says that was a really poor shot from Holder, a bit of a bonus wicket. Yeah, it's easy done though, Trevor, isn't it? When you've straight out of the pavilion and uh, you've got a leg spinner there, a little bit of bounce, a little bit of turn. Not had a great game up to this point. Emphasis on up to this point. Jason Holder. 
at the cricket across the road at Trent Bridge, Nottinghamshire against Worcestershire, Dave Prescott. Dramatic swing in Nottinghamshire's favour, Calvin Harrison's just bowled an over which saw off uh, Rob Jones for 90, good low catch, caught and bowled and then straight away got Jason Holder, the former West Indian captain for Nort, caught at slip by Duckett. Notts made 399, Worcestershire 188 for 6. Thank you Dave, the cricket commentary continues. As uh, Harrison turns this away from the bowler, and uh, there's no run. The trouble when you put things on uh, social media, Grace, is that there are um, there are trolls out there, aren't there? There are trolls. Oh. We know all about the internet trolls. One eighty-eight for six. Next ball is uh, defended. Just put that picture on. Uh, at Brace Cricket of me mm -hmm. in 1992 and somebody has put then lots of hair and no belly nowadays ha, 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 ha. <laughs> my, my missus my missus having a pop crikey tough spray <laughs> tough audience well, oh edged oh. and uh, this one I think just bounced before reaching Duck it was a good stop actually from the England opener Ben Duckett diving down to his right he's had a quiet game hasn't he Duckett didn't, uh, didn't get many runs and it's not come to him too often in the field, but the one chance he did get, he pouched. 188 for six. Next ball sees Nathan Smith from very deep. Playing out onto the offside, no run. Harrison quickly through his overs, and he comes again. From the broad end, Bowl Smith reaches forward again, played down into the ground, fielded this time by Lyndon James. Just uh, the whole feel out there for Nottinghamshire is that they are the side pressing. They sense they're in a good place at the moment and perhaps feel that this evening could uh, yet bring even richer dividends this one's short edge between Duckett and James and that's gone down it's disappearing down below us but the ball's slowing up there's a bit of a chase on down here in fact Sammy King comes round from uh, deep backward point beats Duckett to it and uh, they come back what did they run in the end there they ran uh, three runs so Smith will keep strike 191 for six two umpires together having a bit of a chat about something do uh, they obviously get on very well these two because they seem to want to talk to each other <laughs> at the end of every over I don't know if there's anybody well I've no idea I don't know if there's anybody chatting or running on the wicket or heaven knows what but uh, they do like a chat stag do's back brace they are indeed yeah they took a break and they've returned they couldn't help themselves missed a bit of Calvin Harrison magic and thought they best get back. Charlie enjoying the spin twins, he says. You've got to love them. Good over eight and they're getting wickets. Well, LPW hasn't got any yet. Liam Patterson White, three to Harrison. Second spell, so much better than his first, though, in my opinion. Ollie Sargent, who um, was on about the fantasy cricket earlier, just letting me know that uh, Calvin Harrison is in his fantasy team. In comes Patterson White. And that's a good delivery kept out nicely by Smith. Slip in play and two catches in front of the bat. Your 200 for five's gone, by the way. Well, it's even better then. As Patterson White in again and punched off the back foot nicely by Smith. Should only be one out to the cover sweeper, Ben Slater. It is only one. Brings Dolivera on to strike. 15 not out off just shy of 30 deliveries. So by no means settled at the crease here. Dolivera partnership just six after that over by Calvin Harrison and Patson White in and smothered by Dolivera. Just over six overs left in the day. In comes Patterson White once again, and this time cut fine and past the diving Lyndon James. And it was a good effort, but just race past him and will race away for four out to that 
Short third, third man boundary. Not to admire the attempt from Lyndon James, but it never really looked from here as if he was going to get within about two feet of it. It always looked as if he was going to be uh, short of that, even though he flung himself full length. It's a good attempt, but nowhere near it. Patterson White back in and again pushed into the offside off the back foot, but this time only a single. Back out to Ben Slater. Kent 243 for one at Chelmsford. Uh, ben Compton is 98 not out. Daniel Beldrum and 134 not out. He's replying to Essex is 530 for seven. It's Patterson White bowls and this pushes back Smith. Back foot defence and end of the over. Worcestershire 197 for six. They trail by 202. Keaton Jennings, 73 not out for Lancashire. The Red Rose, 211 for three, replying to Hampshire's 367. Surrey, 352 for six. That's an overall lead of 68 over Somerset. Uh, ben Folks has gone for 57. Cameron Steele is 31 not out. And at Edgbaston, Warwickshire, 698,000. Uh, no, there were 698 for three declared. Durham, 172 for three. Alex Lee's 93 not out. Runs up and down the country. Division two, Glamorgan, second innings, 55 for three. That's a lead over Derbyshire of 94. Yorkshire in their second innings, 30 without loss. Off for bad light. That's a Yorkshire lead of... Um, 93 over Gloucestershire at Bristol, obviously. Sussex 261 for five, trailing Leicestershire by 77. And Middlesex 121 for one. Northants made 552 for six, declared double ton for... In fact, 261 for Emilio Gay. Here's Calvin Harrison. Six overs left. Comes in to bowl to Dolivera. He's on 20. Just drops this down in front of him. He's got uh, Jack Haynes as close as close can be on the offside, under the helmet, staring him down. D'Olivera plays this uh, off the outside of the bat of backward point where Matthew Montgomery is fielding. Ben Duckett is at slip. Lyndon James on the deep point boundary. A Seba Mead at extra cover. Delivery worked away on the leg side for just a single. Liam Patterson White's at mid on. Uh, at uh, mid off, I beg your pardon. Who's that at mid on? Uh, Dylan Pennington. Haynes comes in at short leg and Fletcher at long leg. 198 for six. 58th over of the innings. Knots were six down at the start of play today. 305 for six. So we've had 10 wickets go down today. Slight delay. What's the getting everybody ready? There's four round the bat here as Harrison bowls. Nicely defended by Nathan Smith. Who's on five. Still to come, Josh Baker, Joe Leach and Adam Finch bringing up the rear. Harrison bowls again, works to leg, fielded by Luke Fletcher. Flung himself down to his left. Made a decent enough stop and at that Calvin Harrison... Uh, just had a nod from the skipper to send Fletcher out and he was in saving one. Now with one ball left in the over, he's gone out onto the leg side boundary. Popped up in the air and caught. And Smith's well, is he? It's caught by Haynes on the offside. Not celebrated. The umpire said not out. So Smith remains 198 for six. Seemed very confident there, didn't they, Knotts? But presumably just off the pad. I'd like to see a replay there, Brace, actually, because, I mean, I'm miles off it. I can barely see, but it looked like it was, no, definitely off pad, I think. What do you reckon? Without a, the old snicker we thing, you've absolutely no idea, have you? We've just seen a replay. Just an unusual angle and place for it to go yeah. if it was just the pad. It seemed to go 
fairly quickly away on the offside. Very true. We're Very a mile true. away. We can neither really hear the sound off bat or pad or see a, a definite deflection off the replay, but those much closer were confident. 198 for six. Patterson White in, full, straight and defended by Donavera, who's moved on to 21 now, with less than five overs left in the day, and still a few supporters in. It's probably one of the warmer parts of the day, to be honest, Brace. It was definitely colder this morning. Unfortunately, didn't need those sunglasses. They've stayed in my bag, and that's a ball very similar to the last. Brings forward Donavera in defence. He's playing watchfully. With his side and a bit of bother here. Patterson White once again brings forward Donovan into defence. Jack, Jack Haynes quickly onto it. He's pretty sharp in that silly catching positions. Jack Haynes must enjoy it in there. I don't know why. I can't think of anywhere worse <laughs> to feel, to be perfectly honest with you. In comes Patterson White and just pulled away. Not the most convincing of shots off the back foot. Slightly off balance, Dolivera, but rotates the strike and keeps the scoreboard ticking. One shy of 200. Alex, Hain, uh, Alex Hales had the uh, the right way when he first came into the team as a youngster, 1920. They popped him in there. Of course, he's a giant of a man anyway, 6'4, six, 6'5. Six, and every time. Uh, the batter raised the bat. It was flinching and turning away from it and ducking for cover. So uh, he didn't stay in there for, for long for obvious reasons. So <laughs> that's the way to do it. That's the way to get out of it. Two catches back in front of Square. This one's cut away and could have gone to hand to Lyndon James, but ended up being about five yards wide of him. Not convincing by Smith, but a boundary nonetheless. Brings up to 200 for Worcestershire. Worcestershire 203 for six. Yeah, well done to uh, the pairs, getting to 200. Very much got their destiny in their own hands, of course, but they've got to uh, just keep the resolve and the discipline here. Make sure, first of all, they save the follow-on and then get to as close a Nottinghamshire total as they can. Patterson White in once again and forces Smith back into defence on the back foot. Another very quick over from Patterson White. He's now bowled 13. No maidens for 51 runs. Worcestershire 203 for 6. The weather's behaved itself. Looks very much as if we're going to get the day in so uh, can be grateful to that. Thanks very much to Kirsty and to Aaron for running the uh, production side of things. Bringing you Trent Bridge live. All the graphics, all the pictures, all the replay that you can see and to uh, a fabulous camera crew out there. Um, Spence, Lewis and Stan appreciate your work out there in the in the fresh air, the chilly um, confines of Trent Bridge. Thanks for bringing us the pictures and uh, you do a sterling job of work. And uh, of course Kirsty won the Grand National earlier so she'll I'm sure be treating you to a drink afterwards. 203 for six, says Jim. And Harrison will continue. Three wickets to his name, the leg spinner. This one's a bit short though so it's uh, cut away. Not timed, but uh, finds its way out into the deep. Lyndon James is there, so they'll take a single. And yes, just when you feel like Worcestershire will get a foothold in this game and you feel like they're on firm ground, they uh, gift one away. So, uh, still slightly perilous. Four catches now as we getting towards the final throws of today. I know you were next door in the last over, but... Very odd, wasn't it? The one that popped up on the offside and not all celebrated. Don't know if you had a clear view of it, even on the replay. It just, it just looked a strange angle to for the ball to fly to if it just came off the pad. But umpire said not out, and that's that's what counts. Yeah, I I thought that was uh, I thought that was gone to be honest. But um, Harrison's in again, and it's a solid forward defensive. But with what three and a half overs to go. It's about batting for tomorrow. Four men round the bat. Two slips. One on the offside, one on the leg side. Man on the drive as well. Harrison's in again. It's full. And uh, Smith is just happy to stick uh, bat on ball and keep it out. 
Not really had a chance to do much with the bat as of yet. But a good clean striker of the ball, Nathan Smith. Very typical of a modern cricketer. Athletic, physically strong. Excellent hand-eye coordination. A, this is a 4-1 full toss, and it's quite tenderly just pushed back, actually. I think uh, in a different context, he might have been slightly more aggressive there. Of course, his main job is to make the best use of that Kookaburra ball as he can, um, despite its limitations. And so Luke Fletcher heads back out to deep mid-wicket. In comes Harrison again, then. And that's uh, offered out a little bit wider. Just soft hands there as the ball deflects into leg side. No real interest in uh, runs. 204 for 6 is the score. But the score right now isn't really important. It's about keeping wickets intact. And from Knott's point of view, it's about trying to nick one more out before the close of play. Full and it's down the leg side. And that's going to race away towards the boundary. Duckett's after it, but he won't catch it. I think that might come off... Uh, oh, it's by. It came off nothing at all. I thought it was going to be uh, just off the pad, but straight through. Have a little look at that. I'm not sure if we've uh, if we've had any buys against uh, Joe Clark today. Just pull it up in just a second. It's the end of the over. 210 for six. Again, kept uh, fairly tidily. No, they're the first buys against Joe Clark. Always difficult, aren't they? When the, uh, the leg spinner fires it very full down that leg side and just pitched almost by the heel of. Nathan Smith just eluded his grasp. First buys of the innings. 11 extras on the total. 208 for six as Liam Patterson White bowls now to Dolivier and he cuts this to backward point. No run. Dolivier on 23. Smith on nine. The men out Roderick for naught. Libby for two. Cash Alley for 40. Adam Hose 33 and then those two wickets in three balls. Rob Jones for 90 and Jason Holder without scoring. Liam Patterson White still wicketless. Balls to Brett D'Oliveira. He lunges forward and defends. Goes down and does a little bit of gardening in the evening sunshine. The shadows are long but they are from the sun even though... Uh, Floodlights are on as well. Patterson White again bowls once more. Dolivier gives himself some room and then cuts this away powerfully through the offside for four. Nice looking shot as uh, an aeroplane just makes its way across the uh, horizon over the Batman board and then will gently, gently descend into East Midlands Airport. It's a long way away from us. It looks as if it could be one of those bright yellow. Um, cargo ones bringing your parcels in from abroad be shoved in a van and somebody will be knocking on your door at nine o'clock tonight with it this is uh, pushed into the offside for a, another dot ball you've got a keen eye there i can't see a thing but that's why you play international cricket and i don't <laughs> oh there we are there we go Oh, you, that great big aeroplane <laughs> there <laughs> i didn't spot it for a while in fairness next ball that's a glider isn't it that's pushed behind square. Go on. No run. 212 for six. As you go round the grounds, Jim, you'll know there's one or two that do this job from the different counties that uh, are very much like watching the aeroplanes as this one's cut away for another single. 213 for six. 61 overs have gone in the innings, just two to go and they get their apps out and they can say well that's the uh, the 15.30 from Barcelona um, the chief stewardess is called Mary and the passengers <laughs> uh, the passengers had the, uh, the roast beef and horse ready sauce for their main their main course on the way back well, that, you know, I will look forward to that it's very rare they, <laughs> let me, they rarely let me out the county to be honest understandable I know 213 for six, 12, a maximum of 12 legal deliveries to go, but once they've got through this over, the uh, remaining batters will be able to take their pads off. Well, unsurprisingly, Calvin Harrison will continue into his 18th over, so he's earned his money today. He's been out there for the most part. 
and it's defended, just uh, interrupting you Jim, just for a second to say a very warm welcome to listeners to Five Sports Extra. We've just got two overs left here I'm afraid folks at Trent Bridge, Worcestershire 213 for six, Calvin Harris and the leg spinner bowling. And that's just uh, tucked into the leg side and uh, be a, a single. But uh, Dolivera, as always, sprinting off hard on the first one, but uh, as leisurely as uh, Fletcher was making his way round, it was only ever going to be one. Story of the day, knots were bowled out on lunch. In fact, it was a late lunch, ten past one. Uh, Lyndon James last out for 96. Obvious disappointment to fall so short. And this one's pushed hard down the ground. So firmly, in fact, there's not really much chance of taking a single. James got a waist-high full toss, which he pulled straight to mid-wicket. He stood there. You could uh, clearly see that he was hoping against hope that it would be called for a no-ball. It wasn't. So knots 3-9-9 all out. Harrison in again, then. And that's just uh, tentatively pushed out there by Nathan Smith. Soft hands, though, so all along the ground, but uh, fielded at... Uh, so sort of what wide second slip in close got a helmet on men round the bat for company Harrison in again shorter this time again tucked into the leg side there'll be more than one this time it might even find its way to the fence he's got just enough on that and it will beat uh, Ben Duckett a, a worthy chase but four more to the total just a little bit too straight there from Harrison and it's uh, clipped away. That puts Smith on 13. Worcestershire 218 for six. When Worcestershire started their innings straight after lunch, they lost both openers within eight balls. Gareth Roderick for naught to Luke Fletcher. Jake Libby for two to Dylan Pennington. Sensational diving one and a slip catch by a fella who's bowling at the moment, Calvin Harrison, who's had a very, very good day indeed. And he comes then. Last ball of the day for him. Bit too short, though. Cut away in front of square. Lyndon James is there, though, so he will do the tidying up. A single only into the gloves of Joe Clark. And uh, the penultimate over of the day concluded. And you're right, he's had a very good day, hasn't he? He has indeed. This morning, got his first 50 in first-class cricket. Still relatively new in the, uh, in the red ball game. Calvin Harrison played a lot of white ball cricket over the last two or three seasons but that's just his 10th first last game for Nottinghamshire um, scored his 52 this morning in a lengthy partnership over 100 with Lyndon James took that sensational catch to get rid of Libby and he's had three of the last four wickets to fall including Rob Jones who made 90 Adam Hose who made 33 and former West Indies test captain Jason Holder in and out for a second ball duck which was a obviously a huge disappointment to him and his team and the Worcestershire supporters. We've got one over left in the day, so Nottinghamshire made 399. Worcestershire will have some work to do still in the morning to save the follow on. They're 180 behind at 219 for six. This is the 63rd over, it'll be bowled by the slow left arm spinner, Liam Patterson White. He's bowled nicely as well, but on Mike Harrison at the other end, the leg spinner. Patterson White without a wicket today. Just a short pause here whilst the Knots captain, Asiba Mead, I think for the first time today, actually takes off his uh, cap and dons a helmet. So there's four round the bat at the moment for Nathan Smith, the New Zealander, who bowled very well yesterday for Worcestershire, picked up three wickets. Got a little bit of batting to do now. He's 14 not out. Brett D'Oliveira 29 not out. And this is the last over of the day. Liam Patterson White bowls into the boot of Nathan Smith. It was outside the line, so didn't even bother kicking it away. He just let the ball thud into his boot. Stoic, wasn't it? <laughs> Unmoved. Five balls to go. Crowd by and large have remained. We. Uh, Lost a few over the last hour. That was a little wristily from Nathan Smith, and as well as wristily, a little riskily. He got forward and tried to flick it away on the leg side. Could easily have played round that one and been vulnerable to an LBW shout had he missed it. Next ball sees him rock forward and defend. Grace Ballinger, the blaze bowler, alongside me. Enjoyed the day? Yeah, it's been a good day. Good day to be sporting knots. If I was to be supporting Knots, because obviously I'm unbiased, but <laughs> good day for all the Knots fans listening. Been a good day's cricket. We 
love the county championship and this has been a real old tussle as Patterson White goes round the wicket Nathan Smith drops it down and Seba Mead just showing the enthusiasm that he's brought to the captaincy by diving full length to stop the ball four round the bat become five as Calvin Harrison nudges closer at short mid wicket it's going to be uh, a run or two here though as this is Bit of a chase on the offside for Luke Fletcher. Quickly gets there. Single taken. 2.20 for six. One ball left, Jim. Um, Worcestershire have got some work to do tomorrow. But I, th I think you, like me, like Grace, we've, we've very much enjoyed the tussle today between bat and ball. Well, it has been. And Dollar will be delighted to take the last ball of the day. Thanks, Nathan Smith. Um, <laughs> he's happy down the non-striker's end. Well, just when you felt like Nottinghamshire were going to get away from them. Four, the last four wickets fell for, what, 15 runs? And then as every time Worcestershire felt like they were in trouble, they just dug themselves out. Then they gave a wicket away. So there's been just enough going on today. Last ball in then. And uh, no shot offered <laughs> at all. Hits the pad. Massive appeal from one man who didn't realise it had pitched outside leg. And the bat goes under Dolivira's arm and he marches off. It's actually a very good innings from Dolivira. 29 not out and a very useful 15 not out from Nathan Smith. When uh, Jason Holder went for a second ball duck, Worcestershire really were in trouble. 63 runs away from the follow-on with only four wickets left, and I feared the worst for the pairs, but actually very really calm and composed effort from these two. But as you, as you say, Dave, more work to do tomorrow morning, but uh, uh, an interesting game and an interesting day, so hopefully more of the same tomorrow. Thanks very much to Jim. Thanks very much to uh, Grace Ballinger as well. A day of disappointment, I guess, for a couple of players. Uh, Lyndon James out for 96. He'll be heartbroken about that. So too Rob Jones out for 90 in the Worcestershire innings. That's the top score for the pairs. They could do with a lower order sticking around tomorrow morning and getting as close as they can to the Nottinghamshire first innings score. We've had two full days here at Trent Bridge. The third day tomorrow also expected to be uh, largely dry so we, we can see this game move uh, move on nicely with both sides very much in contention here. The bonus point situation after two days, knots five, Worcestershire two. The pairs end the day on 220 for six after Nottinghamshire made 399 from the three of us. Grace Ballinger, Jim Dale, myself, Dave Brace Girdle. Very much enjoyed your company today. Thanks again to all the camera crew out there and the production staff inside uh, the studio away to our left here at Trent Bridge from us all a very good night